Hello out there. Welcome back to Table Talk Discussion and Discourse. I, as always, am your host, Alejo, aka Great on 95. With a snicker snack and a I am your second host, Sneaky Adolf. I can honestly say that I hated that like a lot. You're welcome. <laughs> and me, the third host, with the greatest power up. Damn it, hang on. Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. For you. Okay. No, fuck it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. No, no. We'll what? wait. Yeah, it's Why is it? There we go. The greatest power of all forest fruits. Ooh, forest fruits. Yes. God, I bow I'm, like, to I'm the trying to fucking just click and drag, but it's like, it's like, uh, instead of actually grabbing it and letting me move it, it's doing mm. the like multi-select box thing. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, pissing yeah. me off. Well, forest fruits. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just oh god. Anyway, it's so good. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, we're back, and uh, before we get into today's uh, topic, a uh, couple of things couple of yeah, we need to talk about our sponsor well, I, well it's, a, it's not not a sponsor but hey oh. um uh, well then i'm less interested now oh oh <laughs> <laughs> well uh hey you out there listener and viewer hello do our you, sponsors do you like <laughs> do you oh wait like we our patreon is the graveyard this <laughs> podcast yeah, this- made available through viewers like you yes Thank very you. much so Thank you. And yeah. um, and so, hey, do you want things with our logo on it? That's cool. Eh. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, they're here. Uh, it's on Redbubble. Uh, oh, I love yeah, Redbubble, for honestly. This. Oh. Redbubble kicks ass. <laughs> yeah, Redbubble's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. We have a couple of things on here, and by that I mean 37. Um, oh, my God. Uh, we don't have a shirt on one. there. Just somewhere yet. between one and thirty-eight things. Yeah, exactly. Somewhere we around thought, there. We thought we thought thirty-eight was a little overdoing it. So yeah, absolutely. Well, at some point, perhaps we'll put the the logo on a shirt as well. But at the moment, uh, we have some meme kind of things in the sense of, haha, this is a pillow with a thing on it. It's home decor. Um, mm-hmm. And there's also a comforter which actually kind of looks sick. Uh, oh, I kind of like it a lot. Um, and the shower curtain, honestly, the red and the nice. the yellow or the orange make it just look very nice. Um, but mostly, uh, I wanted a logo <laughs> on a mug. That was me. I was like, "Hello, mug. I need oh you." Oh my god! Why did you have to say I shower know. curtain? Because now I just want the shower curtain that has this plastered all over it. Oh god! Like a billion times. No. <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, I think you mean pajama pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah. Oh, and then, and then you can have forest fruits over the yeah! mic. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, if you want some some cool tabletop table talk uh, logo things, go to the link in the description or look on Redbubble and search us. Uh, we're on there now. Uh, fuck. And uh, Dude, fuck those pants that say juicy. Where's the ones that say forest fruits? I need them <laughs> in my life. Okay. I will wear them. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. So that's that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> I will probably pick up a notebook. Yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna get a, at least coasters, if not coasters and a mug, like. But uh, Boris body pillow when? Well, uh, the moment you find well, we... me a body pillow, uh, person to make those and. I get art for Boris, then yeah. Yeah, we need fan where, art for Boris. Where do I insert the cartridges that like wick out all of oil through the hair that Ooh. is like on the Ooh. Ooh, I hate that. I hate yeah. that a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh that's a thing. Check the description, all that, and uh more more things to come potentially. Oh my god, a mocha beanie bet like a uh, uh, like plush, plush, chair. plush yeah. Oh, oh beanbag chair. Plush. Okay, yeah. Either, Either one. is fine. Either is fine. Yeah. Um. So a sunny plush. <laughs> <laughs> so um. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Uh. Other than that, uh. Potentially, I personally will be getting uh better internet at some point in the future here. Uh, Same. I'm looking, I'm looking into, uh, a couple of different options and, 
gonna gonna get a quote or something from uh, a potentially fiber company. Uh, oh, though it won't be fiber speed, but it'll be better than what I fucking have. Um, and uh, potentially could be able to do the show live. So be excited. Maybe if that happens, we will see. Um, boo, boo, you should get in the watch together. Oh yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh well speaking of that today we're gonna be talking about metagaming Woo! Yay. it's a thing and it uh is thing. and oh god why is it this i he's he, don't worry it's not that bad i promise oh. you don't worry <laughs> It's actually. Well, we thought about the last one we saw with. Him. I know, I know, but this is oh, actually. I watched God. it through. I watched it okay. through. There are a couple of things that I dis that I disagree with, but it's not ridiculous. Oh. Don't worry, don't worry. So, today. <laughs> oh, you'll be fine. Today sorry. is uh, the DM layer, and oh. he talks about metagaming in D and D. Is it cheating? And Thank you, DM layer. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, for some, uh, uh, for, so, for some, wow, wow okay, <laughs> I my everything just messed up there for a second. Cool, all right, oh. we're good. Everything's fine. We're we're still recording. <laughs> yep, we're still recording. Oh, the screen region is off. What the fuck? Oh, that's, weird. Uh, oh, oh. that's strange. Okay, well, uh, talk amongst yourselves real quick. <laughs> Very professional, I promise. Yeah, you. no, I I'm good. Don't worry, everything is fine. Uh, I'm not sure why this got changed. That shouldn't have been changed, like at all. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> dude. I so, have no viewer, idea what the fuck viewer, wow. this is your moment to tell me how was your day. Yeah. All three of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, we get more than that now. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, man, I'm, wow, I'm... that's that's actually pretty impressive. Yeah. What? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm talking to the viewer, not you guys. <laughs> oh, know. oh, I know. Mm -hmm. I'm just rudely interrupting. That's all. Yeah. Hang in there, man. Ugh. Yeah, right. me too. There I don't know how I feel about this? Well, we'll get we'll get through this together. Well, it's gonna oh, be like a lot of months. Huh. Are you ready yet? Almost, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna They're... be so many months until this. Dude, oh, right. I already told you about that. But anti okay. Story ran there we too. go. <laughs> there we go. It's, I remember that now. it's better now. Everything is better now. Don't worry, everyone. The screen well, region is, is these what are it better. Used to these be. are donuts. Oh. Well. Just, just remember. Until you donate to us on Patreon and give us money, you can't complain about production quality. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Oh, don't. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so, are you boys ready? <laughs> yeah. Yup. Let's do A it. A deal, cheater. Let's do huh? it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna put away my ice brand short sword and take out my... Flame tongue short sword. Wait, why? The the ice brand does well, more damage. Because puffle wolves are immune to cold damage. And how do you know that? I just made an arcana check and came up with nothing. Come on, it's common knowledge. Everyone has heard of puffle wolves. Wait, wait, is that the monster manual you've been reading? What? No. What are you, what are you talking about? And that looks like the module we're running. No, just just my personal journal. That, that, that's metagaming! Let's, let's get him! I cast Fireball. You know what? Huh. That's, that's, that's a good way to lead into your logo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, that is a great way to lead into your logo. I, I will also, say, I will, I'm joking. I will <laughs> I'm say, um, a few times, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the, he never refers to this again, actually. Um, that's, oh. That's, uh, your party immediately turning on you to kill you because you're metagaming? Yeah, well, I we should fucking hope not. He, he, he never brings that up, actually. Um, now that I, because I've watched this through, uh. I, I think, I think it is meant. I, I hope it's as, hyperbole, as, yes. As, not necessarily not hyperbole, hyperbole but, 
but meant as a metaphor to show displeasement. I hope so, yeah. D displeasement? Displ yes. Dis displeasure. Okay. Yes. No. Un Unhappinessness. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the DM Layer. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a dungeon master since the first time the Detroit Lions won the Super Bowl. Okay. On this channel, I give practical so dungeon times. master advice that you can Oof. implement at your game table. Recently, I made a video about sports. cheating in D&D <laughs> and how a dungeon master should handle it. One of the examples of cheating I gave was players looking up... A He's slightly off-center, and it bugs me. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. <laughs> it's, like, it's just like, you know. Yeah, it's just, it's just, just, yeah. it's just yeah, like. I'm not paying enough attention at the moment to care. I'm opening some packages. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Monster I'm listening, though. Don't box. worry. And you would not believe how many responses in the comments I got from folks saying they didn't feel that was cheating. So I said to myself, it's I cheating. guess it's about time to make a video about metagaming. First, we'll talk about what metagaming is, then we'll touch on if it's good or bad for the game, and finally, we'll discuss what a dungeon master can do about it if, in fact, anything needs to be done. Quick disclaimer, too, by the way. When I searched for this topic on YouTube, I noticed that lots of other folks have done videos on metagaming. Lots of people that... So, actually, mm -hmm. before we begin, mm -hmm. like, getting into the, the meat of the video... Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh... Can I get you guys' introductory opinions on uh, the issue of metagaming, if it is an issue to you? Um, it depends on the nature of the metagaming itself. With the... With the... Um, uh, with the uh, Obviously, with the skit that it started with, that is all bad metagaming, where mm. you are looking up things looking in a book monster, yeah. and then you know informing your character of what you're doing, yeah, I, mm -hmm. and also, like, reading the module, that is incredibly bad metagaming, whereas metagaming technically is applying outside knowledge to the game, and mm -hmm. it can technically uh, be if, say, your character dies, and you had four fighters for some stupid reason, like, and then when you're making your new character, and you say, I want to play a wizard this time so we can balance out the party a bit more, that technically is okay. metagaming, but I don't consider that to be bad at all. Yes, yeah. I would. Um, I actually one hundred percent agree. For for me, much like most things in D anD D, nothing is black and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and there are a thousand different scenarios or reasons or justifications or excuses in some cases why someone could metagame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the metagaming is itself an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes for a range of behaviors most of which are problematic but some of which aren't really issue solvers or issue problems i should say yeah issue problems who boy yes some of which aren't problematic there yes um, um so like for instance start with, um, yeah <laughs> uh the there it goes again the campaign that i am in <laughs> when the dm asked me what do you want to play? I said, what does the party need? Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. Because I don't, I have like a ton of characters on standby. I mm -hmm. have pretty much every class under the sun. I have a character concept for them. Do you and have a scion? I, I don't have a scion. Cause well, most fuck people, you then. No, because <laughs> most people I know don't allow them. Oh, um, they're, they're not, <laughs> not, not going to be a thing until Tasha's comes out anyway. It's true. Yes. I was just saying every class under the sun and I was just, yeah, 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 don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah. So, that reminds me, by the way, I came up with two new character ideas at work today. Anyway, yeah, um, yeah not all metagaming is created equal. There, There's some that's fine, there's some that's not. I would say there is even some amount of knowledge on what you can pull from that is justified for a character to know. Yeah, for yeah. instance, you may not know that uh like how many hit points or what ac a imp has that is unequivocally metagaming and as such it is cheating uh, yes. especially if you're looking it up mid-combat mm -hmm. yes however it would not be unreasonable for your character to know okay imps typically uh, are like fire aligned because they're devils so yes. they're probably resistant to fire maybe can like spew some fire out somehow maybe and i mm -hmm. think i saw a play once where one had a poisonous tail 
Yes. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. They, oh, and they, they definitely have wings. Right. So it, it all depends on the world that it's set in, right? And the amount mm -hmm. of knowledge in that world of the specific thing. Like, yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, it can also be hard to nail down exactly like what your character would know. Right, right, right. And that's why you usually do the probing kind of thing of like starting. Would I know like, this? Yeah, w would I know this, or can I roll to know this, or it is, um, is there any chance that I know about, because I know personally this, would my character know this, right? Um, yes. There's... Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just like how not everyone knows the tale of the Minotaur in the maze mm -hmm. and like the, the golden threads that was supposed to lead them back out. Yeah. But most people can usually associate a bull man with a maze. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, you were saying uh, about knowing, like I, I would say there's examples from when I was DMing for, for my group. Um, we, we would pull or they my players would pull knowledge from medieval times in order to like kind of try to justify knowing some things in that period um mm -hmm. like uh medicinal knowledge and mm -hmm. um just help. basic basic kind of skills that one would be taught if they were uh living in that time and mm -hmm. so uh it's been something it's it's technically metagaming but it's not at the same time for for the I reason would say, i would say it's ma helping use history to make help you make an informed decision yes exactly as to what your character would likely know exactly and and so it is technically outside of the game itself because D, D is the weird fantasy hybrid of everything and has some historical stuff but isn't entirely historical based yeah, um, yeah. for, for so. me i've always liked uh my personal example is i've always liked using fire on scarecrows mm -hmm. because they're straw and they're cloth and they're yeah, wood and it, it makes, makes sense. sense to use fire against them mm -hmm. i did not know for the longest time that they had to damage vulnerability to it oh really yeah no i was just like i uh, kill it with fire it, then right. because uh, it's 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 easily flammable. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, a shambling mound. However, right. the the sheer opposite of that. that it is a sh it, a shambling mound mm -hmm. of wet detritus and grass yeah, yeah. and leaves and vines, mm -hmm. and yet somehow gets healed by lightning. Why? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah I don't know. But that, yeah, that's weird. You would never you would know that, right? Yeah, you would imagine it's. Like, if I were an adventurer and I'm like, oh, its body is wet, as such, I should use lightning. Well, uh, I think if it was wet and a plant, I would go for cold. Yeah, like ice. But, mm. like, uh, freeze it solid. Um, yeah, maybe. The, that, that's just me, though. And the, the, the other thing is, uh, when you've played any kind of role-playing game long enough, you'll, you've probably glanced over the monster manual at some point you know oh rogan. especially if especially if you're a dm yeah absolutely. rogan has it <laughs> oh he has it. that's fucking weird dude oh that's strange um, that's weird because he's shown me a lot of entries from the pathfinder monster manual yeah because it's it's only because it's all one book he's never looked True. at the D, D monster manuals ever True. That's fair. Um, Those were the first books that i picked up <laughs> so so but my point my point is if you're if you're a player who um, has played for a while and you recognize things outside of the game, uh, it's or outside of your character, like it's very yeah. easy to not meta game, right? Like yeah. you just don't act on that knowledge and try to recognize when you are, so that you yeah. you, because like I I catch myself sometimes and go, oh shit, wait, I wouldn't know that, right? Yeah, the yeah. the way mm -hmm. that you. The way you can get around that, if you're the type of player that actually has trouble with that, mm -hmm. try to make characters whose job it is to either to explore yeah. or yeah. hunt yep. monsters or yep. whatever. Basically, make a witcher. Yeah, 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 that's actually exactly what I've done uh, yeah. with the the my first foray into that was the author character I made was mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. like I wanted to use out of game knowledge because i'm like you know what dude like screw worrying about that i'll just make a character that knows it yeah and then exactly. the the other character i made that was a, a nightblade 
the whole reason I had in their backstory that the whole reason that he became a Nightblade was because people in his hometown would go out into the fields at night to help defend it against scavenging beasts. Mm -hmm. And he learned a lot about fighting beasts and fighting in the dark, and that was when he got touched by the Shadow Plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. By the way, Boo, the be the bestiary, and I brought out my Pathfinder 2e core rulebook mm, yeah. <laughs> to uh, <laughs> confirm. The bestiary is not in the core rulebook. That is a separate book. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought oh. they were. I thought the whole thing was like one book. I thought all the spells. They I thought a... that's why it was 600 pages. Uh, <laughs> all, no. all the all the spells, class descriptions, mm -hmm. a whole bevy of traps. Mm -hmm. Um. And the DMG is pretty much in the core rulebook. Yeah. But a uh, matter of fact, on the very last page of my book, there is an ad for the best area, and it says more than 400 of fantasy's fiercest foes fill this giant compendium. Yep. Oh, interesting. Uh, hard, okay, then. Hard, hard cover, 50 bucks. Deluxe but hardcover, 70. But I'm pretty oh. sure Boo is talking about the D&D &D one. He hasn't looked at it. Yeah. Well, well, he said it's just the vacation yeah, th for broken oh, checking out the best right. area was that it is all one book yeah right, that was gotcha. my bad i could have sworn i heard that it was that was my bad yeah, i don't know any pathfinder books yeah, yeah it's fine um you should fix that you should eh. it's very good um so horribly horribly edited oh absolutely no, yeah, no i've heard read. i've heard legends <laughs> absolutely off the read um but uh yeah so that's basics of metagaming um yeah let's let's see let's see what he says about it respect by the way however i resisted the urge to watch their videos i wanted to address this topic cold so to speak oh by the way if you do go on youtube and you look up metagaming yeah he's right fucking everyone and their mother has done it it's oh yeah it's, it's a very popular thing to talk Dude, about. oh i'm sure yeah one out of like every seven crit crab videos it is about metagaming. Met metagaming. Yeah. Well, metagaming. Some people said metagaming GM, and I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? What? Okay. Oh, uh, that's that's where you, uh, if you're a metagaming GM, if you have, say, if your party is very very dependent on magical damage, mm -hmm. you think you throw things at them that have either magic resistance or silence. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you directly make things not not to challenge the party, but to fuck over the party. Gotcha. Yeah, well, that's just a poor DM who yeah. cannot think yeah. beyond me and must make encounter hard. Yeah. Me, hence, everyone and their mother know silence for mm -hmm. some reason. Mm -hmm. That yeah. and another thing that, that you can do is you can make it so that the uh, if if you have a big bad evil guy that has been watching the party uh, like progress and like you know you're constantly foiling their plans it mm. makes sense for them to know what what the party does you know it's like oh <laughs> oh true yeah you know it makes sense for them you have that but if or you some have, rival or if you have like every little fucking captain and lieutenant of the guy have a squad ready to counter them at every point that's also metagaming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it doesn't make any sense why they like these these individual little guys um, know what your deal is unless he specifically sent out a kill squad for the party. Yeah, it it's depends, true, right? But like, it, if you can justify it. Yeah, so yeah. you can justify it, but the, the, it comes in when the time, it comes in at the points where it's not, where you either don't justify it or can't justify it. That's right, right, right. Yeah, this, this is why I like making, say for instance, bandit or cultist encounters, mixed bags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It allows you to throw, like, all sorts of martial classes or spellcaster classes at mm -hmm. the party, yep. and you can justify it while, like, yeah, <laughs> this one knows Zone of Silence. Eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, 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 so long as it's justified. Yes, exactly. Based upon my view on this topic as it currently stands. It's also likely that there are elements to this topic that I haven't considered. In that case, I encourage you to let me know down in the comments. I read almost every single comment I get and respond to all that I can. Who knows, I might even need to make a metagaming part two video. He anyway, didn't. we need to define mm. metagaming to have an How intelligent this video? conversation about it. Uh, this is 10 months. Oh. Okay. Hmm. But in order to define metagaming, we really need to define role-playing first. Now, according to this book, 
D&D is the world's greatest role-playing game. Now, whether or not you agree with it being the world's greatest is a topic for another day. My point simply is... <laughs> I know someone who may, uh, may discuss whether or not it's a role-playing game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that's right. <sighs> in the heart is a role-playing game. Role-playing is when you assume the role of someone else. That is, pretend to be that person. And you make decisions and take actions as that person based on that person's motivations and mm -hmm. knowledge. In D&D, we pretend to be clerics and rogues and barbarians and wizards. And then we do things in the game based on what those characters would do in a given mm -hmm. situation. We all know that barbarians smash things with their axes. Rogues stab things. Could maybe could but not always but not no, always not necessarily okay <laughs> I understand the point he's making but yes it's you're just also a need to be, but yeah yeah a little more broad I think but all right uh, clerics heal the wounded and wizards well wizards cast fireball right always without fail. <laughs> Metagaming, on the other hand, is when a player uses real-life knowledge to determine the in-game character's actions. That is, instead of only using the information my barbarian has available to him to act in the game, I use the information that Luke, the player, has available to me. For instance, mm -hmm. if I make a perception check to find a secret door and roll a three, and then turn to someone else and ask them to check for secret doors too, just in case... I'd argue that's metagaming. See, my character doesn't know I rolled a three. My character did their best to find a secret door and didn't. At that point, asking someone else to check is probably metagaming. And how do... Depending upon how your DM flavors it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, for instance, if I were describing it as you're searching around for a secret door and then you get distracted when your face walks through a cobweb and oh god oh god get it off and oh god there's a spider on your face but mm -hmm. you manage to knock off the spider in time mm -hmm. that's 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 a cool way to flavor like and eh, you don't find anything but it's still like the door is still open for the rest of the party to check if well, they should so choose to so then that's the thing that i would actually go with like how you've i i guess is it required for them to find the secret door in this Maybe. instance oh dude i'm just saying like in a scenario where i typically don't throw secret doors at my players personally. i don't either i'm just <laughs> yeah. like um, well but now you've brought it up though because like in this case is it it would it be in, like, in, the, prudent in this to find it? in this scenario like i am the scenario the very specific scenario yeah. that i just made uh it's me the dm willing to throw him a bone yeah. right okay but at the same time it's really i i feel like it's strange to have like if somebody is like hey i'm gonna go search for a secret door you go yeah. okay right and then you you let them do it and then if they fail then it's like okay you looked for the secret door. Um, I suppose if somebody else who... It, it depends on the character who then yeah. would want to do yeah. it next. It's the guy who's, like, specialized in it gonna say, mm, you'd probably fuck it up. Let me do it. Right, if that's the case. Then, if like, the guy who's... Eh, maybe... Does the guy have a tendency to do like to not trust his teammates to do something properly? Exactly. Like, right. Like you, you have to you have to justify that definitely with the players themselves because if you, it, like, and I've seen it many a time of dogpiling to do the role in order to succeed. Mm. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It's very weird because you then go well the entire party regardless of who does what and who specializes at what wants to try to look for this thing. Yeah. And, like, unfortunately, I think that's also a thing with 5e in particular, because everyone yeah. can do everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that that's one of the reasons why I sort of like the help action. It allows yeah. you to oh, yeah. say, okay, a rogue, you can roll with advantage because so-and-so is helping them, or if you want, you can ignore your bonus and help the cleric, I guess. Yeah, exactly. But I, either way, you guys get one chance, but it has advantage. Yes, that, that's and usually the way that I, if I would it, like if to it, do it. Yeah, and then if it doesn't work, and the barbarian's like, I swear to God, there's a door here, just say... Dude, I don't know. You saw like the two best people in your mm -hmm. party looking for it. Like they probably would have found it. Exactly. Yeah. 
Here's the other thing. You can ha- you can also do it with two other... You can justify it with two other scenarios. Mm-hmm. One, if all of the characters know that there is a secret door there, like if someone told them, oh, I saw a secret door open. Oh, yeah. Oh, down yeah. The alley. yeah. You know, that's how you can have them all, you know, do that. Yeah. Two... If you flavor it correctly, we'll go back to your example, Aiden. You you know, you roll a three, you search, but you run into a cobweb and you basically don't search. You could very easily say, my character saw him look for a secret door, but then run into mm-hmm. a cobweb and not really get anything yeah. done. I yeah. want to go okay. ahead and try. Yeah, that, that's, that. that's why I was saying, like, leave it open. Leave it so that yes. someone else knows, oh, they clearly, like, got distracted or right. something. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to try myself. Like, yeah. Make, yeah. It, make it justifiable. And yeah. if you see someone else, like, rubbing their hands over all the walls and, like, pushing in on things and, like, lifting levers or pulling out books... Uh, and they happen to roll a three, like I, the DM can personally go, nah, you see them like lifting books and stuff like that, even though they rolled a three, but Mm -hmm. no, they don't seem to find anything. Yeah. Yeah, Or I can choose to be a bit kind and be like, eh, they walk into a cobweb. You, you think that, uh, you might pick up on something that they missed. Yeah. Right. And again, I would then have to say for the cobweb thing specifically, if somebody else is more able to do it i would say definitely but that it depends on the party composition but then again isn't making it so that the one person with the highest ability stat is always the guy to check metagaming the answer is no because people have specialties that they work on in real life actually it's like saying you don't call you don't call your friend the grocer to help you pick your lock. You call the service that right, will exactly. pop locks for you, or your yeah. friend with a set of lock picks and a lot of free time. Yes. Mm. Um, is the is the fighter really the best one to be killing this thing? <laughs> you know. Um. The the way that uh I'll, that I've also done it to you that isn't exactly a Why raw that? friend. Oh. Oh. oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> the the way that I've also done it that isn't exactly raw friendly is um uh giving help after the fact. In that scenario oh. with the um with the uh cobwebs, uh in that case I would much rather have like the person who also is able to like look and see that the um cobwebs are they they distracted the person to then go up and help them brush the cobwebs off and assist <laughs> them with their search right you you ah. basically you flavor it so that they are also doing it but you're helping the primary person who didn't get the chance to right if you want to do it like that um i find that a little bit more acceptable for myself i guess but yeah yeah I know my character wasn't just playing it safe in character. Well, I guarantee you that if I had rolled a 19, I darn well wouldn't be asking another player to double check. See, I'd be fairly- You wouldn't, but maybe the character is more careful than you. Yeah. I don't- I don't know. Okay. I don't- I don't know. Personally, if I roll a 19 on a check, I am also less likely to say, oh, hey- I I might have missed something because that's also and, pretty much it it comes down to also the fact that it's kind of like slowing the pace I guess you could say mm-hmm. if I roll a net 20 to check for a secret door mm-hmm. and I don't find anything I'm not going to have my character be like hey guys do you want to check and see if I missed anything yeah because no, the, well, it's unnecessary. You're, I mean, you're going to spend another five minutes hemming and hawing over well, what if we missed something so when then, everyone knows there's nothing and so then let's move on to the next I, scene. I would then propose the argument of isn't it a little metagamey to not if your character is more careful and wants to double check? Like, it, yeah, you, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is It is more metagamey. Yeah. But it's one of those instances of metagamey that I think helps play remain fluid i'm I'm just kind of trying to propose the the scenario of it being metagamey but it's not like a problem and so like just to add to to uh his name's luke i think luke's argument 
basically, that he could have pulled that from it instead of just saying, I wouldn't do it. Just flat oh, out, that's yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You know? Just to bolster mm-hmm. it a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm really confident that there was no secret door, so I wouldn't bother. Now, sometimes failure is obvious. You're trying to be sneaky and roll a three on your stealth check. In that case, you probably know that you scuffed your foot on some gravel and made a lot of noise. So that sort of thing definitely <gasps> depends case by case. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, there's also, um, for those kinds of things, I would say uh, you can have it be like a group kind of check. There's a lot of times where it's like, hey, you got a three, but your friend got a 19. And so they kind of uh, assisted you in, you know, uh, not breaking your cover, you know? Yeah. Um, so they quickly uh, ran off, found a pillow and threw it. Threw it under your foot, right? Like, <laughs> like it's Just one of those. Before you hit it. <laughs> it's one of those things where, again, kind of made a game But again, it's perfectly acceptable because... Yeah, you can just go. Hey, it's fine. The person who got a high roll is also looking out for you because you're part of a team. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm usually less prone to do things like, uh, say, a move silently check mm-hmm. with the help action because mm-hmm. yeah. it just it, it doesn't make sense. That's no. why um, for things like stealth checks, you always I I steal Matt Mercer's idea. And I average the party roll and compare mm-hmm. that versus the DC. Yeah, exactly. Ah. And, like, even if someone nat ones, the person who nat 20 can, like, catch them by, yeah. like, the, the scruff of their shirt before they fall or something. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it helps with the whole, like, uh, you, you get a 1 in 20 chance of failure whenever you do anything, right? Like, it's yeah mm-hmm. helps with that little issue that people have case look monster stat blocks in the monster manual or fool's guide to monsters or morning canyon's tome of foes is another example of metagaming why well you need to ask yourself does your character have access to all of the important information about every monster in the world nope. does your character know that stuff i guarantee you maybe they don't but Luke, you may no, say, sometimes my they character do. lives in the game world. They've learned many of those things through experience or study or from hearing stories from others. And you'd be partially correct in so much that your character may know many of those things about the monsters. See, he, he goes into it. It's fine. Uh-huh. He's doing okay. okay. May being the key word, and it's up to the game system and the dungeon master to determine how much mm-hmm. you actually know. This is okay, when the it. humble knowledge check comes into play. Dear Mr. Dungeon Master, I'd like to see what my character knows about this creature. Ah, uh, yeah, give me an arcana check, or religion check, or a history check, or a nature check. It'll depend on the creature, of course. But you see, at that point, you and your dungeon master would be determining what your character actually knows about the creature. And then, once that's determined, you'd be free to roleplay your character with that knowledge without falling into metagaming. This is also where um, I am personally a huge fan of different types of checks give you different information Mm, about mm -hmm. the creature. So, for instance, if you say, uh, if your character sees an angel. Right. The person who's a historian with a lot of knowledge religion may choose to roll knowledge religion and know, oh, these are servants of such and such a deity. Um, they were created with this purpose mm-hmm. and they are seen as beneficial to loyal followers of this deity. Mm-hmm. Whereas someone who rolls an arcana check will know, hey, yeah, apparently angel halos are really good for potion ingredients. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Like, it's it, to diversify the, the skill set a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I haven't been doing that. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I, I sometimes forget too as well, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, like, same, I, I'm guilty of it, but it was something that uh, our previous uh, Alejo, uh, hmm. our first DM, did on occasion. He did? Uh, yes, in the second campaign. Oh, I barely uh, I, remember I, that one. Yeah, same. I just remember <laughs> that's like one of the few things I picked up from it. Okay. Was when we had three people all trying to roll knowledge on Ooh. some creature. Uh-huh. And like, it was sort of dogpiling the roll, but we were yeah. all choosing different checks. And for each person, he gave them something unique. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's a good way to do it, absolutely. Because then you're not just wasting the role and everybody gets a little bit of a tidbit of information they can share Wait. with each other. Wait, no. Huh. It was in the Strahd campaign. What? Did I do it to you? Yeah. Uh, huh? Be because, because I had rolled nature and you were like, yeah, it's claws are like this. And I think that the brainiac in the party, mm -hmm. the, the other author... Mm -hmm. uh rolled i think it was i think it was something else that was more related to like her background mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i think i think it was you actually what? What? well good job past me if that was <laughs> i don't <laughs> i don't recall this specific instance so uh but yeah it, it was people dogpiling a role and each person gets a little something so then that way you can you can let the players dogpile because it doesn't really make sense for like yep. oh no the rogue already uh rolled nature uh it doesn't make sense for your character who's a historian to not like mm -hmm. uh know nothing about gargoyles this, this also um can be determined in 5e of like what is your character proficient in? You can call out proficiencies for people to roll. Like, okay, so if you're proficient in history or if you're proficient in religion, you can roll that right now if you want to try to learn something about this. Um, and then people go like, hey, I'm good at those. And then somebody else goes, could I, maybe I'm proficient in Arcana though, and maybe I could roll. And then you go, yeah, okay, see what you can learn about that. You know, it's, it's mm. instead of... Um, calling for a single role you know vary it up so that multiple people can do it and learn different bits of information you you could even if you want uh i don't necessarily recommend it uh it may work for your table it may not uh maybe consider letting people dogpile roles but make the dc higher each time so like the first person gets this amount of information the second person gets maybe a little more but maybe less yes like, so okay. like um person rolls i don't know uh knowledge nature to see if they can remember if gargoyles are fast flyers or not uh first person rolls it's a dc 15 mm -hmm. second person rolls it's a dc 20 mm -hmm. third person rolls it's a dc 30 mm -hmm. And it's kind of like everyone just racking their brains, and it's just like, well, I'll I'll let you, I'll let you dog pile if that, you want, yeah, but it's not necessarily going to help you. So then I would go, yeah, you got to determine who's doing it first, who's doing it second, who's doing it third, and you can't really, like, I guess you could roll initiative to really determine that, like whose mind goes to it first, <laughs> right? Oh, no. brain goes first, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that that's the thing of uh, like roll, the, the roll only issue that I see. except it's with your int modifier instead of your dex. Yeah, exactly. Like it, I guess I guess you could yeah, you could easily go whose int is higher, okay. Uh is your modifier better than theirs? If you have the same modifier then uh roll off to see. But then again it's uh, I don't know. If, if if you wanted to do initiative you could do that. Well I, I just I'd do it as a way of helping balance the uh, like if well, everyone dog piles the role, mm -hmm. that's like triple initiative or sorry, triple advantage, right? Yeah, and that's a bit scuffed. Exactly. That's so that's the way to balance it for me. A really mm -hmm. simplistic way to do it. Fucking jack that DC up. Well, that's the thing, right? How do you determine who gets what DC? Whoever that's the, that's the thing. Whoever that calls out for the role first. Okay. Generally, I also don't announce that I'm raising the DC. Right, no, of course. I'm just that not I'm just like the first person who does it, so then you then you keep track of the first person who does it and then the second person who goes, I think I'll do that too. Right? And then you so you in, in which case I would just say, Do you want to help them or do you want to make your own separate role? Right. And then they'll say either I'll help them and I'm like, Okay, cool, D C stays the same. Right. Or and then you say, get I'll make my own separate role and I go well, okay, and then I'll think like, well, they're not they're not proficient in it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're not as good at it. Um, I I'll, I'll just raise the DC up by three in their case. What if you get the people that are silent and just roll? Uh, fuck them! You didn't ask to roll. Yeah. Well, so you called for the roll, and then they just roll. 
if if I yeah if I say roll me this check or they or they say uh, nature check to do this, I'll say go for it. No no no. So in this scenario, right? You've called for your nature mm-hmm. check, and yes, and so the the person uh, who's proficient in it goes and rolls, mm-hmm. but then everybody else rolls. Uh, I'm only interested in what the person I called for rolls. They can roll their d20s for fun. No, 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 no. no. So in, in, so you have called for this without mm-hmm. specifically calling out somebody like in particular. Well, in in the scenario where I have called for a generalized roll from everyone in the table that you mm-hmm. have laid out for me, Alejo. Mm-hmm. Sure, I guess everyone rolls. But what I'm saying is, at my table, I call for if someone says. Uh, I'd like to roll a nature check for this. I'll say, do so, and mm. like point at them, and I'm like, do it. If the barbarian rolls, I don't care what he rolls because he wasn't, didn't request to roll. Okay, I'm just trying to just see the the boundaries of this. That's all. Yeah, like I'm, the... not to shit on it or anything. I'm really not trying to. I'm just like. Oh, yeah. Making sure that it's evident of the situation. I'm just yeah. putting all options I, out there. I do sometimes let a table roll for something like, say, a survival check. Every mm-hmm. If everyone's working on setting up camp, everyone mm-hmm. can dogpile their roll, and I'll just say, okay, so-and-so is making a campfire, so-and-so right, right, right. is, like, unbridling and rubbing the horses down, mm-hmm. so-and-so is, uh, like hunting if their character one of my characters got arrested for poaching so he's the hunter sure um bastard (laughs) (laughs) uh and and stuff like that but if uh i say if someone's like uh hey is this plant good for this and everyone happens to be around and i'll say roll an arcana check Mm -hmm. if the spell sword who has been up till now picking his nose not like wants to roll his d20 he can roll his d20 if he wants but i don't care what number comes up right and so it's only it's only when somebody asks for a roll and then another person asks for the roll as well yeah it's it's sort of like how in boo's campaign boo will say everyone roll me a spot check right um versus if i'm like if boris is trying to uh talk to someone and roll intimidation we don't all roll intimidation together that would be hilarious well, though no Basically, obviously the pillar men just rock up <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that'd be pretty good um right okay all right sorry it's just you know yeah these things I think probably one of the obvious examples of metagaming I can remember in one of my games happened a few years ago. One of my players cast a sleep spell into an area that he couldn't see to target creatures that he couldn't see, but placed the spell at just the right spot to affect all of the creatures. You see, the player could see the minis on the board, but his character didn't know where they were. So the player was metagaming by having his character use knowledge that he didn't actually have. So so then what you do is you have them roll a d100 to see how close to the mark they get. Now, the other thing something. is that it also depends on the state of his line of sight. If he has line of sight and can easily judge that where he is aiming is the center well, of a small room, then it doesn't then I would have no so, issue with that. Well, that's the thing, right? In well, the darkness you know it's spell. A small room. Yeah. Because, uh, again, spell. like, imagine you're looking into a... Sm- in, imagine you're looking down a hallway, mm-hmm. and you have an open doorway, and, like, it's an open path in the room is well lit, and you mm-hmm. can see that it's a small room, but you can't see any enemies in there, but you've been traveling through this dungeon, mm-hmm. and every time you've been attacked, it's been in rooms similar to this. Mm-hmm. I don't think that that would be metagaming to... So- yeah, no. Fire in, it into that situation. No, but again, absolutely. If he's doing, if it's a huge room and he's targeting it exactly where all the minis are, even though he would have no idea that they're all there, that's metagaming. Well, yeah, but, he's he's talking specifically about the instance of darkness being the the no, thing that's stopping oh, him. Oh, was it dark? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mind. It was it was literally darkness. So he he was like, I'm gonna put it right in the middle of the darkness, right? Gotcha, gotcha. And in that case, like again, yeah. like what I said, like just roll a d100 or a d20 or whatever, just to see how close mm-hmm. to the mark you get it. Yes. Um. Yeah, that's totally fine. 
I could go on all day giving you dozens of examples of metagaming and all of its various permutations, but I feel like we should at least have a solid understanding of what it is by now, right? So let's talk about whether it's good or bad or neither. But first, I want to let you know. Oh, that's right. Uh, this is a thing. This was from 10 months ago. It's a D&D thing for kids. Yeah. Neat. Uh, not what we're talking about. Yeah. Go find it on your own if you want to. Uh, remember Game space? Com. Remember space, mom? <laughs> Yeah. Have you said a boot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She she's influenced me greatly. <laughs> I know. I loved Space well, Mom. <laughs> there are links to both of these sites down in the description. Okay, so is metagaming good or bad? Well, if the premise of D&D is that it's a role-playing game and metagaming is when you use information not available to the character that you're role-playing, one could argue that you're not playing the game the way it was intended to be played. One might go so far as to contend that metagaming is cheating. And I'm sure there are some extremely brave souls out there who would argue that metagaming is the antithesis, or however you pronounce that word, of role playing that and world ending apocalyptic scenarios could result from its repeated use. No, no one, no one says that. Yeah, Don't. no one says that. Come on. I don't know, man. There's a lot of people on the internet. All right, a someone a potentially a lot, might say a, a lot of them. I and I won't say his name, but I will say it rhymes oh, with Turok. God, uh, you're right. Uh, you're right. Okay. Uh, so, mm. <laughs> so okay. What I will amend it to is no one that is sane. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but like legitimately, I, I think that no one who's actually taking it seriously would say such things. Come on. Well, okay. I can't even say that, can I? Fuck. Whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people with a lot of takes on the internet. It's true. Unfortunately. It's true. I'm sure they would argue that metagaming is the opposite of what the game was intended to be. It's supposed to be a role-playing game, but instead the players are not playing the role to true fidelity the ar and i mean it's a valid argument it's not it's not like it's a hundred percent necessary to not metagame whatsoever but yeah. it, it is technically a valid argument if that's the game they want to play then that's the game they want to play you know yeah but god would you want i wouldn't want to play in such a fucking oppressive environment that's well so it, it depends <laughs> on how it's done right like if everybody's yeah. just gonna get in character and basically just larp the entire time right and like yeah you know do that kind of stuff then yeah okay that's yeah that's cool oh i know i just you like you know me you've been playing in my game you know i don't mind it being like a little loosey-goosey oh yeah absolutely like, i don't a, think a anyone does. Of, a little a little bit of metagaming isn't yeah. gonna break the game especially right. when it's you know, done in a very benign way, because mm -hmm. again, I don't, I, I trust you guys to metagame in a way that won't be like completely overt cheating. You know what I mean? Metagame responsibly. Exactly. <laughs> there are some things that are like, considered you know, metagaming that example. I don't consider it, you know? Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. There. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, the perfect example, Aiden, mm -hmm. you have your ultimate. Yeah. You, you specifically came to me out of character and said, I'm not going to abuse this. And you haven't yet. Mm -hmm. so, yeah so that that's metagaming because yeah. boris is all about gaining power and he has this great power but he's not abusing it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that is 100 percent a player having an effect on the character but although, that's good metagaming yeah although you could uh, the way that i justify it too is boris is also a character that is very much like the um the person who shows all of his cards to all of the players at the table is the one who loses. Yes. Yeah. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah. I've got oh, yeah. I've got my shit going on. Like I can do the shadow clone, and I've been able to do the shadow clone for a while. I don't do it because who knows when any potential enemies may be watching. Yeah. I may. I this may save me in a pinch someday, and I'd rather not people have a contingency for it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah argument would go something like this if you're going to role play role play if you want to play a video game and look up online all the information about the final boss so you can beat him then play a video game but luke you may say um you're having fun wrong <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, later later on, so he's, he's again, he's posing the argument that someone could make, he's not making it himself mm -hmm. um 
And in that, yeah, in that case, I'd go. So, yes, it does technically take away from your experience if you know everything about every monster. Mm. I would say um, for for you and how you have fun. Well, so so. Like, Again, again, tables vary. If you have a table where you on everyone phones out looking up the stats of that winter wolf, fine. Well, like, so yeah, it, I would never do yeah. it. I would never do it at yes. any of my tables. But exactly. if it works for you guys, then <laughs> let's have a one shot where it's just metagaming on. Right. Uh, that's that's my that's my kind of wonder is how is the game when you do that? You know, like I would yeah. love to see an example of it because be I don't know. I don't know how that works, right? Yeah. That's that's more my point, I guess, is if you were to metagame constantly all the time and know exactly how it is, how how does it work when you are role-playing, when you are doing this, like, everything? Because everyone knows everything, so I guess everyone would look up to you that you meet because you know everything? Just what what I would do is, like, some people... Uh, myself included, really like calculating probabilities of success. Sure. Um, chemistry. <laughs> no, no, it's it's just I, I fucking I, evil potions and tonics in the lab. <laughs> I, I I like thinking of a scenario where I'm like, okay, it's three of us against uh, a hellbore whose mm -hmm. stats I don't know. Yes. Uh, oh boy, like, what's this gonna go? How, like, how's this gonna go? And then I see our, like, brawler mm -hmm. with, like, four attacks in a row, yeah. and the answers start, like, that needle in my mind goes from well to bodes poorly. Right. Um... <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> and, sure. Um, especially when my character doesn't know that he's not wanting repeatedly, right. he just Gosh. like is like, "Wow, this boar is really dexterous." God, yeah. he was so dice cursed. <laughs> he was. He, he is. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, my my point though is when everyone is able to look up the monsters and just know everything about them. How is it? How is it? played you know like i guess like yeah. a meat grinder. what kind of an experience right. is that it's the, the experience strange. i guess is more akin to you see the life bar it is more like a video game i guess yeah some it's, games it's like aren't darkest like that dungeon. like darkest dungeon tells you um the probability to hit the probability to stun right um and uh, so, stuff like that light level and how that affects right. enemies like crit chance and encounter rates right the, um, the dark the, dungeon is still very fun and stressful, though. Absolutely, and it's it's meant to be. Um, so it it changes the game to such a degree that it becomes something else, right? It becomes less of a tabletop role playing game and more of a more of a war game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because now you're controlling miniatures that are less. Like, the characters that you play are still people. Mm -hmm. It's just that everything else becomes a floating health bar and walking blue exactly. XP. Exactly. Like, and then, so it becomes entirely different in a way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So then it's not really D&D &D anymore, I guess. Yeah. In the, now, in the, again, in the traditional sense, I suppose. Yeah. In the traditional It becomes sense. a dungeon crawler, essentially. Yeah. You or a war game. Yeah. You yeah. could absolutely run a 5e campaign like that. Yeah, you yeah. could. Um, it would be different, and a lot of different choices would be made because mm -hmm. each yeah. choice is statistically the right one. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would be so weird. Like, yeah, and it, it, it does give weird? you, as a DM, like free reign on, like, dude, like, throw what you want. Yeah, right? It would yeah, be really weird so. to have it be... Because essentially what that does is... It's just is, open book, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like here we're fucking doing this here. Look, the monster manual. There's everything in there. You know, yeah, like, you guys today are going to be fighting this. It would make everybody become right? perfect min maxers. Yeah. It's... Imagine if you had like four players min maxing straight to hell, and it was fine. And then the DM is min maxing his monsters and encounters. That mm -hmm. would be so strange. Yeah. It's just yeah, it'd be like, very I'd, interesting. I'd, I'd totally be down to play it. it it's sort of like the opposite scenario of when we had the D and D basic campaign, yeah. and we were a group of level one adventurers fighting a beholder. Yeah, 
and be, like and the reason why our because had a snake. <laughs> yeah, and it's like none of us knew what a beholder was, <laughs> yep. so yeah. we're all like, "Yeah, it's a floating eyeball. We can take it." Oh, yeah, sure. and I had to make my of, fucking and, perception check to be like, "Is he injured?" No shit. <laughs> and then, like, out of game, we're all just going, "Oh my god, there's there's only like three of us. Oh my god, mm -hmm. oh my god, we're dead." Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. is some supreme fuck going on here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just. It's just one of those things where I'm just like, yeah, it's just a. Th it's a. It's a thought. It's experiment. a weird thought experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Because because it just it completely transforms the game into a different game, which is interesting. A world where everyone has a smartphone and yeah. knows what armor. <laughs> so class cyberpunk. Is. <laughs> yeah, really. It's very. That would strange. be so fucking weird. Could you imagine playing Cyberpunk 2020, whipping out your Dude. fucking smartphone and be like, how defensive is this? corpses armor actually, <laughs> no, no dude actually i have the perfect the perfect um answer for that mm. it is a piece of like really really good cyber tech in your uh -huh. eyes mm. that, yeah. is, that is able to analyze like say you see an ifv and it sees the ifv and like scans through schematics mm -hmm. and like publicly oh. available and some not so publicly available <laughs> information about that and you immediately go okay this is its weak points uh it's, hell yeah its tires have this psi well that's the you can <laughs> you, can, you can look at a person and uh say okay you know what uh like from these injuries mm -hmm. on a scale of one to 31 they're at a 24 mm -hmm. um <laughs> and let th let them get the cyberware however it costs like a lot of it humanity. costs like yeah yeah, yeah. millions it, yeah it yeah. is it is the power to open up your smartphone at the table and search whatever you want related to the game to what's going on right mm -hmm. now Hell but yeah. like good god it has an in-game price yeah, yeah, yeah. right um, <laughs> like you gotta save your entire life to get there, that shit there was a class in 3.5 called the lore master that uh or maybe it was archivist i think it was archivist actually Excuse yeah me. i think um, i think lore master is what's in 5e yeah type of card. maybe i don't remember but um yeah uh lore uh archivist in 3.5 was in uh heroes of horror uh that book and it, its whole thing was you figured out weak points of the monster by making rolls in order to like help your team out it was a, it was a cool oh, support class yeah. so it was true strike if it were good no <laughs> because you're telling you know because yeah, i just in a way I just yeah mean in the like the flavor text in the in the true yeah strike. in the in the description of it yeah yeah basically like, oh, you look at the yeah it was really cool the, yeah um, it is it is unearthed arcana it is course. an arcane tradition for wizards oh lore mastery Ah. Oh. oh, lore master. Uh, Starting at second level, you become a compendium of knowledge on a vast array of topics. Sure. Oh, actually, you're Rick and Morty is for Galaxy Brain. <laughs> your, your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability check you make that uses arcana, history, nature, or religion skill if you are proficient in that skill. Sure. Oh, I, I, I sure. really, really hate that character. Oh. <laughs> Gold. Oh, in it's addition, you, your analytical abilities are so well honed that your initiative in combat can be driven by <laughs> mental agility rather than physical <laughs> agility. When you Whoa. roll initiative, it is either an intelligence check or dexterity check for you. Your choice. <laughs> well, it is. It, looks like it is. The rogue is uh, sleeping on the job. <laughs> it is <laughs> literally <laughs> the embodiment of that meme of like the dude silver surfer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on his brain, brain. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> i sure. hate that a Whatever. lot actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah you a weird okay that's fine um <laughs> heard it here first folks <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway let's get back to the video <laughs> hey there are some dungeon masters that are okay with their players and metagaming and go. looking up monster information and whatnot and i would respond that there's nothing wrong with that good okay Here's the thing. I'm not going to tell anyone how they should have fun. Good. If your dungeon master is cool with everyone metagaming and that's just what your group does, then rock on. However, doing so would be deviating from role-playing as we know it. 
it goes against the very nature of what role playing is. And that's yeah, fair. That's basically what we were talking about. It's just yeah, that's it becomes perfectly a different fair. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes yeah. a different it's a different game. It, it Speaking becomes... of Alejo, we need to like have a fucking date where we like fucking paint our miniatures. Oh dude, yeah. I oh my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, so now wait a minute, hang on, there's that one. For, for UA, and then there's also... I was going to use the, the Witcher. There's also that. Uh, hold on, is it... Oh, no, nah, dude. <laughs> this blew up weird on my screen. Also this. <laughs> okay, that one, that one didn't blow up weird. And... <laughs> Both of those. If you can identify <laughs> these, by the way, out there, um, let, let, us we'll, let us know. Let us know. We'll fucking pay you on your Patreon. No yeah. <laughs> um, I had a moment when, where I when you the ask topic, someone whoops. how they oh. when you ask someone how they have that feat and they say, "Oh, it's from UA." Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's continue on here. Yeah, but one thing I've learned is that everyone is playing a different game, so to speak. And if your group mm -hmm. is metagaming its little butt off and your DM is cool with it and everyone's having a blast, then Breeze, for the love then of the Breeze, the Breeze. You guys cutter. noticed it too. I was wondering <laughs> if you would. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I just I just noticed it because it was behind him. That's a fucking great poster. Is that the DMG screen? Uh the no, players? that the the what poster behind is the Tyranny of Dragons uh ah. uh cover. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, TMA. can we go back to Prees? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Prees? Yes, please, All actually. Said, yes, I do Prees. feel there is role-playing as we know it. It goes against the very nature of what role-playing is. But one thing I've learned is that everyone is playing a different game, so to speak. And if your group is metagaming its little butt off and your DM is cool with it and everyone's having a blast, then Prees, for the love of all that is holy... <laughs> then Prees! 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 Guys, priest. <laughs> I when I watched this through before, just to see if it was like better than what we've covered, I was. I also went like as soon as he said it, I stopped the video. And went priest. <laughs> like, yeah, priest. priest. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, I got. I got. I got your priest. <laughs> priest. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> I, I just, you know, brain. Yeah. Ignore me. Ignore me. Said, Ign I do ignore me. He said. Part I know. Having a blast, <laughs> then priest. For the love of all that is holy, ignore me. However. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking, oh God, I it's, hate that one that you posted. It's, <laughs> I hate yeah, that. Yeah, in the other chat. Yeah. Oh, jeez. All right. Okay. <laughs> All that said, I do feel there are certain parts of metagaming that are acceptable. Shoot, even beneficial for the game. Let me explain. Imagine if your player's characters approached every single encounter with uncertainty about whether they stood a chance or not. That is, their PCs were not sure. What are you fucking doing over there? <laughs> no, you might. <laughs> I have to look at it on my phone because I can't switch over. Oh, <laughs> Fucking screen caps. <laughs> <laughs> and if you got the same screen that I do right now, hold on. I, I got you. If you don't have this, <laughs> just <laughs> just that one. That, no, one's, no, that one's pretty no, good. No, hold on, hold on. I I got this. Oh, you <laughs> you getting just the mouth? Always, of always course. just the mouth. Just the mouth. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Pausing videos is the best. It, <laughs> it really is. is. I am, and now I am you... so so glad I have no face cam. Now that you guys have light <laughs> shot, now it's gonna be a problem every time. <laughs> I've not yeah, had it doing it at all. I, well, I I've had it forever. I just yeah. it's it's only after watching those videos, those videos lately that yeah. that the idea has occurred to That's me. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway. <laughs> Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Come on. Yep. Priest, uh, bring it back. Point. Imagine if your players' characters approached every single encounter Cut their with hands uncertainty off, priest. about whether they stood a chance or not. That oh, is, no. Their no, PCs no. were not sure if oh, the group of no. humans were... What? Oh, I... 
I just realized we probably shouldn't be quoting that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's bad. Oh, wow. I. I just realized another That's... way that mm -hmm. <laughs> see I've I've been using it to make fun of Luke <laughs> as you should be. That's the only reason why we're using then, it. That's the I only. Said, and then I said no. at that time. <laughs> well, I said at that time, and because I didn't mm -hmm. put as much emphasis on it, I was mm -hmm. like something about that sounded fucky. What mm -hmm. was that? And mm -hmm. then like I started, I started, <laughs> I started like mm -hmm. looking through my mind, and I went, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a good thing we were only doing it because he said it. That's the only reason. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Shoot, even beneficial for the game. Let me explain. Imagine if your player's characters approached every single encounter with uncertainty, about whether they stood a chance or not. That is, their PCs were not sure if the group of humans were super powerful and shouldn't be trifled with, or if they were within their pay grade, so to speak. You see, this sort of metagaming isn't all that bad. You know, where the players know that it's a game and that most adventures were designed for their PCs level and abilities, and thus have their PCs approach the encounters with a certain confidence that they can take on the foes. Can you imagine how frustrating the game might become for dungeon masters whose players fled in terror from every encounter because they were just role-playing their characters? Or well, it would be fucking Morrowind then. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's the thing, right? Like, if so, usually, uh, you've set the expectations in your session zero, right? Yeah. You've already gone through how characters are, and you've got a basic idea of how they are uh, gonna act, and so yeah. you build your campaign to kind of complement that, or they complement your campaign, either or. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So usually you don't run into that kind of issue but i would say that if you do then it would be kind of interesting to try to run with it you know like what yeah. if your the characters are cowards what why why are they doing that where are they going to go what is what is the thing that is happening here right like and are they like how are they going to like improve are they going to have to like murder yeah. house cats are they to like well, level up so are they are they going to go into town to train with somebody right like um, are they are they going to try to better themselves before they go out to adventure like does it become more of a role play thing than yeah. a combat kind of thing you you can you don't have to just stop at the whole oh they're running away wow this is frustrating you can try yeah. to work with it if that's the way it's gonna go um yeah. but if you do have an issue with it then just talk to your players yeah and then just be like hey no, please. Well, please, you you then freeze. try to reassure them that yes, it might seem yeah. difficult, but I have I have made sure and this is the meta game point. I have made yeah. sure to adjust the encounters so that they work for your characters at their level. Right? Mm -hmm. And then then you have that bit of meta gamey thing in there, which this this whole thing of um having the unspoken agreement that the dm is going to put an encounter there for you that you are going to be challenged to buy but you can ultimately hopefully overcome like mm -hmm. i don't find that to be i i it is metagaming but i don't find it to be any like ever thought of as metagaming right like in my mind at yeah. least because it's just an unspoken mm -hmm. you know rule yeah it's just in a way yeah so it's know. an expectation yeah exactly so i don't know man yeah Ugh. or players who had their pcs retire at level one because it's a big dangerous world out there and who knows if death is right around the corner or not this sort of metagame well then you you have it happen once and then you yeah. go okay and then if it yeah, keeps happening like... then you go all right dude mm. um so yeah. how do you expect to continue to be playing if you're going to retire every single character, you know? It'd be Again. weird to have a character retire one, like, one character retire per level. Right, exactly. Then you, That'd be weird. Then yeah. you quite literally um, just kind of talk to your player. <laughs> yeah. Figure out what's going on and then see how you can really do... Again, th this all kind of stuff is relying on the meta gaming aspect of talking to your players which again I don't consider like it meta gaming doesn't need to be used for this kind of stuff I don't think right 
Yeah. Because, like, if I if I go into, uh, if I go and take out a board game <laughs> and I read the rules to <laughs> you, is that metagaming? <laughs> No. Yes. No, because you're not playing because, the game yet. It's well, it's an agreed upon method of interacting with the world. Right, exactly. So like but again how however, if you were to play like uh so, I don't know, some Lovecraft game or a, a a game in which there is a monster that needs to be defeated and mm-hmm. maybe like it spawns at some point or whatever, mm-hmm. and then you look up precisely how to defeat the monster and like uh the easiest ways to defeat the monster with like certain combos and stuff or like builds or something Mm -hmm. i'd consider that a little cheatsy doodles however i would also care less because a board game that we play for three hours uh, I am going to be way less invested in than a D and D game that I pay, that I play for three hours a week for months at a time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's true. So again, I don't know. Some things is just like they technically come under it that I just don't, I don't think need to be talked about. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. The the it ultimately comes down to is it being problematic? Mm-hmm. Cut it out. Is yeah. it not being problematic? Kosher. Exactly. Yeah. It's it becomes problem or not problem. Not metagaming, yes. not metagaming, right? Yes. Like, like I understand I... the colloquial use for it, and we all use it because we all know what it means. Yes. Like but... I had uh I denied uh <laughs> the druid in my campaign mm-hmm. uh the opportunity to it was either roll something or cast a spell. Mm-hmm. Um because he was using specifically some knowledge that I had told to um, the party uh, out of game. Oh, uh, that's my uh, yes. That's and, and, he's, and he's like, yeah, I want to do this. And I'm like, no. And he's like, what do you mean? I can't cast my spell. And I'm like, you're doing it because you know this. And he's like, it's not metagaming. And I'm <laughs> like, you were using this knowledge to, to, told to you cast out of character. Yeah. Yeah. To, cast, to cast this spell. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want, you can cast the spell, but I'll have it fizzle. Yeah, Ooh. it's it's one of those things where I would then just say, we did not roleplay this, right? Like, your yeah. character doesn't know this. I, I had right? explained to him why he would not know yeah, this. Yeah, of course. And he agreed that, like, that made sense. Yeah, good. And I'm like, so but you want to do this. And he's like, yeah, because that's what the enemies are. And I'm like, you don't know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> well. I'm trying to get it through. And then he agrees. And then he it doesn't is, get through. It is, okay. It, it's very much the, the Patrick Star thing of like, is this your wallet? No, it's not my wallet. Well, it has your name in it. So it's probably your wallet. Well, makes sense to me. Then take the wallet. It's not my wallet. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I was like descri- describing, like, so you're using out of character knowledge, uh huh, yep. to affecting character actions, uh huh. So that's metagaming. Makes sense yep. to me. So don't use the spell, but I want to cast it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> and that's when you throw your hand up. Yeah, you hands, just go. All like, right, oh. it fizzles out. Neat. <laughs> yep, you, you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you can spend oh, the spell on it if you're hardcore like i want to cast this spell but you're not gonna get the benefit it's like oh man you cast your spell and, oh man you said you're uh like all of a sudden you feel like you might be a different class a sorcerer and here let me go ahead and roll my <laughs> wild magic oh what's that blow up on you <laughs> um he'll bring a point up later that i will want to talk about that this actually does remind me of so we'll get to it okay but I wish it rather makes the game possible, was. I feel. And let's look at another type of metagaming I see a lot and totally support. Have you ever had PCs in a party that under any other circumstance would not travel together? You know, the paladin mm-hmm. and the rogue yeah. just don't see eye to eye. Well, if the players were really role-playing properly, they'd probably not adventure together. However, Not necessarily. I've, I've, but, yeah. All right. Like listen, uh, Gimli. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why absolutely. Game, like, like, it's it's the whole thing of like, are you willing to have your character's mind change or build a relationship? If yeah. you are, then okay, your character would potentially still be in the party. Unless they do something yeah. 
absolutely horrible to you, your family, or your loved ones in any mm-hmm. respect, mm-hmm. then, like, they're probably going to stick around because, one, you get to a point where it's like, yeah, it's dangerous alone. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, um, yeah, like, that's actually uh, sort of similar to uh, the Paladin that I'm playing in um, the my player's campaign currently. Um, my paladin. Wait, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I just I thought I heard Alejo cut out for a second, and oh. like I didn't want to be speaking alone in an empty room. <laughs> um, it's dangerous alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello. So, <laughs> my my paladin is a mortician, mm-hmm. and his whole thing is uh, pres- not only um purification of people after they've died. This it's the purgatory paladin, <laughs> which for. Oh wait, no. I've described this on a podcast. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah, he's a he's a mortician by trade, um, and one of his things is we do not steal from the dead. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. if if they're still alive and we've captured them, and you want that dagger, go for it, bud. But if like this guy was clutching this dagger when he got killed, he is going to be buried with that like a viking would be sure yeah. um and they're like all right but that's gonna come out of your cut of the gold and i'm like that's fine yeah. um and my character's whole reason for joining the party was he was working at the mortuary and then 11 bodies got sent in in various states of like being just butchered mm-hmm. and he's like holy hell what is with this i i can't have people just killing like and leaving bodies like these on the side of the road it it wouldn't do these bodies need to be interred so he uh and there happens to be an exodus going on from the town where he was so he caught a portal to the town where they were and he was like hi yeah uh was there like some people maybe that like just just killed like 11 (laughs) bandits like one dude like had no kneecaps and his dick was missing another dude's throat was mostly gone and there appeared to be bite marks around it like Mm -hmm. could you point me in that direction and the town mayor is like oh yeah you want to speak to like the leader of the party right yeah Uh, exactly they're, they're, they're at the inn and when i i pretty much led like a stakeout Uh, And, like, just watched them from afar Mm -hmm. for a bit before going up and being like, hey, you know what? Um, What you're doing, like, killing people, kind of not cool. Uh, (laughs) Let me follow along. Uh, I can handle myself. I will help you if any animals attack. Uh, Give me a (laughs) cut of the gold, I guess. But, like, let me bury these bodies, please. Good God. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if your if your character has an ideal and you're trying to change someone else's mind as well, like that's another reason for them to stay, right? Yeah. Like you can you can make it work. Um just usually in these kinds of things you have it already in your session 0 of this these are the characters that we're going to play and we've have this unspoken agreement of you know, yeah. let's play together. And yeah, like he's yeah. saying, right? Yeah. Like well, but. yeah, my character came in, like, after the group had already been established. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And so you're able to figure out how to integrate yourself in such a way that's believable and all that. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. If if they were to start to, like, mutilate bodies and just steal unabashedly from them, because I'm like, I'm like, dude, as a player, mm-hmm. if you want to take some gold from a body, go for it. I don't care. Just don't do it when Morty, when Morty is looking. Yeah, exactly. Um and uh so far like no one's taken anything they know they can just so long as i'm not there but uh just don't disrespect the dead and if they were to start doing that all the time morty would 100 percent leave them right and it makes it really makes not, total sense not even like gold yeah. coins what, what do you mean so like if you kill bandits and mm-hmm. they have like coin purses that yeah. they've stolen from other people uh-huh. you, you can't take them no nah, dude that's stealing from the dead Ooh. So yeah, can you that, can you take it that, while they're alive? Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. So. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, uh, that's why we had one guy whose body we had pretty much stuffed in a bag of holding, and like we slowly brought him out, and we were uh, actually Morty was just in, like interrogating him and like mm-hmm. straight up torturing the dude. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, dude, take whatever you want, but right now I currently have the the um not the handle part, but like the the long the drawstring. No, the of a shovel. Oh, the shovel! Right. I thought you were uh, like you're holding the bag of holding. Yes. yes. The the shaft. Mm. I currently was like straddling the dude whose hands were tied, mm. and like leaning down with the shaft of like the shovel I use to bury people on right. his neck. Right. And I'm like, you can give me the information I want and die a quick and painless death from this dude's scimitar, or you can let me choke you to death. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the guy's like. Well, I think, and I'm like, slow, painful it is, and then I started beating down. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Anyway, like, he's not a good person, but like, don't fuck with the dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, things apply, and uh, you can make it work, or you could leave for good reason. Like, there are things. Yeah. He's got there a job. He doesn't fucking con- need these par- this party. Yeah. He's not in it to be rich. That's why he's okay with losing so much gold. <laughs> contract of sorts at work where the players know they are supposed to be an adventuring party and stay together so they have their character go along with it even if they ordinarily wouldn't again like as stated usually you have reasons already made for your character and if you go with them for long enough you'll probably continue to get reasons like you don't need you don't need to immediately go I don't fucking know about this party, right? Like yeah, you can, right. you can just make it work. I don't know. The the rule of thumb I use with characters is, um, I I prefer to have a reason to adventure with them, even if it's kind of tenuous. Mm-hmm. Um, I am definitely not a fan of uh, I've I've always called it imprinting. Much like mm, a puppy mm-hmm. imprints on the first thing it sees and thinks it's its mother, yeah. uh, newly born player characters imprint on each other and think that they're a party. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I'm not a fan of newborns. <laughs> 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 Level zero campaign. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> you roll um, around in the mud and get cholera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you are picked up by your foot, and the doctor spanks you on the butt. Take one point damage and a will save to resist crying. Mm. Um, but like, shit, I'm a baby. I have a negative <laughs> billion to will. Yeah. So so like, you should have a reason, even if it's not necessarily a strong one, and you can work on like getting a better one later. But the rule of thumb I use is if someone does something that is uh, reprehensible to you, like as a player character, mm-hmm. role play it out. Like yeah. if uh, if in, if I was traveling as a PC with NPCs and they did something fucked up, uh, I will probably like give them like I'd say, all right, that's your one. Sure. And then if they do it again, I'm out. Yeah. If it's yeah. player characters, I give them like a good three or four chances just to help make things easier. Mm-hmm. But I will instead then like make sure to role play out those situations. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be a metagame reason of like I have to be with this party with this character. Right? Yeah. Like I understand people are attached to their characters and you wanna play this character and you wanna yeah. be a part of the story and all this stuff with this character, but sometimes your character might not work in a situation, right? Like, uh, look, look at uh Brogan's initial character in the Devils and Dice campaign. That mm-hmm. was that was a character that just did not have chemistry with the party. Yep. Yeah, because he didn't realize the type of anime we were going for. He didn't realize it was going to be all kind of goofy and it was more shit. Goofy. Und- yeah, and he made the uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stand in the corner and be all dark. And the breeze, yeah, yeah, that kind of he, he made he, was, he wanted to be a Seisuke, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, what what happened was we wanted to be Naruto filler arcs, sure. Mm. And what he made a character for was Fist of the North Star. Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. Quite literally, honestly. Um. So yeah, I mean, <sighs> go yeah. watch Devil's. And Nights. I mean, his character still <laughs> exists. 
Yeah. So, oh, yeah. It's cool. Just because a character doesn't can't adventure with the party doesn't mean that they can't still exist in the world and, and you, you still can, yeah. can't interact with them. You could totally hell, bring them back at some point. Yeah. You that's know? the other thing because that's what I, I could I could with... I could super easily just be like, hey, you guys are out in the fucking uh calamity quarter. You need to get some muscle to deal with these guys. You sure. know who to call. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. We yeah, know. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, I think, a, a rule of thumb for most DMs, I hope, yeah. is that if a character is retired, that doesn't mean they're dead. Yeah, It means that they've got a life going on, and that's an NPC that you pay a little extra special care to. Yeah, And later on, if the player wants yeah. to uh, take up that mantle again, they can. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I I literally did that with uh, my, my character, Gimbal. I had him... Uh, go away because he was like you guys oh boy you guys uh you kill people sometimes and i i like to entertain people and that's my mm. thing and uh i'm gonna go do that because that's really what i want to do and it wasn't until later yeah. when i had gone through two characters um that i brought him back uh because i was like okay so at this point He's done some some stuff on his own, and the world pretty bad. But also, like he's got this person with him who's like a uh, kind of royalty, and he's trying to keep her from being noticed by people and stuff. And he's also, if they do notice, he's probably gonna like need some assistance to like maybe stop people from trying to, you know, take her and shit. Uh, mm -hmm. so. Maybe I should go back to those murderous people who seem to like me like a lot. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, but... and then tell them, hey, we should become a troop and entertain people and also do that adventuring thing on the side whenever you really need it to. And I will help you with that as much as I can. But really, I'm here yeah. for the entertainment kind of thing. What can you do? Mm. Yeah. yeah. If you ever if you ever Jones in for it, we can do it. But uh, ha ha, cards. Exactly. Well, yeah. it's more performing, uh, literal like so songs and all that kind of stuff. Ah. Very cool. I love it. Yeah, I, I I just said cards because I did not know the names right, right. of any plays that would exist in your world. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know. Uh, it's it's not again not plays. It's songs basically. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So let's uh, let's continue here. <laughs> Isn't that so metagaming, it'd be really hard to play DD, &D, I feel. And what stops your players from banning Wait, sorry, what? absent that sort of metagaming, it'd be really hard. This is to the play one where D &D, like your players wouldn't what? stick together. Oh for yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and yeah it, it would be Again, we've already this. gone over it. Let's just keep yeah, it. Let's say. keep it moving. <laughs> Your players from banding together with other adventurers and increasing their party to 10, 15, or 20, or taking on hirelings to help them out. In a real world with real dangers, that sure seems safer than just the four of them having a go at it alone. Again, well, you're saved by the social contract and a little bit of metagaming. So, I, yeah, the like, social uh, contract yeah. is thrown around a little bit. And, yeah. like, yes, usually players are like, yeah, we can do it with our own party, but I would even go as far as to say, well, you could get some followers. Yeah, like, I mean, there's, yeah. like... There, there's also something to be said about the camaraderie that you build with a squad. You're building mm -hmm. your teamwork, and if you bring in someone who doesn't know how you function properly, then that can be a big detriment. Not well, to mention, you could get that person killed. That, and also, like, or you could, you know, get them to join and and kind of become a part of your group. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's not, it's not a part of the contract to say no followers i don't understand yeah. that right like because yeah, yeah you yeah. can totally think that you aren't prepared for something over prepare and then have to pay the person a lot of money right like yeah that's you can make it so that this is an option that anyone can do and believe me i regret making it an option for uh, 11 other people to join on the party of mercenaries that i did but it was something that was wanted to do and i was like fuck it let's try it and metal yeah. man do i regret it personally because yeah. keeping track of 11 other characters is really annoying sometimes <laughs> um, i fucking bet but i'm not gonna say no necessarily right because if you yeah. want if you want to have that thing, then that means I can throw big things at you, right? Like, yeah. I, I balance it for that, and I don't really have to worry about 
Um, cause literally if you, they went through a hiring process to find people that could do things, literal interviews with these people. And yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. Choose who you want. And then they did. And I was like, okay. So now I know exactly, exactly what I'm working with. Neat. Let's do it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, weird. Like, this whole <sighs> using the social contract to say no to hirelings because you agree that the party is going to be able to take on anything. Like, yeah, I, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Me neither. Dude, yeah. there, there is significant value in fodder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, yes, there is. <laughs> it's true. Your character well, not, you might not be thinking of them as that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think the common element that these types of acceptable metagaming have in common is that they promote a respect of certain game premises without which the game would be significantly more difficult to sure. manage or perhaps even fall apart altogether. What can the DM do about it? So let's say that your players are involved in the bad sort of metagaming. What can you and what should you do? I'll tell you right now that if I got worked up over every instance of metagaming that I see at my tables, I'd be a madman foaming at the mouth and popping blood pressure pills with every breath. You know Yikes, dude. Also, I'm tired of hearing like that. A shit party. How much? Yeah, yeah. How much fucking metagaming do you have at your table? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's I a don't little. Know, maybe it's a little strange. To stop. I don't know. I'll I'll see maybe one per session and maybe like, yeah. maybe and usually I just go. Eh, I don't really know if your character would know that. And they go. Oh yeah, no, that's probably fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like, what kind of fucking rebellious ass, cheating I... ass players do you play with? <laughs> <laughs> I've 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 had I've had a few instances like and one of which is counting the one that was like straight up hardcore metagaming right where mm -hmm. it's like eh, what do you mean I wouldn't know about like some obscure fact from across the continent that is not about <laughs> that story and I go well how do you think that you would and they go I don't know dude I know elves and I go shut oh up my God. yeah that's <laughs> exactly once once you go I don't know then, I know it then it's like what is your yeah, argument then I don't yeah, understand like like <laughs> if, if it's like if you can give me a real good justification and that justification is now permanently part of yes. your backstory then like sure mm -hmm. if it's not too egregious yeah absolutely. but if but if like i ask you and in the moment you can't come up with anything nah yeah yeah and then that's why and i would that, say for and then all the you like, maybe get like a weird look for a second and then they just kind of go yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly so like every time that my players would go like with into their actual historical medieval knowledge that i don't know then i would go oh yeah okay sure mm. you know because it, yeah. it made sense to me I was like, yeah, there, there, there can be some good uh, metagaming, for instance, if it's helping you as a DM yes. uh, create a more developed world like, oh, you know, people actually usually, w if they had the land, would go for a three crop rotation system. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There would probably be beans right here. Yeah. And then <laughs> you're like, OK, yeah, good to know. <sighs> Yeah, at like, that point I'd just be like, "Oh my god, please!" Quite, quite literally, <laughs> I think I've said this before. Carrots aren't sweet. Fucking eat me. <laughs> uh, quite literally, I've said before. Um, my players helped me map out a sewer system for my magical town. They've helped me, hell yeah, uh, figure out the government structure because I, I, my brain could not apparently, and yeah, I didn't ever I think about it until then. Them. You know, so I was just like, yes, okay, now, and this is also stuff that you would probably know, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it was, yeah. Are you telling me you used the resources available to you? <laughs> I attempted to, and in, and ultimately, I think I succeeded, which was nice. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Well, big words. In other words, I see mm -hmm. lots of metagaming, but I pick my battles. Not every instance is worth getting worked up about or even worth addressing. I let a lot of the minor things go. Now, some of you are gonna get upset with me about this and are all like, Luke, Luke, what's wrong with you? You need to take a stand Luke, for the Luke. purity. The, the s Luke. <laughs> Luke, 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 meta gaming, no DM. <laughs> Luke, 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 telling lies. <laughs> <laughs> oh god sanctity of role playing to which i say 
calm down. It's a game. Oh, hold on a with second. Me about hold this on. I need. Like, Luke, Luke, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you need to take a stand. I know what you're doing. Purity, yeah, I know. The, the sanctity of role playing. To which I say, calm down. It's a game. You see what I said right there? It's a game. A game. And what's the purpose of a game? To have fun. Mm -hmm. And believe me, there's nothing fun about repeated, frequent accusations of and conversations oh, no, about that wasn't it. metagaming. But that I mean, so yes, you're right. There isn't. So you nip those in the bud, dude. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it's not hard to go, dude, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Like if they keep doing it, then you then you go for the second time and you go, dude, we have a problem here. Stop. Yeah. And then if they keep yeah. doing it, you go, dude, if you don't stop, you're out of my game. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just don't allow the roll. Yeah. Like, yeah, you could also do that. It's it's so. What, <sighs> one, once in my experience, mm -hmm. and granted, my table from what i see other dnd youtubers talk about uh -huh. is i guess pretty atypical <laughs> and the fact that people generally respect the rules um, right <laughs> it seems to be not a thing that they talk about i don't know i've not i've never sat at a table anything like uh what seems to be mentioned in a lot of these videos yeah but it, I have found uh, I've tr I've tried like taking like a hit point away or three hit points or something like that and like I I, I'm less of a fan of that because mm -hmm. I don't like it being reflected uh, I don't like in world mechanics to reflect out so, of world mechanics because yeah, that's, that's it's the it's the same track as metagaming just going in reverse exactly and I he, he I usually just like up. to say no I'm not allowing you to metagame yeah, yeah. He, he even brings that up with the whole doing something to your character which is the point that I wanted to address as well like have like when you said like having the spell fizzle out because that's not something that they would know I was I was reminded of it a little bit. Right, mm -hmm. because you're you're enacting some punishment to the character itself, um, mm -hmm. instead of to the player, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, and also the reason why I had told the the player that directly was because I was like, uh, I'm not going to allow you to cast it, but if you really are dead fucking set on casting this spell, I'll allow you to waste the spell slot if you want. Mm -hmm. we can we can go down that path i don't care mm. yeah yeah um, yeah i don't know that that for me personally i wouldn't do that just because it's like i would just be like no <laughs> i would uh, just say no and stamp my foot and go no i'm i'm the type <laughs> of person though that i like to say no and then give them a worse option that they can volunteer for yeah if they want to deliberately <laughs> that's, disobey that's just, that's just because I'm an asshole. Right. <laughs> I don't recommend it as, right. like, standard operating, like, practice. Right, exactly. That's just me going, like, well, fucking, I guess if you really want to say fuck you, Mr. DM, then, like, you can I'll just say you spell. fuck you, Mr. Player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can waste the spell slot if you want. I recommend you save it, but, like, <laughs> right. we can... Hey, you're you're clearly in control, bud. You clearly know best. So, <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, he'll bring it up as well. So we've already covered it at this point. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't ever have them. There are instances of metagaming I feel are grave enough to be addressed. And when they happen, they need to be addressed. Yes. Looking up monster stat blocks yep. with the intention of using that knowledge in game is certainly one of them. Agreed. As is a player reading the module their dungeon master is running. These Agreed. forms yeah, of metagaming and yeah. others that you may deem severe enough definitely need to be handled. Let's talk first about how not to address metagaming. The good old tried and true method of punishing the player's character. You take 4d10 psychic damage for metagaming. Like, seriously, can we all just stop punishing players' characters already? Do we yeah. really think that will do anything besides... It's not the besides... character's fault. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't I don't know of people who do this. I've not ever heard of people I, doing this. Yeah, I, I have I have tried it once with one point damage, right. like, as just as a warning. And then I was like, I don't like how this feels. And right. I yeah, I've... But, 
I've all I do it jokingly. Yeah, I was gonna say you you do it jokingly because it's, yeah, I we do all it jokingly. Know. But but then <laughs> like but then you guys are always insisting like no, I'll take it. And I'm like no, no. <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, I'll take it's it. I wasn't true. Serious. It's true. Hey, <laughs> hey, you know what? You're the DM. What you say goes. You say roll four d ten. Are you rolling or am I? <laughs> yeah, right. So I'm like, I'll do it jokingly. Right. Yeah. Because I because the other thing is that what one I wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't allow you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Two. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't punish the character for something that isn't happening. You know, like I'm not yeah, gonna let yeah. you metagame. I'm just, I, that's my thing. If someone is doing something wrong at my table, I just stop it. Right. It's the same yeah. way I treat uh, discussions about politics. Any sure. kind of like politics, I just, fl I just interject. No, we're not talking about this. So how sure. about them Yankees, huh? That's that's politics. sports. Yeah, oh, right. Oh, right. I th I thought it was Yankees and Mets. Or like <laughs> but oh. Yeah. Um that's where I jump in and I just flat out say no. Sure. This yeah. conversation is not happening. Sure, sure, sure. That's the same thing with medic like egregious min uh metagaming, not happening. Right, yeah, it's yeah. just not. Yeah, it, yeah. Just, it's, just shut it down. Say yeah, no. absolutely. Yeah. Like no. at that point, absolutely it's, not. And just, if you want to try to continue, we're having a talk. Right. Not exactly. To mention, now the other thing that I'll do, and this is the, it's the kind of going down the same path that uh you went down, Aiden, when you damaged the player character. I'll have that conversation in front of everybody. Oh yeah, no, I, I when I explained like this is why it's metagaming and this yeah. is why you won't I won't allow this like yeah. at my table. Right. Like yeah. we were in the middle of the session yeah. and everyone is just kind of like silently looking to each other and like looking yeah. at the druid and I'm like yeah. This this isn't just a message to the druids. This right. is yeah, also it's, a it's warning from all, so that everyone can learn from this. Yes. this is what it is. This is why it's wrong. This is why I don't allow it. And, yeah. and honestly, like you, you don't want to be put in that situation. Right? You don't want because it's, fucking, being, it's uncomfortable for everyone. Because you're, because oh, yeah. you're being shamed. Yeah. Oh, you're absolutely. Being openly and publicly shamed. But even so, even for if I were to do that, because I I, don't, I would I if I needed to. But if yeah. I were to do that, I would also feel weird about it right yeah. yeah because at the end of the day you are friends exactly and yeah presumably as, <laughs> presumably <laughs> and you as the and you as the dm don't really have any real authority over what your right. friends do they yeah. give you that authority you, you are yeah you are kind of like the communally agreed upon referee yes yeah um but i'm like this is how this game will be run yeah because um, it's if you want to play like this, run your own game. Quite In my game, yeah. you're playing like this. Exactly. It's you, as simple you, as that. You've asked. Yeah. You've wanted to be a part of this. You have asked for my time, and my time is valuable. And if we're gonna go down this path, I'm gonna make sure that you don't waste my time again. Yes. <laughs> right. Or everybody else's. Time. Or yeah, exactly. Everybody else has also invested time, so don't yes. waste theirs either. I think. I think that was like the only time when I've ever got like actually like. I wouldn't say mad, but kind of like starting to get heated. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was because they're like blatantly like, yeah, no, this is this is this is that, but like I should be able to do that, and I'm like, no, you fucking can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> and that's why I'm honestly really glad that you guys have been my players. I've never had any problem with that. Never <laughs> needed. I've never needed to step in ever, yeah. because you guys stop yourselves. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, and I I think it's also somewhat of a measure of like we we've all sat in the DM's chair before. Yeah, yes. that's we, the other thing. We yeah. we are all we've all spent plenty of time thinking to ourselves as mm -hmm. DMs what and as do players. I and mm -hmm. well you don't think about it nearly as much as a player like what do I and don't I allow at my table but you do as a DM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, oh well, yeah, yeah. And like when you come from that background, you're more prone to go like. Oh, maybe like he can do this, and you go, ah, nah, I I shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, my I think my biggest problem with metagaming, and like, and this is uh, uh me doing it, right? Um, my biggest uh failing, I guess, is that I'm one of the ones that will, I won't. Okay, 
the example that I'll give is uh, I think there was a time, Alejo, mm -hmm. when you were running a game mm -hmm. and I was playing as a Genasi, Genasi, whatever. Genasi. 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 I can never fucking pronounce their names. Yeah, um, a Genesis. We were, <laughs> a Sega Genesis, an, yeah. An elemental man. Yes. An LMN. Mm -hmm. You are um, an LMN. <laughs> yes, I'm an LMN. Periodic table. Um, yes. Um, and we were going into a cave. Mm -hmm. And we fought a bear. And then later on, we fought some uh, yes, gray dwarves. Okay, yep. And we ran into them. And I, the whole time, like, as soon as you said the gray dwarves, I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, I know what this is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, and that's as far as I go. I didn't say what it was. Right, yeah, But it yeah. is out of character knowledge, at least for, on my end, being like, oh, shit. And but I think that probably does kind of... It, it uh, can it can influence decisions, yes. Yeah, um, and so that's my that's my big thing, is that I, I have a, a hard... Because I've looked at all the monster manuals, right, and yeah. I know what a lot of shit can do. Yeah, I'm yeah, not going to yeah. act on it as a character, but out of game, I'm like, oh, fuck. Right. You know, and even so, like that's also adds a little bit to the to the tension of the scene if you know what it is, but the the characters don't. So like it's yeah. like the the whole Alfred Hitchcock thing of the family sitting yeah. at the table and there's a bomb underneath and the viewer sees it but they don't know, right? Yeah, like, and true tension is the bomb doesn't go off. Exactly, right? And so, suspense. That's it. Or that's just, yeah, that's suspense. But yeah, yeah, it's it's quite literally like you are as the observer go, oh. Fuck, but your character goes, la da, we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The room the room is on fire behind the dog, but yes. the dog is facing forward, so the dog says this is fine. This is fine. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> so yeah. 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 I I will say my biggest uh I guess issue with metagaming, and depending upon how you want to view it, view it as kosher or not, I I view it as kind of striding the line. It's uh, if I think of something I want to do, mm -hmm. like metagame wise, like, oh boy, I want to flank this guy or mm -hmm. something uh, as more of a tame example, or who oh boy, I want to make sure I don't attack the skeleton with a sword. Yeah. Um, I will, I'll think, okay, this is what I want uh, my character to do. We'll say Boris in this example. Uh -huh. Um, and I'll say, okay, this is what I want Boris to do. Cause I know this is good. And then I think, well, does Boris know this? And then mm -hmm. I will try to come up with some justification to myself. <laughs> yeah. And then like, if I can come up with something pretty decent, I'll do it. Uh, if I can't come up with something pretty decent, then I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to walk into these, this thing that's clearly in an editor cap ambush because mm -hmm. Boris doesn't know what this is. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, or, or alternatively I'll go, wow, there's a lot of webbing here. Hey guys, this may be a big spider. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. And, when in fact it's not a spider at all. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's it's important to like I, I feel like that's fine that's absolutely fine because you're trying to justify it in character for it to yeah. work right and it, yeah yeah and the skeleton example works because it's it's harder to break a bone with a sword than it is with a hand yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. so that yeah, makes absolutely. sense to me that's that's fine yeah yeah something like that as well it's just like yeah when you look at a skeleton and you look at your sword and you stab with it you think hmm Huh. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It's like the picture what of the guy the like <laughs> it's like the picture of the guy like stabbing the skeleton with a pitchfork and the skeleton just has like a finger up That's with right. like a pointed finger and he's like, Now first of all, you're being a real dick. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that one. It's really good. I love that one. Um, um <laughs> I I will say probably I do get somewhat metagamey when it comes to like threatened squares and I like I will try to travel along them if I can. Oh yeah. Well that and that also that also isn't really all that bad to me because you can like when you're in combat with somebody, you can tell their general reach. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But like, it doesn't make sense as far as D and D goes for like, Oh man, I'm going to make sure I stay in this guy's reach for as long as possible. Ah, yeah. That's true. Like yeah. in real world fighting, you want to disengage like as quickly as absolutely. you can. Absolutely. Um, but then you have the whole suspension of disbelief and all that that you have, uh, yeah. applying because it's a game and you want to do the thing for, and... for for me the the example was when we were fighting the three minotaurs mm -hmm. and i like ran around like and all through the threatened squares of one minotaur and made sure to never leave it so that i could flank another one ah, and it, that's right and it's yeah. 
and it's like dude this is a weird fucking way to run around him mm -hmm. like if this were me i would get out of this guy's uh um a threat square and go back in and out and back in probably three times along yeah. what would be the most natural pathway for me but yeah. i trust that boris knows that this is how fighting works in this world yeah right, um, exactly so like i guess he runs through yeah if squares. it was if it was 5e then you could do that right because mm -hmm. thieves are able to do that or not mm -hmm. thieves uh rogues specifically are able to do that in general mm -hmm. um so yeah, I know I, I get you, I get what you mean, and that's fine. All right, away, how your turn? Huh? Oh, uh, well, I don't know admit thing your you guilt uh, to the <laughs> council. I yeah, must right? I must purge myself of sin. Um, yes. Forgive me. Uh, yeah, no, there there are definitely times where um, I will uh, remember how a stat block is because my brain can't stop sometimes yeah. and like go. And you know that plus, um, would you would you qualify like rules like recounting rules as also metagaming? Uh, it depends on if this if it comes up in a question like, hey, yeah. how does the frightened status condition work? I okay. don't remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and then you're and I'm asking for information outside the game, and you're right. like, oh, frightened mm -hmm. looks like works like this. I'm like, right. okay, great. I guess I guess specifically like if I know the ruling is different and i go into my little spiel of well, well that would be rules lawyering it's and true that's but again technically not metagaming uh, is it not? I guess. rules rules be lawyering kind of i imagine it as a venn diagram where some of it is in yeah. metagaming and some of it is not yeah uh rule rules lawyering for uh metagaming would be um oh i see a scarecrow mm -hmm. so i put away my sword and i grab my bow and arrow because um i know that the frightened condition makes it so that you cannot willingly move closer so i may not be able to use my sword gotcha but i will yeah. definitely be able to continue to use my bow and arrow okay yes. yeah i don't do that thankfully um yeah that that is actually something that for me is a bit less of an issue yeah, it's, it's like, because, again, you could have somebody justify it of, like, I want to stay at range. Right? Yeah, that's oh, boy, easy. that those claws look scary. Yeah. Let me stay far away. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I guess... Um, I mean, if which, you don't have anything you do particularly, it's fine. I, well, my brain is both good at remembering, but also bad. So I can mm -hmm. recount to you things about the rules, but I can't recount to you things about what I ate for lunch. Uh, yeah, no, that's you the know? same way. Um, what did you eat for lunch? Uh, I had a big bowl of fucking canned peaches, and they were fucking delicious. Oh. Technically, I, had, I didn't have lunch, actually. I had some steak and onions and jalapenos and three Ooh. eggs. Oh. Three eggs? Three eggs. I, I would I would consider it more of a brunch. I had a half a pizza. Mm. Okay. What kind yeah. of what pizza I had for breakfast. It was a... <laughs> I didn't have it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it was uh it was a Tony's pizza. Okay, so ah. we have clearly established that Alejo is lying to us, boo. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Every day. Admit it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this interrogation? Yeah, yeah right? I, right. honestly, I, yeah, I can't, I can't really think. Of, and I'm not trying to be like, oh, yeah, I no, don't no. do any, <laughs> right? Like, that's not. Well, I'm sure I do. I'm perfect. I'm, yeah. I'm the uh, best. Yeah. Uh. Um. But, I mean, yeah. in the in the devil campaign, there mm. hasn't really been a whole lot of room for Mez to do that, honestly. Yeah, so I've honestly, like, usually when I play the game, I don't think about anything but the game, right? Yeah. Like, because I, I'm, I'm the, very simple. <laughs> the, th the thing is, here's why, <laughs> yeah, here's why it hasn't really been an issue yet. Mm -hmm. One, the campaign has been very abnormal. Yes. With the style of play you know you're working in a town you're doing goofy jobs yes. you're talking to people yada 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 yes then when you're out fighting you're fighting abnormal enemies not yes. many people fight tons and tons of demons and devils and uh mm -hmm. custom monsters that i'm basically true. well i mean i'm not making up but monsters from books they've never read right you yeah, know what it's I mean? also true yeah then 
whenever you guys discover information, you're pretty much always together. So there hasn't really been any room for you to metagame. There, there has been a couple of times where I have said something and then been like, oh, wait, I wouldn't know that. And like I said before, um, mm -hmm. I, I do remember doing that. I don't know specifics, but I do remember at least saying those words. Mm -hmm. So I know I've done it before, but I tend to catch myself because... Yeah, well, again, I mean, you've always caught yourself. Yeah, I catch myself when I fail. Yet. Um, but yeah, it's 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 definitely one of those things where I I very much try to just live in the moment of the character more yeah. so because fucking real life is sometimes very boring and I don't want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why I, that's why I do this shit right. because fuck this reality. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> Right? I've never met a game. Mm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> right, That's oh, me. Nope. But yeah. uh actually real quick aside, yeah, yeah. um for for what it's worth, since none of my players listen to the podcast yet because stuff has happened that I've or sorry, stuff's been discussed in the podcast right. that uh they will happen them. in the game. Um but for if uh, the player that I'm about to shout out, uh, the Hexblade, happens to be listening to this episode, uh, as a, a quick just aside, one of, I think, the best examples of growth as a D&D &D player in my campaign has been the Hexblade. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Um, because he went from, at like, session zero demanding a level three spell oh, and yeah. when i offer like hey if you want i can nerf it for you he said well then what's even the point mm -hmm. to the class that he plays is completely custom and with a few tweaks that i think it needs it's like not over like over like balanced and everything like that it's it's pretty pretty balanced mm -hmm. that's good um and uh seeing um Especially like early on, well, the fact that like when he got into D and D, he read the player's handbook, the dungeon master's guide, and the monster's manual, oh, wow. mm -hmm. like right off the bat as soon as he got them. Uh, and then going to like, wait a second, like a seventeen should hit an owl bear or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he went he went from that to when I had some souped up scarecrows, and. Uh, for, uh the barbarian was like man these are some healthy fucking scarecrows uh he went hey man it's um like i'm like oh, well yeah you know I, <clears throat> I may have may have worked on them a bit and he went hey man it's your world if you say these are how scarecrows work they're how they work hey. nice and, and it, yeah. was, it was oh no that's what it was it was the frightened condition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um he's like hey man if that's how you say that the frightened condition works like that's how they work and i went yeah thank you yeah right, and and like going from the 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 player character to sit and brood in silence to going out of his way to like talk with merchants, set up businesses and business relations, and like the the flag and wagon that is now a business on wheels, yeah. like fit like fantastic growth. Yeah. So the uh, the next time they get a Wendell's wondrous wagon. Mm. Uh, to support the flag and wagon, mm -hmm. they need to m get a smaller, uh, a smaller pocket dimension mm -hmm. where they smoke their own meat, called the Flare House Warehouse. Ooh, oh. <laughs> ooh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. I anyway. like that. Let's also, go. <laughs> another aside. Uh, I've been watching this <laughs> tiny spider make a web on my light. And Ooh. it's been fascinating. Um, oh, dude, wow. spiders are fun to watch, actually. Oh, yeah, I, I love spiders. I'm not going to make it go outside or anything because some fucking fruit flies have decided to come in again, so... That's probably why he's there. Well, good. I want him to eat them, please. Yeah, you know what was really interesting, actually? There mm. was one time when I was outside headed to work, and mm. there was a spider on a little flower bush uh, just outside. Mm. And uh, I just took, like, this tiny, tiny little... I'm not even sure what it is. Like, a teeny, tiny little... Uh, portion of like I guess tree bark. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I'm not sure what it was. And just and by tiny, I mean like a millimeter. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh wow! And just like dropped it into the 
onto a section of the web and I saw him like race out and like try to <laughs> like tie it up. And I was, yeah, this yeah. is really interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh I have a spider bro uh outside my uh air conditioner where mm-hmm normally like you've got the window open and like you try to tape up the window and like mm-hmm. stuff foam in the creases to make sure that nothing comes in right and mm-hmm. invariably you start to miss things and like yep. you can have like bugs get inside your room but like mm-hmm. yep. that's that spider like spread a web covering most of my window hey. and good god that spider has eaten well and it turned out to be a female and it laid eggs and oh. the, the eggs then hatched and i've had only three little baby spiders in my room out of the presumable like <laughs> hundreds that hatched. So yeah, I'm right. like, you know what? Like those three get called. The the rest and their mama can live outside in peace. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. It's just a shame that spiders are so fucking creepy. <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Spider they're very, Cast. That they're Depends on the spider. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Garden <laughs> garden spiders, as tame as they are, I don't fuck with them. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't fuck with spiders. I just respect them. Yeah, I try to. Yeah. I try to usually get them to go outside so they can go have a meal. But I'm just gonna yeah. leave this one. I I He's point at them and I towards me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I I go outside and I see them. And I say, I see you, homie. Yeah. And then yeah, right. I go on my business. <laughs> respect the territory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All anyway. right, let's finish this video. Out. Yeah. Upset the player. So. How do I address metagaming? First of all, it's always a conversation with the player, and I usually do it at the moment at the game table in Good. front of the other players. Yep. Yes. I will basically yeah. yes. ask the player how their character has access to whatever information they are metagaming with. Now, mm-hmm. sometimes they'll give a reasonable response and the issue is settled. Yes. Other times they don't. And in that case, I tell them I feel <laughs> it's metagaming and that they shouldn't act in character on that information. However, What I don't do is not allow a player to do a thing or force them to do a thing. You see, I personally make it a point not to steal players' agency, except under a very narrow set of circumstances. This is the guy who said that if he's railroading people, that it's not his fault. But, all right. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Anyway. Yeah, no. Just want to make sure everybody remembers. So, yeah, no, don't worry. I will never forget it. (laughs) So, wait, is he then saying if I sit at his table and Mm. I blatantly admit to metagaming and I say, I want to cast sleep on this exact square, and he goes, I don't think you should do that. And I go, tough shit. And then I I said, I cast fireball. (laughs) Then he just goes, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Really? I doubt it. I I doubt I, it. He would allow I, that because, like, I don't I, think anyone I w- would. I would sure hope not. he would demand the the respect of yeah. like, no, that's metagaming. Yeah. Don't do that. I Be- I will allow you to do literally anything else in this situation except for that one thing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because I, like, there com- there comes a you- point where. Sorry, you, you first. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, you can cast Fireball maybe a few feet into the room. That's plausible. Mm-hmm. You can uh, maybe choose to cast a different spell. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll even... Hell, dude, I'll even let you know that there are enemies in there. Oh. Like, maybe Something maybe fruit. as you're walking, you, like, heard it coming from <laughs> down the hall. Like, I'll, I'll fucking... I'll, I'll meet you halfway, bud. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you are not getting away scot free on casting fireball at this exact point because it just so happens to catch everyone along like the edge of the circle. And you have no yeah. idea that, that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. There, no. There comes a point where you, as the DM, have to maintain a certain level of respect mm-hmm. for uh, professional standards. Yes. Sure. Yes. That. That. Yeah. Because. Uh, we've already gone over it, but the players are coming to your game. Mm-hmm. Yep. You are the adjudicator of everything in that game. If yep. you need assistance from a player, that's fine, because mm-hmm. obviously they're trying to help with a fair ruling. Mm-hmm. But if you just let them walk all over you, then your game is going to fall apart, at least mechanically speaking. Potentially, yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's, well, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, If they no, feel like they can get away with anything, they'll try yes. anything. Yeah, it's true. And then it, it that is an incredibly slippery slope, depending on your players. If, if, you, if you give yeah. a mouse a cookie. Um. Yes, if you give a mouse a cookie, <laughs> yes. he's going to want the whole fucking grocery store. 
Um, um, so I yeah, know I work in a grocery store. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I totally yeah, agreed. Yeah. And I, I, yeah. I have to assume, I have to assume that he does at least have that authority at the table, or at least that he exercises it. Yes, exactly. Like I, I have to assume it because he doesn't uh, seem to it, be that upset about it, it right? It, it does have to be one of those things. I wouldn't quite say that it needs to be like exercised often, but yeah, no, like, no. It, it it is very much like authority at. Oh, we should actually do an episode on that DM authority. Um, We've talked about it a lot, yeah. That um, it it's it's a lot harder to gain authority after you've let players do whatever they want for a yes. while mm -hmm. than it is to maintain authority with consistent ruling. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. You, most of the time, you don't even need to, like, do anything to maintain it, right? Yeah, like... like it's quite literally, most, again, just a respect it, thing. Like, people will respect that you are the adjudicator. Yeah. May, maybe it's because my players are all my friends, but... Yeah, there's also uh, that, right? When, presumably. When I, when I sit down at my friend's session... And he calls for a ruling, and he's like, make uh, a religion check. And even if my character is good at religion, I'll go, well, wouldn't this be more arcana if I'm searching for this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, And then I'll let him make the decision, and he'll say, no, do this, or, mm -hmm. oh, right, go for that. Yeah, exactly. And th that's me just trying to help the game, like... <sighs> Careful, That's I heard me. a serial killer revving up a chainsaw behind you. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'll... Whatever that was. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> He's going for a small family of three. I'm fine. Ah, uh, okay. okay, that's good. The podcast shall continue. That is what matters. For now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Once he um, runs out of families, I don't know. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully I, he'll I use see, up all the I, fuel. I hmm. see a solid five families between him and me, so... <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, continue. <laughs> mm. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, right. Uh, I I have no problem like deferring to what the DM wants one yes. way or the other. Like, I'll try to help make rulings consistent. And there are times when he asks me, Aiden, what would this role be? And I'd be like, Ah, uh, I would have him do a reflex save. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing barring... happens to me. And then if he yeah. fails that, maybe this. Mm -hmm. And he'll go, okay, or he'll tweak it. And, like, that's his world. That's how, like, f fucking dude, it's not how I'd run it, but it's how he runs it. It's his yeah, It's exactly. his campaign. Mm -hmm. I expect people to give me that same sort of, like, eh, I don't know about this, but it is his world. There's a, yeah. there's a difference between suggestions and demands. Like, there's yes. also... Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. You're good to go. Oh, there's also a certain point. Uh, there's also a trust between the player and the DM. When the play, when the DM is doing something fucky, mm -hmm. you can say, "Wouldn't it be this?" And then the DM goes, "Uh, don't worry, I got it." But roll yeah. that. But roll yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Like there has, there's got it. Like you there can't... is a, a measure of trust that you just. Yes, you because need honestly, to have. I have something like that coming pretty soon for you guys, and oh, I'm very excited. But, um, there is, there has to be that level of acceptance and trust between the DM and the player, so mm -hmm. that it's obvious that the DM is doing something that's technically incorrect, but there is a reason for it, and we will come to light mm. afterwards. Sure, yeah. yeah, and that and that's one of those situations where, as a player, I will go, "Hey, boo, this this seems to be some fuck." Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you go, "Hey, I know, trust," I'll go, "Okay," and then yes. shut up. Yep, yes. exactly. Yep. So it very simple, very simple fix. Yeah. <laughs> just just realized what it was. Sorry, it was not religion or arcana. I opened up my character sheet because I knew it wasn't those two. It was investigation versus perception. Ah, uh, yes. I was yeah, like, I want to search. I, I was like, I want to search through this area and like comb through it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, roll me a perception, which I have a plus one to. And I'm like, I'm taking my time. Would it be more of an investigation? And exactly. he's like, oh, if you're going to take time, then yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. there an investigation exactly. skill in Call of Cthulhu? Uh, I don't think there fucking it might, is. It might be search. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it's spot hidden, I think. Yeah, it's spot hidden. That's right. It's <laughs> Please spot hidden. tell me. Is there? I think That's it is. That's hilarious that you're an investigator. You don't have investigation. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> There's not, not technically. <laughs> That's because... That's because there's a lot of aspects of an investigation. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. That just sounds funny to me. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's history, intimidate, and then jump. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, so, Sandy. <laughs> have that conversation, and I'll call them out on metagaming. But I leave the final decision up to them. Now, I feel like I'm blessed with oh. amazing players, so usually... Okay, so no. I thought he, you were just going on and hey, on about how much he, you hate your. He, also, yeah. Aiden, get that face. <laughs> uh, oh my I won't get god! The, I won't get the face, but I'll definitely take the lips. I will take the face. <laughs> Give me a moment. It like, is the eye dude, thing right now, <laughs> dude. It is the nostrils and like the mustache <laughs> and the face make their own little face, and I love it. <laughs> uh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you you're absolutely right from your point for before. He would ultimately leave it up to you and you would be able to do yeah, it. Like, so like Okay. What? What? Okay. Then, you don't like case, it. I think Well, he does say though that if it's a repeat problem, then like action may be taken, so Yeah, uh, I so sure I guess so. at some point whenever he stops I, giving you chances, I, then he will I guess you, I guess hopefully. In that case, the the true meta of the situation is to treat it as like strikes in baseball, yeah. where it's like, oh man, I'll I'll use like two meta gamings now, and then I'll wait six months, and then I'll <laughs> yeah, use another. Yeah, and then you then he forgets about it. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Right. Just just try it out. So he goes, ah, eh, he's above average of uh, uh, quality of a player. Don't fucking then... do that, people. Oh my god, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, don't fucking do that. Don't and, do and then you just play, and you just play the long con. <laughs> Here, bad... this is the face. I thought you guys were gonna get this. This is slightly different. <laughs> That's what I've Ooh, got. That's pretty Ooh. good. That's that's the all fucking right. Eyes, it's weird. Ooh. Is he working? <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. Anyway, he's talking about how he has good players. I think. Usually, that's all yeah. that's necessary. Let me know down below where. Okay. You... Yeah. I don't. I don't. Know. Usually, yeah, I do all. I, I'll say that seems a little meta gamey to me. Like, I I guess it's more like stages i guess yeah. where i'll go like mm, would you know that and then uh, like if they start to defend it i'll go because that seems kind of sketch right and then like if it's continue i'm like Hardcore, that seems kind of yeah. metagamey yeah yeah and yeah. then like nothing ever gets past that yeah 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 you like usually it ends with would you know that and then they probably go and uh yeah, yeah. you're right yeah <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh, that's vid that video. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that. It's bad. Got... no, it's it's not that bad. No, no I it's I it... would give it an eighty four. Yep, exactly. It's it's perfectly acceptable. There are a few points that I have contention with, and we have mm. discussed them. Right, yeah. like it's, it's fine. It's I fun. suppose <laughs> <laughs> the see, one holdout. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what what he's doing, Boo, is he's using the strategy I have: do something egregious once, mm. and then just. <laughs> Put out plenty of videos where it's fine, and then like strategically insert the bad takes. But here's yeah. the thing: the first one was so fucking awful that I'm never bad. gonna forget it. It's he's my bad. RPG pundit for you. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, uh, let's take a short intermission here, yeah. and uh, yeah. we'll be back well, shortly. I will say, actually, before we intermission, if possible, yeah, unless yeah. you've already podcasted. No, I have. Okay, cool. Uh. Thank you, Luke. Uh, sorry we took so many screenshots of your face, but yeah. it's been kind of like a group meme for us for, yeah, like, yeah. to watch videos together and take screenshots of faces. Since like, uh, a couple if, days ago. <laughs> if only you could see our conversation history. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's it so pretty goes beautiful. on so weird. and on and on <laughs> and i'm scrolling through it now <laughs> yeah i see goes... dry i see apply oh i see grandma <laughs> it goes quite a oh ways, the yeah. ever the ever classic forest fruits mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes so yeah skin <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> anyway we'll be back shortly <laughs> welcome, i didn't agree with everything but welcome back uh, Welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, we are going to be looking at a nice little uh, family-friendly column. <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're looking at a article from the Angry GM. Uh, Boo, do you need the link? 
or do you have? Uh, yeah, I think okay. we for, for what it's it worth, away with uh, faces. <laughs> There yeah, we go. For, I found for it. For what it's it. worth, <laughs> dear listener, who did not like a lot of swearing, uh, this article is rife with it. No, it's not. Yeah, it's a lot of fableep. Yeah, it's bleep. Yeah, but but I'm I don't do fableep. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, right. I won't. It's... Good fucking god, good fableep and god. <laughs> this is a long fableep and article. Yeah. yeah. Oh gee, dang it. Yeah. F that. Uh, dollar sign and what sign. What the AG uh, double hockey stick? Percent ing. <laughs> yeah, I. Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's their shtick. Um... So, yeah. uh, like literally, how to fucking GM hack your fucking game? Random bullshit, and then mega meta dungeon. Mega dungeon. I thought it was a meta. Uh, dungeon. Shit, people said. By the way, it annoys me when. Uh, so he's got shit people said, right? And it's know. S dollar sign and percent. Oh, yeah. He but does that like, for everything. Yeah. But like, H is supposed to be done with that, with a, a pound sign. I, I, I don't, I don't care. It's censorship. I'm or like, I, or if, if you wish to call it as such an octotroph. Oh, oh my um, God. I hate it. Uh, so every time you say something fucking degen, you got a slurp. Uh, so this is I like booze opinions. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Good one. Good one. Uh, um, but yeah, dear GMs, metagaming is your fault. Very interesting uh, take. Capital uh, your. Capital your. In fact, um, we'll we'll just oh, go. Dude, so- that, that sounds that sounds like a great brand of tea. Sure. Yeah. Capital your. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, let's just go section by section. Just whenever we feel like stopping, uh, I I will start. Why not? Um, okay. There's a few fights I get into over and over and over. Uh, admittedly, I like getting into fights. So Dang. once I discover something <laughs> that sets people off, I can't help but bring it up every couple of months. But there's also just some topics that really, really piss people off. Once upon a time, I tried to coin the phrase screaming gamer herpes for fights that never go away, but keep flaring up every few months. Mm. It didn't catch on. Uh, Apparently, I'm the only one who thinks the concept of herpes is funny, but then I'm also the one who compares most gamers, self-included, to an embarrassing disease. Wow, okay. Uh, Uh Sure. Okay. Uh, Sounds like a healthy mentality. <laughs> okay, that went way off the rails. You are the controller of this. So, anyway, yeah. uh, if I had an editor, they'd probably have a few choice words about that last paragraph, but I don't give a f- dollar sign and sign percent sign. Um, fuck. <laughs> um, you know what? I don't do fableep, but I do I do use f dollar sign. <laughs> yeah, and oh, it's so fun. Uh, Because it just, I don't understand why I have to read it that way, but I do. Um, So let me, let me just first, like, this isn't even to go for his point yet, because he hasn't, but you have complete creative control. Why do you censor yourself? Especially when you... I think it may be just part of his shtick. I I guess, but I would honestly have, like, I would just do it, you know? Yeah. Like, you're already doing it. Like, everyone especially, knows what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, especially when, like, if I'm reading this mentally, I just say the word. So Yeah, yeah so what the hell is the point? Say the word. Uh, I th- the uh, H pound percent and <laughs> is your point. <laughs> Mm. Uh, the the thing is, every so often I say something perfectly innocent and totally true, and people get really pissed off about it. Okay, gotta justify it already. To the point where I usually end up being blocked or blocking a few of the more raging psychotics on social media. Don't block people. That, you don't. You don't, That's unless like- they are absolutely, like, death-threatening you, I guess? In that case, it, oh, sometimes I even get some hilarious death threats, but you seem to find them funny, so why? Okay. Mm. But that's the internet and nerds for you. Okay, generalizing. Thank you. Mm. Um, for example, a few weeks ago, I jokingly said on Twitter that metagaming is a word that GMs use to yell at players for ruining their screw jobs. Hey, 
quick quick note alejo yeah. i just scanned through the rest of this intro and there is nothing of worth that's actually going to be relevant to us it's all self-justification we can oh, probably skip. good okay cool all right well then read it for yourself take a pause you know if you really want to see this man's uh, mindset or it's bit person, yeah his, I guess. it's I him know. saying like metagaming is a serious issue to him uh he wrote this article because people said have you ever written about it uh he calls it screaming gamer herpes again hmm. uh and it's a compilation of his thoughts and feelings regarding metagaming and how gms think about it and how should they aim, oh sorry and how they should not deal with it he said the same thing twice as well um oh uh i remember reading <laughs> ah good uh let's see He's full of... yeah he says uh in uh but i've never written a definitive thing on metagaming uh, yeah, a complete thing and then he says uh but never a solid full on analysis i or i realize i've written a few different things on it but never a solid full on analysis he says the same thing twice here so all right anyway again like he said he doesn't have an editor yeah and he doesn't and he doesn't give an f dollar and percent right exactly yeah f dollar sign and sign percent sign uh the totally fake pretend stupid definition of metagaming uh first of all i need to clarify what i'm actually talking about here oh thank god because oh, i yeah. have used the term metagame before but i've used it correctly and in oh, this article okay. i'm talking about the wrong definition because most people who use the word use it f dollar sign and sign percent sign ing wrong uh so let's clarify yeah or rather, let's unclarify. Ugh. Never mind. I hate, I hate that. Um, <laughs> At least it's consistent. Never mind. <laughs> Me meta, <laughs> meta is a prefix, uh, and it gets attached to a lot of words. Metaphysics, metathesis, metapod, metaconcept, etc. And as a prefix, meta is something that lies outside of a thing. It lies below a thing. It gives the thing structure. It's sort of the hidden rules that underlie a thing. For example, when we talk about metaphysics, we're talking about the hidden rules of the universe, the rules outside of physics, but on which the rules are built. For another, more accessible example, we uh, talk about a common... Uh, comedy. A comedy. Yeah, being meta when it makes jokes about the structure of comedy. Much of what the Muppets did, Muppets, Muppets, Muppets. Uh, meta jokes in Muppets. If you didn't know, amazing. Uh, a meta game is a set of rules and structures, therefore, that lie outside of the rules of the game, but still affect the game. For example, in competitive online player versus player games, the players refer to the balance between various characters and their powers as the metagame. If a character is recognized as an overpowered choice and therefore becomes popular, skilled players will focus their efforts on finding good choices to counter that character. That's how the metagame works. Deck building and all the complex rules of legality of cards in a game like Magic the Gathering is part of the metagame. In that respect, the metagame is actually an important uh, is actually yeah. an important for game designers to understand. To understand an mm -hmm. important yes, he he missed thing. Okay, an gotcha. important thing for game designers yeah, to understand. Sorry, it threw me off super hard. Um, yeah, and for advanced hardcore players, it's also pretty vital to have a grasp of the concept of metagame. Because the metagame deals with things like game balance and advanced strategy. But there's all other aspects to the metagame too. In an RPG, a big part of what should be called the metagame is the idea of the social contract. Here we go with that. Uh, yep. Part of the game is a tacit agreement between the players and the GM that the game is a shared, non-competitive experience. The players work together. The GM presents obstacles, but isn't actively invested in the player's failures, and so on. The interactions at the table and the social rules that govern them. Uh, them? Uh, those are part of the metagame. Yes. I agree? I, 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 I guess? Follow, follow, following the usage of the word metagame, as you have defined it as 
what underlies the rules and is the basis for upon which all other rules are built. Yeah. Yes, the social contract is the meta game, and in fact, what you would then call the uh, I guess hyper game would be <laughs> have fun. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, so uh, with your definition, yes. Yes. Uh, but that's not the meta game we're talking about here. Oh. Because in D&D and other RPGs, the word metagame has become co-opted by screaming, GMing, dips, uh, dollar sign, and sign, percent sign, yes, thank uh, you. who needed a word to yell at players with. Uh, and the meaning of is this. Metagaming, as a verb, occurs when a player makes a decision for their character based on information that the character doesn't have access to. Now, if you want to be really technical, that actually works with the idea of the metagame as outside the game. But yes, the that, problem... Yes. That's yeah. how most people use it. I, I was going to say... That's being really technical. No. That's a commonly understood yeah. Again, interpretation of like, it. Colloquially, we use it that way because that's how... It's, it's not a real word. It's, yeah. it, the, it's not the, an actual word. It's just been made up to fit our, our, our group. Our, yeah. our hobby like yes. yes yeah following uh actually uh i taught alex the meaning of what meta game was in league okay. as he had had experience in D and and had always thought meta uh meta gaming bad yeah and i was like no in league you want to use the meta it is definitely and, a different thing yeah and the way i had used it was because the usage of uh, and unfortunately, this is kind of what he hinges his whole like. This is what meta gaming actually is. Right. Is the he relies on meta being uh, outside of, which is a possible interpretation of the prefix of meta. Yes. However, meta, uh, in its most strictest sense, is better implied as above. Hence. Mm -hmm um metaphysics is mm -hmm. the realm of the spiritual uh yes. it's it's less quantum um as he would imply by the use of meta whereas it's hidden rules that aren't yet discovered uh you would think oh that's quantum but metaphysics is spirituality mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um it is outside of and above not below as yeah, he's he seemed to put imply. it like that as such the reason why people use the word meta game or an established meta with things like uh call of duty or mm -hmm. uh fall guys i don't know the kids play that um <laughs> <laughs> does that have a meta i guess uh there, there are a few maps where it's better to use specific strategies gotcha <laughs> it's, a, it's actually pretty fun but um i'm waiting until it's more it, it, Call of developed. Call of Duty or uh, League of Legends mm -hmm. or Warframe or World yeah. of Warcraft, what have you. Yeah. Um, the reason why it's called the meta is because as as you're playing and you're you're doing your thing and you're having fun, uh, that that is a strategy. However, a better strategy, one that is above the level you are currently playing at. Like there's the game as a whole, which mm -hmm. is casual players, and then there is the meta game, which is more optimized for certain pathways and as stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh that is what makes it meta. Not that people are going and saying like, oh well, uh I talked to the developer <laughs> uh, because the developer is outside the game, and the developer told me to put Athene's Unholy Grail on Sona. Here yeah. you go. The the truest and best, what the the lifted above the the cream rising from the crop mm -hmm. is to put uh, Locket of the Iron Solari on Thresh because it's fucking good, actually. <laughs> um. <laughs> and in most of in most of those situations meta also functions as an acronym or it means most effective tactics available correct true oh i think i have heard that yeah i think that's what you told us <laughs> because uh, no, like maybe. like when, when <laughs> I dude i see you a lot 
I make up acronyms like on the fly. Dude. It's true. I mean, honestly, it works because it does, that's what yeah. you're doing when you're following the meta. You're going for the most effective tactics available because yep. that is the highest. It's the you're using the you're using the knowledge of the game's rules mm -hmm. and be not bending them, but manipulating the rules in such a way that you're gaining the most bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um. So yeah, because meta is like sort of above your your whole thing of like player is meta gaming. Just the the analogy kind of like falls apart. The the, yeah. the if if I were to go to a dictionary, right, and I were to look at this word, if it if it was in the dictionary, right, and I feel like it should be at this point. Um, it is used enough by enough people that it it probably should be. I looked in Merriam-Webster. It's not there. Um, but uh, it is uh, very much uh, something that everybody uses. And I would say that there are multiple definitions to this word. Um, the one that you're using before applies to the, the video game. Whereas the one that we're using now applies to the RPGs, the TTRPGs. And I feel like both are valid to use. It's just there are multiple definitions and it depends on which one you're using to define what's going on. Yeah. And if you define your term as the one that we usually use, which is playing with things that are outside the game, then that's the one that we're using and that's the one that everyone is using. So yeah. how is it wrong? I would, I would also say that uh, according to dictionary.com, mm -hmm. uh, there are various definitions for meta, but one that occurs to me is noun, a consciously and playfully self-referential story, conversation, etc. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, metagaming as a whole is taking information from outside the game and using that uh, inside the game. And mm -hmm. the only way that that can happen is if a fourth wall is broken and that character can look outside the game and learn something that they would not see yep. and then use that information for themselves. So it does fit the definition of meta because a character acting that way is self-referential mm -hmm. in the fact that it acknowledges that it is in a game yep. and not aware of certain information and looks to the outside of the game to gain that information. Exactly. It doesn't yep. look in its brain. It looks in the developer's brains. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It looks in the brain of whoever made it and everything outside of them. Like, it, it's... <sighs> So th this is the the problem, at least, that we've run into now, is that you've defined your term differently than how everyone else has defined their term. So yeah. we're at odds here because we... I cannot... I mean, I understand where what your term is, but it does not but apply. But it's not the term... Yes, it it's does, not... It, it, it is a valid definition, but it However, is not, it's not the common definition. It, it's not applicable to the situation because I would say that this would have the specific of in a role-playing game, right? The definition yeah. used as a uh, verb in a role-playing game scenario. Yeah. Um, that's how this is used. So uh, you can call it wrong all you want, but again, I, I don't think it is <laughs> at, at yeah. all. Um, but continuing on. Yeah. Uh... Literally with but i will oh, I, I will oh yeah i just also did want to add i do agree i i remember agreeing uh with more or less the sentiment mm -hmm. of the article i think okay um oh well potentially you did maybe you didn't give it as much of dude, a deep it, thought as it, you wanted to it, this was also like far before i ever dm'd this was i think i read this in between the first and second campaign i played oh wow okay oh okay. gotcha all right well uh it's been a while but i remember it stuck out to me and mm -hmm. whether it stuck out to me because i agreed with it or had a seven hour rant to myself as to why it needs to be tweaked i don't remember okay mm. Well, well, see, the second I, I, one was significantly more descriptive, so <laughs> I'm imagining it's the second one. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm just, just saying those are, the, those are the two things that will make me remember something forever. Like, right. I will remember the combat wheelchair forever yeah, because yeah. I think it's hype as hell. It's fucking or, cool. Sorry, hype as H, uh, uh, H Dollar sign. pound and carrot. <laughs> um, I hate that. But, um, <laughs> so, I put the carrot in there for you. I, uh, but. The problem is now, uh, if the problem is it now has such a negative connotation that you can't use the word for anything other than pissing and moaning about players you don't like. Not true. Not true, we've been using it the whole night. Um, anyway, metagaming in, <laughs> in this respect comes in two basic forms. First is when one player uses information about another player or character to shape their choices with regard to the other character. The classic example is what I like to call the A dollar sign and sign whole uh, paladin and the A okay. dollar sign and sign whole thief. Uh, in this example, the thief character is secretly evil and secretly steals from the party. The other characters do not have any evidence that the thief is evil or stealing from them. In fact, the characters have no reason to suspect the thief of any wrongdoing at all. But the players do. Maybe the players have spotted the thief's character sheet and know that it has evil written on it. Maybe the other players have actually seen the thief's uh, player and the GM playing out the thievery directly at the table. It doesn't matter. The point is, the players know the thief is evil and stealing from them. The characters don't. But now you have the paladin, uh, you have a paladin, and a paladin can't associate knowingly with evil characters. And further... It is the duty of the paladin to break, to bring lawbreakers and evildoers to justice. Yeah, if this... you're shitty at playing paladins. Well, so I and mean, you're also shitty at playing rogues. That's yeah. why it is the a dollar and whole thief and the a dollar and whole paladin. Exactly. Yeah. This is yeah. a specific scenario. This mm. all comes Up to a head. Two bad players. Yeah. This all comes to a head when the paladin uses his ability to detect evil on the thief. The thief player gets mad because the paladin has no reason to suspect the thief. The paladin would have uh, would never have used the power on the thief. In fact, the paladin has never used the detect evil power on any other member of the party. The paladin player usually comes up with excuses for this, but one way or the other a major fight breaks out. The less extreme example occurs when the paladin starts watching the thief and purposely trying to catch him in the act to provide the character with evidence that confirms that the player is are uh, the, what the player already knows. In effect, the paladin player doesn't want to be accused of metagaming and is therefore trying to find an excuse. We call that player on player metagaming. Okay. So okay. I've never called it that. I'm just uh, yeah, I was going to say, I've never, never heard that, but all right. Uh, so I do have two thoughts on this. Okay. Okay. The first. Give me your first. I, sorry, I have three. Uh, the okay. first. Okay. Give me your first three. That, <laughs> the, the phrasing? I have give me thoughts. your first. Yeah, oh. give me your firstborn. Oh, Um. so... The, the first thought is, this can be avoided by having the players at your table not be a dick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that's sorry. metagaming. <laughs> sorry, a, uh, a D close parenthesis, mm -hmm. open parenthesis, right. at symbol. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> And oh, dude, this bit's staying the whole article. Oh, I'm not gonna stop. No, 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 yeah, no. no I'm uh, not stop. <laughs> Absolutely not. And this is how he wrote it. Through, through, yes, through mutual respect between you and your players, I would hope that would not happen. Mm -hmm. Even in my most klepto of characters, I've never stolen directly from a player. Mm -hmm. I have stolen a key that the player could have earned, mm. but I made sure everyone in the party still profited. Yes. <laughs> and it was fucking glorious. <laughs> I was there. I helped. <laughs> yeah, you were. Uh... <laughs> uh -huh. Go on. Alejo, Alejo, were you there? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> so great. Fucking um, earned that key. God damn it. You, 
you as a thief, it is your purpose to steal <laughs> for the benefit of the party. Yes. It is not your job to steal for the benefit of you. Because the benefit of the party is the benefit of you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Not Ultimately. the benefit of you is the benefit of the party. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all turtles are tortoises, but not all tortoises are turtles. Yes. Mm-hmm. Boris will happily steal but I will make sure that it profits everyone and not just Boris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Oh God, I forgot where I was going with that. Um, (laughs) No steal. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Don't, don't be an asshole. That was, that was point number one. Right. Uh, (laughs) Point number two is a good player who um, maybe happens to notice that there is evil. Uh, can still metagame justifiably by reaching a a position in which maybe there's an NPC, an NPC that they justifiably suspect. Mm-hmm. As such, when he does detect good and evil and he sends off that ping, mm-hmm. the rogue is also part of that group. Yep. Yes. Um, and it's one of those things that the DM can then go, yeah, the old man you're talking to, like, shows up as evil, and as you look around, weirdly enough, the rogue also shows up that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, thirdly, and I didn't realize this when I was reading it initially, but I'm now starting to, like, keep this in mind as I see the last paragraph and a half as you describe because this happens this must happen right it is the the slippery slope fallacy Mm -hmm. which it says if uh if we ban hummers because they are bad for the environment eventually the government will ban all cars so we should not ban hummers (laughs) yeah like if (laughs) If this happens, then this must happen. There right. is no in between where yeah. we can deviate. Yeah, exactly. There, if there is a asshole paladin and there is an asshole thief, and granted, I do acknowledge it is statistically likely, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Um, if there is an asshole paladin and an asshole thief, then they the paladin must suspect the thief. Yeah, and right. Then, the paladin must start building a tenuous case, yep. and then the th- the thief must be evil. Yep. You know, there is a, a video game that I oh. I really like. Actually, a video game series that I like, and I'm I sure you guys you like know. video games. Boo. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> okay. a little known fact. Yeah. Um, it is the uh, Tales of series. <laughs> right. series oh, of imagine my surprise. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> there is one of the games in the series is called Tales of Vesperia. Mm-hmm. I played it. Um, oh, and by played it, I mean recorded it. Shut up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. And the there are two very important characters in the in the game. Mm-hmm. And one of them is named Flynn, and the other is named Yuri. Yuri is the main character. Okay. And he is this kind of roguish, rakish guy who, you know, he doesn't have a job. He's like, he he lives in like the lower quarter. He's this kind of, he's the roguish guy. Sure. And um, he used to be an Imperial Knight, and he left because he hated, he wanted to do good, but was forced to watch as people suffered because of red tape. Sure, yeah. Uh, his friend Flynn. Who's cannon? He doesn't yeah. play by the rules. <laughs> Pretty much, yes. And I believe he actually got in a fist fight with a with an officer, and that's what got him kicked out. Okay. Um, because the officer was being a piece of shit. Um, sure. And Flynn decided to stay in the Imperial Knights because he wanted to rise up through the ranks and become like the commandant of the Imperial things. Knights and change the system mm-hmm. from the top. Yeah, that makes sense. And they have they're still friends, but they, you know, they butt heads. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there are portions of time where they have to work together, but they really their methods don't gel, but mm-hmm. their intentions do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there what are good writing. Yeah, yeah exactly. there are there is actually a time where Flynn has to stand by and watch Imperial citizens basically be sent off to a concentration camp and later on die. Oh. But he can't do anything about it because if he does, he'll lose his position and mm-hmm. he won't be able to do the thing they set out to do. All his work would be 
for nothing. Mm-hmm. Sure. Meanwhile, yeah. Yuri is being the roguish guy, and he actually goes and flat out executes these fucking people who did this. He kills an imperial senator who was basically kidnapping people and feeding them to monsters just nice. for his own amusement. Wow. And he also kills an imperial guard captain or imperial knight captain who is sending people out into the desert to find a thing and they die. Mm-hmm. So these two people whose names I shall not remember and <laughs> refuse to remember That's and serious. instead start to and shall instead I said <laughs> refer to them as Batman and Commissioner Gordon mm, pretty much. Um, very good. Do we follow them through do we follow them throughout this uh the game and then like switch perspectives or are you only ever like one of them? You're only ever Yuri, but Flynn shows up from time to time and he helps you out and they, which they one butt is heads. Flynn? From... Uh Flynn is the Imperial Knight. I'm sorry. Yuri is which, the rogue guy. Which which uh, He's Commissioner he Gordon. Batman Flynn Gordon? is Commissioner Gordon. He's Commissioner Gordon. I'm okay. Sorry. Thank yeah. you. God you play it. as Batman. Do there. not yes, you play do as not Batman. burden me with lore. <laughs> Yeah, you play as Batman. Anime Batman. God damn it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And so the whole time, they they are butting heads. They're both doing what they believe to be right, even though one is clearly breaking the law and being a vigilante and killing people, mm-hmm. but he saved lives that Flynn would never have been able to save. So you can have these paladins who are lawful good and they have to bring evildoers to justice but when the law is being manipulated by the evildoers sometimes you just need a dagger in the back Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you can have this thing where they have to countenance it for the greater good Mm -hmm. yeah there can be those moments when the paladin is like i can't let these people die but I can't do anything about it. Otherwise I'd break my paladin oath. Go exactly. fucking stab him in the back. You know, exactly. It has to happen. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a, it's a way to have that kind of different dynamic so that you can yeah. have, um, somebody who is willing to help and do something for evil or not for evil, for good, but is do evil for good. Thank you. Yes. That like it, it becomes depth. <laughs> yes, it becomes good writing. It yeah. becomes an, uh, an amazing character relationship. And, like, unless you really, like, you <sighs> can go down this route if you want to of just, I have to now execute my rogue, but but you don't have to, right? You don't you can, have to. Like, even in this case, you could even have an intervention, divine intervention going for the greater good, though. Yeah. Right. Like, there's so many options here to make it so that you don't, you don't have to go down this path of completely fucking your party. Yeah, and you can also have that really awesome moment where the paladin is like accosting the rogue or the assassin in this case, I guess, mm-hmm. like prestige class assassins. Like, why did you kill them? They needed to stand trial. Are you just gonna stand by and let them kill people in front of you? Which is more evil here? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. your, sure. your um. Not laziness, but um, inaction. Inaction. Your good, your inaction in the name of good, or my action in the name of justice. Mm-hmm. You know, it becomes it becomes a, a, a just something that you can you can have conflicting ideals. Like yeah, but it's it's just it's as long as it all works towards the same thing. It's yeah, and it's like th- you create such an interesting fucking character uh, relationship. Fuck yeah, it it can <laughs> be so very good. fucking cool. And again, it's not for everyone, sure. Yeah, um, it's not for everybody. And that's a thing where you can have that without any metagaming. It's just roleplay. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, again, like, my my little Divine Intervention is semi metagamey. Like, it's just trying the DM trying to go, no, guys, you gotta work together, though. You know, like, yeah, that's one way you could do it that is more metagamey. But ultimately, it is up to how you... you you uh, work with the situation yeah. um, and you don't again yeah you don't have to metagame to, to make it work yeah anyway <laughs> the other form <clears throat> of metagame what? occurs when the players know something about the way the game works and use that to their advantage the main example is what I call the A dollar sign and sign hole GM and the troll oh interesting okay 
Uh, oh, and the troll specifically because they find a troll. Okay. I, well, no, I don't think so. Uh, no, in, no. In this scenario, the party encounters a troll for the first oh, time. Oh, okay. You're right. Uh, in this <laughs> yeah. scenario, the party encounters a troll for the first time. Trolls, of course, constantly regenerate. They can heal wounds, regrow lost limbs, and can uh, even recover from death. The only way to get around the regeneration, the only thing that causes a troll permanent wounds, is to burn the troll with fire or acid. So the party encounters a troll. One of the players recognizes the troll as a troll because they encountered trolls in a previous game, or they've read the monster manual, or they know any uh, F, dollar sign, and sign, percent sign, ing thing about D&D because for F sign, dollar sign, and sign, percent signs sake... Uh, trolls have been a part of the game for 40 F sign, uh, F dollar sign, uh, and sign percent sign, uh, ing years. And they've appeared so sorry for you guys in the same form in countless video games and other forms of media. And every gamer knows trolls are vulnerable to fire and acid. No, not true. I'm pretty sure yeah, that's not true. I'm pretty sure there's mm-hmm. a bunch of people who have never encountered a troll. Like, yeah, I, because I, on- What's more, too, like, uh, I had not encountered a troll that was weak to acid until Mm D&D. What I had encountered is most trolls were weak to fire. Mm -hmm. And what I've also encountered were things called bile trolls, Mm. which were trolls that shot acid Mm -hmm. in multiple forms of media. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And just because something's been out for 40 years... Right, yeah. that doesn't mean that everyone's played it. You know, <laughs> yeah, you're assuming that people have been playing for forty years. Yeah, yeah, and here's the other thing: fucking World War Two happened like eighty years ago, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yes, yeah, so in the forties, and it's 2020. So yes, it's about eighty years ago. Yes, close enough. Um, <laughs> you're fine. I don't care. Yeah, uh, can um, Aiden? I mean, yeah, yeah, Aiden. Since World War II happened 80 years ago, tell me the standard issue bolt action rifle that the German soldiers used. The M1. Nope. Oh, wait, no, sorry. That was uh, Allies. Yeah. Uh, fuck me. Uh, the Gewehr. Th- no, that's the G36. Nope. <laughs> it, w- it was Gewehr something. It wasn't. It was, uh, it was the Car 98K. Oh, it was that standard. I always thought that was Soviet. No, no, that was, that was German. Interesting. Huh. Yep. So yeah, it happened 80 years ago. Why didn't you know that? You know? Uh, because I was really banking on you asking me when D-Day was, <laughs> and I devoted a lot of my memory on that one and was processing less on standard. Uh, yeah, brightness. there you go. Yeah, but again, but it's, like, uh, it's the same argument. It happened fucking twice. June 1944, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, here's the thing: not everybody knows. No, much I, have, I had no idea. World... Yeah, but here's the thing. D&D has been around for 40 years, and it's always been kind of a niche hobby. Yeah. World yeah. War II happened 80 years ago and involved basically the entire planet. There's, yeah, there's literally, it's the world world war. It's like, World <laughs> War II. <laughs> like, it affected everybody in one way yeah. or another. And, yeah. Like, hey, the, only, hey, bo- the only question that would have been easier to answer is what is the standard model of tank that the Allies used? Oh, I don't fucking know. Okay. Hey, boo. Exa- <laughs> hey, boo. Uh, uh, what's the... Uh, remind me again, I can't seem to quite remember. Uh, most bear villager reactions. What's that a reaction between? Oh, Jesus. Uh, a bear villager? <clears throat> bear villager. Uh, oh, I don't fucking know. Oh, right. Sorry, it's a ketone and a paracid. Sorry, yeah, I... I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, I don't fucking know. My brain. It and explodes. how long have those been around? Right. A uh, hundred years. Exactly. Like it's just because this... something has been around for a long time doesn't mean everybody fucking knows it's about a it. Very strange argument. Yeah. Very strange. And like... here's another thing: even if you've been playing the game for a while, I've never used a troll before. I Not that yet. I'm opposed to it. Yeah, I haven't yet. It's just that they don't usually come up. Not yeah. to mention, it's a dangerous fucking enemy. Yeah. This a troll is something that you fucking like build a whole quest around not yeah. not a whole campaign All right, but so certainly an adventure in fairness uh-huh. to angry gm though okay uh, there are stories and fairy tales about trolls and how yes. they eat children 
trolls are a very common and admittedly they are portrayed in a different form but uh, <clears throat> we'll get to that yeah. uh trolls are a very common toy to give kids <laughs> uh, the troll dolls really <laughs> yeah yeah but really we're going there like and, and the movie yeah well uh, that, that's the more recent yes yeah. exactly and i will and i will uh, i will get to that boo um oh, okay so good. most people would know what a troll is they mm. would definitely have heard the name of troll much in the same way that most people today have heard the name troll <laughs> however this does not guarantee that they will know uh and... yeah they will they they will have heard of a troll, but they may not know the specifics of a troll. Like yeah. so, I, if I ask a six year old girl what's a troll, she will tell me it is a short toy that has colored hair. Yep. If I ask a thirteen year old what is a troll, he will tell me it is someone on the internet who go. stirs up shit. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I ask a you. Mr. Angry GM, you will tell me that it is weak to fire and acid. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like I, I honestly forgot about the acid. I... Yeah, and see here, here, like if you ask me what a troll is, this is a troll. I can't. I don't have a phone. <laughs> That's a troll. Oh Jesus. <laughs> oh okay. That's a wow troll. It's a wow. I, 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 it's a cosplay okay. of a wow troll. Yes. Very good. Actually. I specifically looked up sexy wow troll. <laughs> there you go. Uh, go go do your own research. Um, yes. So yes. it's on the internet. It <laughs> the internet is a wonderful. And they're thing. not being hey. fire. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So again, very strange argument considering. Hey, people... how, how many eyes do trolls have? By the way. Uh, as many as they fucking graft onto themselves. I don't know. Two, six. Okay. Know. Well, I mean, I'm just saying in Elder Scrolls, it's three. Oh, that's oh. true. That's right. Yeah. Forgot, I forgot about that. Three. Yeah. Um, Why do they have three that's what I always. Me? That's what I always think when I think of trolls. I, I mm. always think of wild trolls now. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, honestly, I think of I think of the D and D green trolls. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Well, they look very similar, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, so, continuing on. <laughs> I oh. just, I just found out what they look like in Oblivion. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's real bad. Uh, <laughs> it's a fucking spider. So, he Ugh. apologizes. Sorry, one of the players recognizes the troll as a troll. <laughs> Say, the wizard. <laughs> you right there? <laughs> I'm just looking at the spider troll. Oh, okay. That's uh, the painted troll when you're in the side of the painting. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And the, the wizard immediately responds by using fire-based attacks. At that point, the GM becomes a popletic. A popletic? Ap apoplectic. Apoplectic. I've never seen that word. Okay. I know I've heard it, but I've never seen it. Um Yeah. Apoplectic with rage and tells the player that. Uh, they aren't allowed to use fire on the troll because their characters have never seen a troll before and therefore wouldn't know to use fire on trolls and they are ruining the challenge of the encounter. What a... By the way, speaking as a DM to a DM about a fictional DM he made, uh, what a, like, little bitch piss baby of yeah. a DM. What the like, yeah, right? fuck? Like, dude... Dude, okay, have you ever heard of, I don't know, those something called fire resistance and ice vulnerability? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, okay. Mm. okay. Fire troll. Like, and, like, uh, the other thing is, maybe, even so, you don't immediately do that. You, unless they are saying it because they know that. Like, they could just be using their better skill of, yeah, like, fire. Like or they could be just a pyromancer. Like, I, yeah, he even yeah. goes on to say the wizard usually counters with the fact that he's a wizard and therefore fights everything with fire, including fire elementals. <laughs> you, so... know what? you know what? I mean, that would, yeah. I'd be like, you know what? Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, exactly. And then exactly. tries to explain about how he rolled, read about trolls in a book. But, like, you're a wizard. You're yeah. literally the nerd of this universe. Yeah, and then... Yeah. But, but the GM still won't let him use the fire on the troll because it's ruining the challenge of the encounter until the characters can figure out the troll's vulnerability and it becomes a hot mess. No, no, no. So, you... You can stumble upon information 
Yeah. That is possible. I don't know about you, but there used to be a site yeah, called I th- Stumble Upon. <laughs> if you, I think... if anybody remembers that shit. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. Um, what was it? What was it in? It was just a site that you yeah, would go to. Oh, a site! I thought yeah, you yeah. said that used to be a skill. And I'm oh like, no, what? no 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 no! There was a <laughs> yeah, site, right? and you would just go through, and you would look at random videos or whatever, and you could stumble upon shit. Um, that is, but like. I don't know. How did fucking... You know the whole story about Isaac Newton? The, yeah, and the apple. The apple that the just tree. fell from the tree, and he was like, oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, MC squared. What? Yeah, and, and, ha- <laughs> and oh. I hate that. Oh, I hate that a lot. Oh, um, I was thinking my own thought, and I stopped to think <laughs> your thought. <laughs> And I, like, retreated into my mental bunker. Yeah. And I don't know where my thought is outside in the wasteland, but it is dead to me. I just nuked the outside of your brain. Oh, <laughs> I am in here in my fallout shelter with my family. <laughs> and we are down to two cans of soup. And Timmy's looking real tasty. Yeah! Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a good game. Oh, yeah. Oh, I need to get that game. It's really cool. Um, Yeah, so... <sighs> Like, I oh, I found my thought. Okay, please. <laughs> I was literally. It just took a bench. Like, like it's, literally it's like the it's thought. like pounding on the, <laughs> the, door. the door to the let fallout me, shelter. Let me let in. I don't know if I, I don't in. know if I dare open up <laughs> because please. the shotgun is missing a spring. <laughs> oh Jesus! Please. Right, what was the thought? Um, so kill. fun. Fa- so fun fact, actually, <laughs> in uh in physics, uh, <laughs> a new a Newton. Uh, is actually roughly about the force that an apple like exerts upon an object. Oh, when it falls. No, neat. like sitting. Oh, okay. Oh, that's just like it's cool. stationary gravity. Interesting. That's neat. Um, so yeah. Uh, so this this uh, well, we'll let's finish this up for a second before I continue. We'll call that uh a. Uh, dollar sign and sign whole GM metagaming. And yes, I am editorializing. Thank you very much. What? Uh, okay. Congratulations. You can, um, like, proofread. E- not very well. Uh, yeah. In either case, uh, the basic concept behind metagaming gaining Mm. editorializing are you is that a character is making a choice based on information that someone else thinks the character shouldn't have and those words i emphasize are important we'll get back to them someone else the gm the one who adjudicates yeah oh, no. the one who actually maintains order in the game and tries to keep the story the, flowing smoothly the, no the okay fact, the fact that they would understand the circumstances of whether or not the character would know this information most like that they, they are the ones that are sent so it's bad i guess it's bad <sighs> i guess it's bad i like I, okay I think so it's bad. and like <laughs> you know what you know what <laughs> as Despite the fact that it could have been a typo, I do like the idea of meta gaining. Yeah. Oh, it, it's a it's a neat so, way to word it if it was, but yeah. it's not intentional. It it is the usage of meta gaming to gain an unfair advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Meta gaining. Yeah. Um, like again, whoever this fictional game master is, because it's probably not you, not at all. I sure hope. Um. <laughs> uh they they really like if they have such an issue with the fact that they could that the players themselves are able to get through an encounter easier than they intended they're able to overcome a challenge easily and that yeah. upsets them like then that's another thing of the dm being toxic and like going against the players and not actually doing it as a cooperative storytelling experience yeah because i'll be honest (laughs) when when you guys were fighting my fucking goliath long legs yeah and you shit all over it i was like fuck yeah i was a little and i wasn't angry i was just fuck this was supposed to be challenging but i didn't fucking say aiden you're not allowed to use your fucking 
rods of whatever to no, stop it from getting too. up. Yeah, yeah, because that's not meta gaming. Because no. yeah, like yeah. yeah, exactly. So I'm like, I it was frustrating to have the encounter basically just get swept under the rug, but mm-hmm. you, you deal with it. A spider. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> you fucking big deal with rug. It. Big, yeah, very big, big rug. rug. <laughs> yeah, I, you learn from it like a yeah. rational human being. Yeah, and, and you, you don't just say no. You're not allowed to butt fuck my encounter. Yeah, it's very just a very very strange thing to do. It's a very childish way to play, mm-hmm. and it's kind of leaning towards mm-hmm. the GM versus the players mm-hmm. thing because mm-hmm. you can't just let them be good. Yeah, you can't just let them win. Sometimes, I mean, I don't mean let them win, but you right. know what I mean. Yeah, like you let them win. exercise their skills, and if their skills happen to fucking destroy your encounter, then you let it happen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, again, that that is also not him saying that he does this. That is him no, saying, "No, I know." Yeah, and setting forth a you. I guess it is technically an example. Yeah. Um, of what can happen. Uh, do you want me to take over the next? Yeah, if you'd like to. Sure. On to the next section. Metagaming is bulls uh, dollar and percent. Now, most GMs and even quite a few players will look at those examples and remember they are just examples. Metagaming takes many forms. Many gamers will look at those examples and they will say the player is clearly doing something wrong, even if we don't call it metagaming, obviously. They are playing the game in some sort of impure and unforgivable way. And I can forgive you for thinking that way. I mean, you're wrong. You're a dumb dollar and. But I can forgive you. Because you don't know any better yet. Oh. I, that's so... Oh, yeah. I wow. do not it, like that. It's self-masturbatory, yeah. but whatever. Yeah, very uh-huh. much do not enjoy that. Uh, and, 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 I have no strong feelings about it one way or the other. I just don't uh, enjoy it. The issue is that it is impossible not to metagame. I don't mean that it's hard. I mean that it is literally an impossible thing for a human being to do. I like to call it the strike from the record problem. Uh, Okay. Sure. Okay, so imagine you're on the jury. Oh, yeah, this is... Yeah, I remember this part. So imagine you're on the jury in court, and the case is a murder case, and Mm -hmm. the prosecutor presents DNA evidence that the defendant is probably pretty guilty, but the evidence was obtained illegally. If the judge said, okay, now pretend you didn't hear that because the evidence is inadmissible, and only consider all the other evidence, could you realistically, objectively pretend you don't know the murderer was probably guilty? Yes. No. Even if you did consciously try to ignore the evidence, you'd still view all of the other evidence in the case in the worst light possible, because you now know the dude is probably guilty. So everything that confirms his guilt will stick in your head, and anything that causes doubt will slip out through your ear hole. That's how human brains work. We can't pretend we don't know things. Even if we think we can do it consciously, it changes our behavior subconsciously. Now, okay, so two... To a limited extent, this is true. Yeah. yeah However, absolutely. much like most of the other things I see in this article, it's not true enough to kind of cross the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. Not Sec- secondly. Yeah. There, there is a real big problem, and it's another logical fallacy that I can't remember the name of at the moment. Um, t- technically, I guess it's a straw man. Mm. Um, wherein you are presenting. A murder case, mm-hmm. a case of serious and realistic import. Yes. To a game. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, what I was gonna say. Oh, it's a uh, what aboutism? Maybe. Oh uh, no no no! It's the Fermi paradox. Oh okay. No, yeah. no the the Fermi paradox is. Why I know. I, I know. I'm just fucking around. Oh. <laughs> I uh, anyway. Um. <laughs> yeah. I, I, anyway, legitimately. So you've you've now made it so that you you apparently can't disassociate subjectivity and objectivity. Yeah, but here's the problem. Like in a situation in this situation that he's presenting, mm-hmm. the murder case yeah. where this is a pretty serious fucking thing going on. Sure. And I'm gonna reword his argument here. Sure. They present DNA evidence that proves 
guilt, not Mm -hmm. is probably pretty guilty. It's not probably guilty. It just, he just is. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you're presented that evidence and it it proves definitively that he is guilty and then says, okay, now don't now pretend you didn't hear it. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. It would be a lot harder to forget that a bullet from the criminal's gun was found in the victim. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to forget that than it is to just forget that, oh, trolls are weak to fire and I shouldn't know that. Yeah. Oh, sure. If if I were the character, right? Yeah. And my life or death depended on knowing whether or not trolls are weak to fire – I might recall a bit better because trolls are an actual threat in the mm-hmm. wild. And if yep. I'm ever in town, I might go, huh, tuck that knowledge away. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know about you, Mr. Perturbed DM. <laughs> um, but as for me, I, <clears throat> I've got a big brain. <laughs> and I can like devote ten percent of my knowledge in, a, or sorry, ten percent of like my processing power, I mm-hmm. guess you would say, and like create a little folder that's the ignore this folder. Yeah, like, and yeah. I can just consciously, I'll remember that there's an ignore this folder, but I don't remember it unless if I actually try to think about what it is I don't know and like search through the folder and and. <sighs> For for this for this scenario, let's let's just entertain the thought that it's even comparable. Um, yeah, I would say if you are a jury member who is supposed to be impartial, then you think about all of the evidence, and if you find yourself thinking about it in that light, you stop. You just yeah. say. Am I thinking about this because of the evidence that has now been taken out of admissible, like, or out of use? Admissibility. I, yeah, admissibility. It, it's, it's, if that is true, then I cannot use this as my finding. If it is false, yes. then I can use it as my finding. Like, it's not hard to recognize when you are being uh, swayed by such things. You can literally in any situation go, I have nostalgia for this movie because when I was little, it was my favorite movie and I've seen it a million times and I love it. And you can also go, but I know that that movie is inherently flawed. There are things that don't make sense. There are plot holes. Like you can go like that and say, yes, it is a bad movie. It is objectively poorly written. It has many issues and it needs to be fixed, but I can still enjoy that. The same thing kind of implies it's not as like severe as a murder case, but it is the same thinking. I like Angerus, but even though I know that he gets shit stomped all the time. Yeah. He's still one of my favorite Godzilla monsters, though. Yeah. Don't know why, but... (laughs) There's also a significant issue with the fact that he says it is impossible for humans to do it. (laughs) uh, To to ignore the subconscious and stuff like that. Like, yeah. All right, dude. Uh-huh. There is so so much that is still not known mm-hmm. yeah. about the subconscious, mm-hmm. and maybe you have a psych degree. Maybe you spent twenty years of your life focusing purely on the subconscious. Mm-hmm. Doubt it. Maybe you haven't. <laughs> 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 it, yep. the, like, it is. It's sort of like um, uh, take take for instance quantum tunneling. Okay. Mm-hmm. Quantum tunneling states yes. that the main reason why objects don't go like through each other mm-hmm. is because it is improbable for them to move through each other because the electrons get in each other's way sure. and charge. But but there is a slight chance that. And given the amount of time that the universe has existed, Mm -hmm. it has probably happened at least once. And in fact, actually, there are experiments where they can, like, make it a lot more likely to happen. But it's very specific conditions and Mm. requires a lot of energy, yada, yada. If I take a softball in my hand and I huck it at a wall, 
there is a chance that if I do so with enough energy, that it may simply phase right through. Yes. There is also a chance, a far higher one, that it will cause a hole in the wall. Mm-hmm. And when you say, when you make a claim about such a nebulous and as of yet poorly understood field of science, such as the human uh, mind is unable to ignore something because it is now in the subconscious, is very similar to me making a claim of this baseball will travel through that car. It can happen. But it is t- it is technically true, but with so many variables as to be rendered false. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically yep. the chance the chance of quantum tunneling is not zero. Mm-hmm. Right, but, yes. but it's it so is so insignificant. It is so 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 far above zero. You know, actually, now I think about it. Yeah, I'm not. I I would also clarify i'm not saying that the chances of a person being unable to ignore their subconscious is like so low that it's near quantum tunneling Mm. i'm just saying you can't objectively make a claim about a field of science that you i reasonably assume probably know nothing about Mm. so now actually because this is interesting, and I've never had, and we've never brought this up until now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aiden, do you know yeah. a guy on YouTube named Kyle Hill? No. Okay, he's colloquially known as uh, colloquially known as Science Thor. Um, okay, you would probably really, really like him. Um, is he the blonde dude? Yes, he is, with like the Hold surfer on. hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, I've seen. He also does because is. science, but now yes. he's on. Yeah. Did he do the I know, one I know about him from the, become sci- because science? Did yes. he do the one about the AI that um if you think the about Broco's it, it Basilisk? Yep, yep, okay. Yep, yep. I've yeah, seen that did. one video. Yep. yep. Yeah. So now when he did because science, he he's done a lot of videos on because science. And one of the ones that he did was what are the chances of you getting to uh platform three and one quarter or something Nine from Harry Potter. Yeah, that's yeah. it. From Harry yeah. Potter. And he goes into the probability of a human-sized object quantum tunneling through a brick wall. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty low. (laughs) It's pretty fucking low. Basically, again, the chance is not zero, but it is a number that is so large you couldn't list you couldn't list out all the numbers in the number. In the time it would take for the universe to burn out. No. Yeah. That's how low the chance is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like 10 to the 30 to the 20 or some bullshit. And yeah, I like, can imagine that. This is, it's just, it's so. <sighs> I, uh, so, yeah, you can't ignore the subconscious. Yeah, I was going to say, or, it's, it's well, just here... strange to use such a definitive word as impossible. Because, yeah. like, it is perfectly reasonable to us to do so. Like, it is yeah. incredibly possible, I would say. In fact, it would be so possible that I would expect to see Kim possible. Like, come on. <laughs> and here's I, the other thing. I don't know about you, but I have, like, consciously made the choice that my player would not know this. And while I am aware of the fact that it is a bad idea, it makes sense for my character to do, and as such, I do it. Yeah. Yeah, like, like you, fucking, ugh. Here's the thing. If you want to go down this path and say, oh, it's impossible to do, let's say this. It's impossible to forget. How about that? Because at <laughs> least it will, if you know this, it'll be somewhere in your brain. Somewhere. You might not be able to call it to memory, but it'll be in there. Well, okay, so... That's the thing, because... And what the reason why I say that is because the fucking human brain is, like, five petabytes. Right, it is. Yeah, it, it is it's huge. enormous. So You're that chunky tiny, boy. <laughs> that tiny sliver of knowledge right. trolls weak to fire. <laughs> that's, that's in there somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. If you have that, you just... Don't do it. it. <laughs> like, That's it. <laughs> Legitimately, you think about it there for a second, be, then you go, oh, there will I would be a whis- There will be a whisper in the sandstorm that is your mind, and it <laughs> yeah. is your duty to go, 
Nah. Nah. <laughs> the, the sandstorm, by the way, was me was caused by me nuking your brain. Yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, it is all Boo's fault. Everyone oh, knows. it is it is winter up there right and now. And I would I would okay. in fact call it uh the rudest. Um mm -hmm. oh! <laughs> You know, I've been I've been trying to think of a way to work into Rude, but I'm glad you arrived at one. Thank you. Anyway, let's continue. Please. In the example of player on player metagaming. Okay, uh hold on. Let me in the example Okay, in the example of the player on player metagaming, what generally happens is that the paladin's player instantly begins building a case against the thief. That instantly. is what generally happens, sure. That is uh, and he interprets everything the thief does in every suspicious occurrence as evidence of the thief's evil. Uh, we've actually seen this exemplified in a video we watched wherein uh, the warlock went out to meet with their patron at night and the paladin's like, oh, I stayed up, I stayed up. I oh, was, that's right. Yeah. I, I was listening in on them yep. doing sketchy things. And it's yep. like, no, you weren't, dude. Shut up. Yep. Yeah. Um, once the paladin player arbitrarily decides that he has enough evidence, he chooses to act. Slippery slope. Yes. Never mind that all of the evidence is built on a bias, and no matter how good the case actually is, the thief will always see the case as biased by the player knowledge, and so usually will the GM. In the and dollar, sorry, in the a dollar and percent hole GM metagaming, the troll will keep coming back to life until the party burns it. And generally speaking, when the players confront something like that, assuming they fail an arbitrary die roll to see what they Arb are allowed to know about the monster. Arbitrary? Arbitrary? arbitrary. There's a lot of arbitrary going on here. What? Arbitrary die roll? Eh, okay. Technically, setting a DC is arbitrarily set at a certain level. I but the die roll itself being arbitrary, not not sure. No, you can that. honestly. It wouldn't be. It doesn't have to be arbitrary. It can the, it can be the player saying, "Hey, I want to roll knowledge to see what I know about a troll." Yeah, yeah, that's but it's, not really. It's, it's the difference between the salty GM setting the DC at thirty four or the reasonable GM setting the DC at like seventeen. True. I suppose. Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm 90% sure he means because... Well, I mean, you're applying your intelligence to him, which I think is a fallacy. <laughs> I would... I he would... also does not have an editor, though, so... Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, I it. I would love to know if that is the case. If it's yeah. not, then I disagree. If it is, then I agree. I guess. Fuck, I need to buy some Tyranids. <laughs> I know that's completely out of fucking left field, but I was just thinking, like, I'm looking at my Cthulhu here, and I'm like, fuck, I need to get, like, one of those bigger Tyranids. I agree. I agree. <laughs> So, uh, assuming they fail an arbitrary die roll to see what they're allowed to know about the monster, they start experimenting with different strategies until something accidentally works, or else they brute force it. They hack the troll apart until they overwhelm its regeneration. Yep. Actually, sorry, uh, side note. Is it... What would you... And this is just me asking as a, essentially like a player to you two as GMs. If I was to fight a troll and cut mm -hmm. its head off and, yeah. like, take its head, what would you guys... Do would you have it like it, regrow its whole lower it body will, or what? It will continue to bite mm -hmm. and snarl and be mad, but yep. will be mute what if I put, because it has no lungs. Yep. What if I put it in a bird cage? <laughs> it it would, will slowly grow through yeah, the bird cage. It would slowly grow. <laughs> Definitely, it would grow. Fucking weird. <laughs> I would. I would honestly, at some point, have it per like punch out through the bottom of the bird cage and have it have a yes. bird cage on its head. So uh, then what nah, I... dude. I would, I would, uh, uh, have it be the same uh, logic as like when a tree grows through something. Mm. Uh, the like it just gets oh. morphed, like yeah, around yeah. it. It's, it's so, just okay. part of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Same thing, except I flip the head over upside down. And I dump some like fucking acid on its stump. How about then? Mm -hmm. Would it just head be is... like a living troll head that I could just carry around? <laughs> uh, head is now dead. Yeah, head head <laughs> dead. It goes in through the neck into the brain. It dead. Okay, well, what if I don't let that happen? What if I just cauterize like the neck part? Head just is wanna... now dead. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. Head does not have head. enough hit points to survive. Exactly. That. <laughs> it is a head. It is head. <laughs> it has it has one hit point. <laughs> 
damn it. Now, <laughs> okay, the case fine. Could be, now, the case could, of course, be made oh. if you wanted the head to grow a tiny little bobblehead body. <laughs> a la Deadpool. Hell then, yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> or if you want to start doing a skill test in order to try to apply it in such a way that it does not completely kill the head, then I would allow that as well. Yeah, I just want to keep a troll head. <laughs> well, oh, okay. now, now, the real problem, of course, is not the troll head. Mm-hmm. It's the troll body. Yes, it's that true. is still yes, around. It takes a lot head. less time to grow a head than yep. it does a body. Yes, yep. because and then I it always do... knows where you are. And then, wanna... yeah. Because it that's its soul. Yep. Like, it knows where it's the other side of its soul gonna be, and, like, you now have, essentially, a revenant troll, troll, like, Dullahan Revenant. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. like, what? I just wanna be Shield Hero and just yeet fucking troll heads at people. <laughs> like, the orange <laughs> balloon. <laughs> um, By the way, they announced season two, and I'm super hyped. I heard. Nice. Yep. Now, 2021. are you familiar with Grom the Paunch, boo? I am. Oh. He ate a troll. And then he, he like he ate troll meat. Yes. And then he basically got a little bit of their regeneration power. Uh hey, Boo, what resides inside his stomach to help people dissolve dissolve things? Acid. Stomach acid. 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 Well, that's weird because if I scroll up, uh uh, they've appeared in the same form in countless video games and other forms of media, and every gamer knows trolls are vulnerable to fire and acid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny, funny that the trolls in Warhammer Fantasy uh, aren't weak to acid. So it's, it's crazy. It seemed weird to me because trolls are only ever in the same form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. as such, the stomach acid should neutralize its regeneration. You would but... think, right? Hmm. Well, it turns out, actually, hmm. that um, Grom, his stomach acid is not actually doing acid damage. It's oh. doing cold damage. Oh. Oh. Okay. I, see. Right. I see. Yeah. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say it was the, just that, an inferno. <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> the, uh, the literal digestion of and peeling apart, mm. like, amino acids mm-hmm. at a molecular level would of course not be the same as hacking a troll apart until it overwhelms regeneration no. right no 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 no, 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 no. of course not. okay no, okay. no, 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 no i no. just wanted to make sure Fuck, also gonna... <laughs> also can i can oh. i just oh mm-hmm. go on do you want first? No, 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 you first. You first. Uh, I'm just going to say something about the actual article for a second. Um, the You know how he says they start experimenting with different strategies until something accidentally works, or else they brute force it? Like, what, is isn't, there a difference isn't that between the same that thing? and brute forcing? Yeah, yeah isn't that the same literally thing. trying everything until it works is brute forcing it? Yeah, that's, so, that's brute forcing it. Okay, all right. So that, just, and yeah, he, you know, he doesn't have an editor. Yeah. That's all, you know. Yeah. Oh, and, no, sorry. Or else they brute force it. They hack the troll apart until they overwhelm its regeneration. Hacking it apart with brute force is brute forcing it. Oh. oh. Still, though. Doesn't that still fall under the fucking... It's using a different strategy. Of different strategies. You know, <laughs> it's fine. He doesn't have an editor. But it's fine. Anyway, um, here's... What? What? Yeah, okay. uh, no. <laughs> what? Oh. Uh, uh. uh, <laughs> so here's a question. Uh, trolls fire an acid. How would you guys rule necrotic? Uh, it, because that it does kill pack. cells. Yeah, it, so does lopping off an arm. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's still I mean, the same. Yeah, but thing. like the if you lop off an arm, the cell's not technically dead yet. It still has a blood supply and it still can technically breathe at least for a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Like if you can, if you uh, and again, I know that necrotic damage isn't usually the kind of thing that's like applied all over its body, but for right. the sake of argument, if it fell into a pool of fucking necrotic fluid or something, sure. it's completely or doused like, in it. Blight on what it, do you guys I think guess. with that? So, yeah, it's an interesting. I it's... will take some time to review it further, and yeah. then I will give an answer. Yeah, yeah I, that, that's fine. Just gut feeling. I feel like there's a there's an argument to be made um, yeah I, but, I, I will say like knee-jerk reaction is no yes yeah. exactly. knee-jerk no thinking about it slightly maybe i yeah, think about maybe. it more potentially it depends yeah. on how powerful it is i think because depending yeah. on the vert the virtue depending on the nature of the necrotic 
damage source itself, yeah. it feels like it wouldn't be fast enough to overpower its regeneration. Exactly. There's also Although, that. I I will uh, mention one uh, necromancy spell that would definitely work hmm. oh, that deals necrotic damage, and it's Chill Touch. Yes. True. It would. Yep. That's true. It fucks up regeneration. You're right. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. healing. Yeah, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. And it's a, isn't that a level one spell or cantrip? It's a cantrip. It's a cantrip. Yep. Oof, you can just that's keep real using good. It. Mm -hmm. That's real yeah. good for that. Yeah. Anyway. Like, nah. So uh, see, that's how you beat metagaming as the wizard. You don't <laughs> resort to fireball. You use chill, chill touch. touch. <laughs> and, and, like and, and then the a dollar uh, hashtag percent GM. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, can fucking sputter. Oh <laughs> my god. Yep. So, can I can I ask you a question? How oh. how much further are we gonna go with this? Because we're, like, barely into this, and it's already oh. fucking 12. Oh, we're, are we we're, going all the way? We're, yeah. We're out. Yeah, come like on. A third the way yeah, we're, we're not that Really? Far. Because yeah, there's, I, like, five more fucking sections. So, yeah, but it's all very short paragraphs. It'll That's be fine. Fair. Okay. Alright, so, so yeah. imagine you're the wizard, and you know about the fire and acid thing. You don't want a metagame, so how many wrong spells do you have to throw before you're allowed to throw fire and discover the right solution? Discover in quotation marks. This was the point, actually, that I think I agreed with. Um, um, you don't Also, by the way, that needs a question mark, but hey. Yeah. yeah um, you don't Because that, that is a question I have had myself. Yeah, it, and honestly, this only really comes up if you have that asshole GM who is basically yeah. not letting you just do that. Yeah, again, like we've how, already talked how about... much time do we have to waste here? It was we've... it was kind of a similar situation where we were playing the uh, furry campaign where it was like, how long do we have to pretend we don't know what goblins are? Sure. Oh, yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it don't worry, it made sense. But, you yeah, know, yeah, we yeah. all knew they were goblins. We all knew they were orcs. Right. Yeah. It's and just and a thing where you like, turned it into a meme and we had fun with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. And, so it wasn't and, a problem. It's just it's that same kind of thing where it's like, how long do we have to pretend we well, don't? So, know. again, we've already talked about how you can justify some metagaming, right? Like, yes. if if your wizard uses fire on a majority of his enemies, then you mm -hmm. can justifiably say, I'm yeah. going to throw a fireball at it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, it's the, my most powerful spell at the moment. I'm mm -hmm. going to throw a fireball at it. It's a yeah. big fucking troll. It's a big mm -hmm. thing, and I don't like it. Exactly. I want it to be that, a, a, a big lot. lump of things. I see, it I see it has a lot of skin, and I would like to change that. Yeah, mm. I would like to burn all of its skin away, please. <laughs> and then your DM goes, okay. Or, in this case... Stop! No. <laughs> You're not allowed to make my challenging encounter easy. Yeah. Mm, to which off. I would say you're not allowed to call an easy encounter or challenging. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> anyway. I fucking burn. Mm. <laughs> so, fucking fireball. Yeah. Or, or like when uh, what what was it when we were talking about the the dead things that we found in Boo's campaign? And I'm like, that sounds less like prophecy and more like plot contrivance. No, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's reason, right. Though, don't worry. I remember that. <laughs> um, well, here's the thing, though. One, that was a mistake on my part. Yeah, yeah. Because I got the the weasel corpse in the wrong area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two. There is actually a reason for it oh, in the oh. story. Yeah, I trust. I don't. I yeah, trust. I so it's okay. The right to make fun of. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah exactly. absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, ultimately, this is always the problem with trying to control metagaming. All it does is create a new game, which <laughs> I can see if I think of things from the asshole perspective. Yeah. That is my mind of, like, coming from the same mind that thought. I will metagame strategically and I will use my strikes strategically and wait six months comes uh, create a new game of how do I get around metagaming without it being without being called out on it. Mm -hmm. um, the player with the metagame knowledge now ends up playing a game of trying to figure out when they're actually justified and saying that the character has discovered or figured out the thing. Guess what, kiddo? That's also metagaming. It's just trading what? one form of metagaming for another. Now, okay, now hold on. Now, you define early on a very strict definition of yeah. metagaming, and mm -hmm. now you're saying that the meaning is fluid? Yeah. Right. 
because it still isn't making decisions on pure understanding of the character's motives and knowledge. How is it? How is it not? Though. Yeah, because well, now but, you're now yeah. you're thinking my, out of character. Yeah, to my, figure my char- out how to not act out yeah, of character. I am thinking to myself, not yes. my character is thinking to me. I right, boss, how many rounds we got? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. That, you're allowed uh, to think out of character about out of character things. No, no you're that's allowed to out think- of, No, that's out of character. Chatter, stop it. Uh, yeah, right? Oh, there it is. I was waiting for it at some point. Yeah, oh, yeah I had to say out of character, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, like, what? Oh, I, I, I great. don't, I don't, I, okay, no, I and because, do not agree. Yeah, and no. because the other players and the GM will also have an opinion on when a thing is or isn't metagaming, and at what point it becomes a legitimate discovery, you are almost always going to have a fight on your hand about what characters are allowed to know what when. And that isn't pure role playing either. In fact, you now have other people intervening on how you are allowed to play your character. It's that argument. <sighs> that you... This is not. This doesn't. And that is why any attempt to control metagaming is utter uh, horses. horse horse dollar and percent. No, horses, no, no, no. Horses. horses. Yeah. I saw, yeah, horses dollar and percent. There like, we go. But, the, like... the horses dollar and his percent. <laughs> <laughs> he lost a lot on that investment. That's unfortunate. Like he's betting on human races. Okay, so <laughs> I this is this is exactly like what's his face when he was like the GM can't tell you what to yeah. do. That's, You're allowed to <sighs> like your GM has the ability to adjudicate whether or not you know information. Yes. It's Mm -hmm. dependent on your character, how your character plays, and your backstory and everything they're trying to take into account. You know what, Alejo? You make an excellent point. Okay. Maybe maybe, uh, the disgruntled um, (sighs) game master, I guess. Keeper of knowledge, yes. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the disgruntled game runner mm-hmm. uh, should worry less about what's going on in his own mind and trust more in the DM yeah. to maybe, like, after a round, say, hey, do me a favor and roll a nature check, druid. Right. Yeah. Like... <sighs> Maybe, like, maybe, maybe get out of your head a bit. Yeah. This, granted, this is coming from the guy who, like, it, like it's it's a it's a fucking bunker in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> fault, do sorry. as I say, not as I do. <laughs> no, no, do as I struggle with and succeed at. There you go. Okay. <laughs> It's fun- like legitimately, I don't understand how you can have this line of thinking. It by someone who was fucking wounded. <laughs> <laughs> how... I don't know, man. This right, sounds like something, something happened. Ass, who man. hurt you? Yeah. <laughs> like goddamn. Who so hurt you? So, by the way, if I may just take a weird moment for an aside. Please. Uh-huh. I've been noticing dollar and percent a lot, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And if I can just ask you guys to direct your attention down to your keyboard. Okay. And I was thinking to myself, he, he seems to keep using that. Is it perhaps, like, advantageous? Like, it can quickly be done? Mm-hmm. So I look, and you will find your four, four. Yeah. is four. your dollar. Yep. Your five. seven is your and, and oh. your percent is your five. Yeah, he does it in so, a weird order. So it's horses four five, uh, shift four five or four seven five, and I don't know what sane human being would go for like I don't know um, exclamation point at uh, octatroph dollar. Mm-hmm. You mean pound right? sign or hashtag? <laughs> <laughs> I can I can I can handle octatroph and pound sign. I hate hearing it called an, a hashtag. Oh, yeah, I know. I, Don't worry. I, like I, pound do. sign. I just do it to troll people. <laughs> um, so, oh, so you're weak to fire and acid. Hey, hey. yes. <laughs> I so think most I, of us I, are. I who does? <laughs> who does <laughs> yeah, most humans are. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Dude, you would I, know uh, about our weakness to acid, wouldn't you, Mr. Chemist? <laughs> uh, that reminds me, actually, uh, the other day, my friend and I were picking up, uh, <laughs> we were picking up uh, snacks for D&D, mm-hmm. and we happened to walk through the produce aisle, and I see a tiny, teeny tiny little boiling onion, Ooh. and... I, I pick it up off the ground and I hold it to my friend and I go, can I offer you an onion in these trying times? <laughs> and he he picks it out of my hand and the onion for some reason was like missing all its skin. Like all, <laughs> all of those like really waxy outer. Yeah, layers. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And he picks it up and he goes, oh, it's squishy and soft. And I go, well, you probably would be too if you were missing your skin. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <sure. laughs> and I'm like. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh like okay <laughs> would you like to continue or shall yes we... i would oh okay. fantastic and then i'll take the one after I'll... this sure, sure oh sure. no I'll, I'll read through secrets and lies because challenge oh. yourself and the realism argument and yelling about metagaming makes you a dick are about equivalent to what i'll read if that's I fair that's fair, get okay, through secrets fair and lies. <clears throat> so what are you supposed to do Well, as a GM, how can you curb metagaming if any attempt to curb metagaming is just a different way of breaking the game? It's It's not, not, but hey. Okay. Mm, Wow, what an inside-your-own-asshole sentence. Yeah. Yeah. After all, metagaming is obviously bad behavior. Just look (laughs) at those examples. Clearly, those players are playing wrong. It has to be stopped. The thing is, metagaming isn't actually a problem. Now, that might sound crazy. Clearly, the paladin and the thief scenario is a problem, and the wizard and the troll is obviously a problem. It's not, but hey. Okay. But are they? Maybe. <laughs> maybe maybe, not. maybe. Yeah, what? I was going to say. You thank might you. be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for telling me how it is, but I do not agree. Unfortunately, yeah, how, I can't. Thank trust you for telling you. me how it is, but how it might not be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob? Much better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, can can we make uh how it is but how it may not be a thing? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I love that. I love it a lot. Let me go write that in a notepad. <laughs> Continue, please. Yeah. Here's the thing. Meta gaming is like a fever. That's why I used that as the title for this particular section. What do I mean by that? When you get sick, it is because some sort of microorganism has invaded your body, not necessarily, and started causing damage. One of the things that your body does to fight the infection is crank up the thermostat. See, most invaders have a very narrow comfort zone, and if the temperature is even slightly off, they stop functioning efficiently. Meanwhile, the parts of your body that would fight infection actually perform better if the temperature is up slightly. Now that the immune system... Sorry, now the immune system is very complicated, and there's lots of other things that feed into this whole thing. But the point is this being sick and having a fever are two different things. A fever is a sign of illness, it is actually a sign that your body is trying to fight illness. This is sure. true. Sure. Uh huh. Yeah. If you start having problems with metagaming, it's usually the result of some other problem in your game. <laughs> no. In fact,. <laughs> Not necessarily. No, it no, could. I, I, I actually I agree with him if he's going somewhere specific with this. Hopefully he does. Again, like in as fact, I said, most, it could. In fact, yeah. most metagaming is actually a result of the players trying to fix a problem in the game. See, mm. even though I distinguished between player on player metagaming and a percent and whole GM gaming, a percent. Yep. Yeah, eight yeah. percent and five. Yep. He's seven. he's so taken he, away the the, the dollar sign. He's yep. taken. Yeah, he's taken away the four. So then that means even though four comes first, it's the lowest priority. Sorry, I'm just I'm mapping out this guy's psyche by yeah, no, what he fine. chooses to edit out mm-hmm, swears mm-hmm. with. Um, as we do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could have called it a percent and hold GMing. G, sorry, a percent and hold GM metagaming. Because usually the game has a problem that the GM has caused or allowed, and the metagaming is the game running a fever while the parts of the game try to fix the parts of the game try to fix the problem. So the players are part well, players are a part of the game, but I wouldn't call them parts of the game. Yeah. Uh, and that is why I get so adamant about GMs yelling at their players over metagaming. Well, in this one strict scenario that you have built up for yourself in your castle of sand, Two. yes, you may have a flag at the top of your castle. Yeah, yeah right? 
quite literally just these two points. Uh, no, just the one, because the other one is like, ah, fuck it, whatever, go on. Yeah, right? Like, it, it's, hold on, I'm trying to, like, build an analogy, but, like, all I can think of is someone sticking, like, pixie sticks in the uh -huh. sand, uh -huh. and then, like, using them to build a castle, mm -hmm. and then putting <laughs> a flag at the top of the castle, and then saying, because there is a flag at this, on the top of this castle, this is a good way to build. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, eh. Like, no, not necessarily. Thank you're trying you. to use one very, very, very minor and uh, small circumstance to identify the reason yeah. behind yeah. a huge scope of problems. Yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah, in the scenario which you have built for yourself. Yeah, this is true. Which he is because, also... of course, it's true. It w always was going to be true. W yeah, exactly. But He's there are scenarios said... that you don't cover that don't happen inside your little psyche that and, uh, and as such it, it this is not relevant for th that yeah, and this he, doesn't... he's also flip-flopped on his uh defining term like oh boy he's he's yeah. taken the term and completely just gone with another definition of it like at whatever oh please let's go i just sorry in secrets and lies there's mm -hmm. a point that i've made multiple times in fact even on this podcast that oh. i forgot came from this article oh, oh. okay secrets <clears throat> and lies secrets and lies let's first discuss the problem inherent on player on player metagaming because at least there we can agree that there is a problem and the problem is pretty obvious in the case of the paladin and the thief the immediately obvious question to anyone who isn't a complete dumma percent and is why the f dollar and percent did the wait percent and now they're now that they're switching now he's doing oh, oh god yeah he five, did no he's still doing five no and okay seven. no okay yeah 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 uh, so why the dumb F five seven? Why the F four five seven? Did the GM <laughs> allow the paladin and the thief into the same game? What? Maybe they're friends. Yeah. yeah. What the like, fuck? Maybe the the immediately obvious question to anyone who isn't a complete dumb a percent and uh, seems to actually have a lot of reasonable yeah, answers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't. And okay. also, also, <laughs> by the way. There's no way of knowing at session zero that you're the person who is a friend of yours who decides, I think I'll play a paladin this game, right. is going to be the asshole paladin. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You have no fucking precognition. Don't even think yeah. that you do. The, the character, the guy who has played a rogue 30 times and never stolen from the party except for that one time as a joke. Right. Uh, there's no way of knowing that they're going to consistently steal. Well, okay, so, so I, I will say there there is, I guess, you could have some inkling to try, like, to come up with it. But again, it is, it is based on something that is probably not likely, right? Like... I, 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 yeah, I'll say, like, if the druid in my campaign mm -hmm. decided he wanted to retire his druid and play a rogue, I would be immediately suspicious because yeah. I'm like, this guy's a bit of an asshole right. uh, in character, and it's possible he, the guy he plays may be super nice, yeah, but I find point, it yeah. more probable that he will continue his bad habit of being antagonistic toward the party yep. and will try to steal from them, like he did once as the druid. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> which I for which I forgot about actually, until now, um, and he got called the fuck out on it both in character and out, mm -hmm. and I actually referenced this article not knowing. Oh, um. So now we get to my favorite paragraph. Okay. The problem in most player on player metagaming is secrets. False. What? I have a ton. I have a ton of secrets in both my characters that yeah. I'm doing, but yep. I, I would in our current I, campaign, everybody has a secret. Yeah, yeah, literally and, everybody. And I would, oh, dude, the the campaign that my paladin is running, wherein uh, I am a paladin, mm -hmm. um, 
literally the group chat is called secret society because nice. everyone is so secretive about their backstories and like their motivations and they're all like no it's my knowledge you don't you don't get to find out <laughs> yeah and yep. like there's my character who is like straddling the line of like a therapist and a necromancer <laughs> um and it's very much like i will get you results don't worry about it mm-hmm. yeah right don't fucking ask questions you son of yeah. a bitch that was my condition for joining with the party was like, I'm going to do some sketchy stuff on occasion. Just don't worry about it. And mm-hmm. the leader of the party is like, oh, well, I think you will blend right in. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, the players have secrets. And if these secrets get out, they will somehow wreck the game or the party or whatever. Not n- not necessarily. No. You, you, you are correct, angry person who likes to run D D and hopefully other games um that in your tone of the idea that other players discovering your secrets is bad is a laughable idea yeah yeah because it like god forbid you have a secret that is just an interesting character backstory that you want the other players to ask about and learn through at some point yeah. you know i just yeah. like i uh... you know like oh no yeah. i get it what he's going with this where the secret is being secretly evil in a party right, of good guys exactly. or being good in a party of bad guys in but this I, it... in this specific scenario that he has set up then yes that he it has will for himself yeah, yeah like you have created this scenario that you yourself have seen the outcome of and yes the secret ruins the party amazing yeah not yeah. everything um, is like okay. that and he also says that in that scenario that the being the good and the bad or the bad and the good is very obviously an unsustainable situation and that is not true with that is not true at all play. not at all we literally uh, okay. were well, talking about, about that <laughs> we'll, we'll give him the benefit it is an unsustainable situation if you're shit at role playing i it even I so would, i don't I would, think so yeah right even I then would, i would even be willing to throw him a bone further which is get him further he, away from us please <laughs> which, which is he is still entering into the idea of the misguided reader yeah yeah and saying that the reader actually thinks that this is an unsustainable situation i, I suppose yeah. I don't, but he's I don't called think me this is true but no, i'm willing to throw the bone he's called me yeah, a right? dumbass he's called me like i don't think so i don't know i don't know about that all right once that secret is out, something is going to break. Once the party discovers, for example, that the thief is evil and stealing from them, the thief is likely to get exiled from the group at best. What? And this is this is the part that I like. At worst, the thief is likely to end up dismembered because seriously, what a dollar and hole decides to piss off an armed strike team Mm. of expert murderers who are already actively helping him get loot in return for a little more loot. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the thief deserves whatever they get. So in that sense, I would say deserves? No, but... Uh, but it, it was is, they had like it was gonna happen. It yeah. well mm, whatever happens. It is happens. a, it yeah, is that, a possibility. I mean. It you is know. a possibility that it would happen. At best, though, he gets exiled. No, at best, he gets a talking to, dude. Yeah, like, like just Jesus Christ. fucking talk. You. I would be scared to play in a game with this fucking guy as right? another player. Very, very binary. So very binary, binary. So aggressive. Mm-hmm. Very, Very slippery so. slope. Yep. Yeah. But but again, and I think I've actually seen this kind of remix later on in in the uh, in the book I wrote. I even oh. talk about oh. uh because I, I have a section on stealing from the party. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um. I'm like a thief that is greedy still knows how to calculate risks. Oh, yeah. Yes. When you are traveling with a shirtless dude that has a big axe and anger issues, do you honestly think that your character, who's going to prioritize monetary gain mm-hmm. and his own life, is going to risk that axe separating his head from his body in exchange for five gold? Now, you know, this actually brings up an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. It would be interesting to play like... I don't know, a f- a, like a fae or a halfling or mm-hmm. some other kind of mischievous kind of race, you know, one that is typically, you know, associated with mischief. You sure. Know. Mm-hmm. 
It would be interesting to play like a chaotic good or chaotic neutral thief who during downtime would steal from the party as a joke. And oh, you're like, talking about the fucking Kender, aren't you? Yes, I am. Where it's basically like, you know, you're in town. You're not doing anything. You're resting. And, like, say you're going, like, shopping or something. Mm-hmm. And you have you have the guy, you have your little thief go with, like, the big fucking fighters. Like, oh, I need to, fighters, like, oh, I need to go buy a new hand axe for, like, a mm-hmm. throwing axe or something, you know. You're like, oh, okay, I'll come along, you know. And then you go out, he buys the axe, and then, like, at that night when the fighter's asleep, the thief sneaks into his room, steals the axe. And then next day he wakes up, he's like, where's my axe? And he, like, he pops around the corner, he's like, ha, got it! And he, like, tosses it to him. Okay, you know, just, sure. Just, just, I and mean, again, it's not, you're not gonna steal it and sell it. You're not doing right. it out of any sense of malice. You're just doing it for fun. Yeah. Honestly, I, just kind of as a sense of, like, practice i would say that it would get old fast yeah, yeah that, but i mean yeah that's yeah. a bit that's best not repeated too many exactly. times oh yeah, yeah no you do no, it because you do it to this... bring some levity to a moment yeah yeah exactly hit, hit everyone once during the campaign yeah exactly. i was i'm not I was, saying you steal yeah i was thinking like if you had him uh switch people's stuff <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it would also be pretty fun. And that that just, I would I, be more okay I, with. I do have the idea, and I've had it for a bit of the Ponzi scheme rogue. Okay, which yeah. is he volunteers to be the party's banker. Yeah, and he's always very much like, "Oh yeah, no, no worries. Oh, do you need like five health potions? Here you go, two hundred fifty gold." Yeah, and then like he's got like thirteen gold left in the coin pouch, and he's like. <gasps> <laughs> and uh then it's very much sort of a rob peter to pay paul right so yeah. it's like uh oh you talk to the fighter and it's like hey dude by the way you haven't given me like the dues for the party in <laughs> right. like a bit so i need you to pay up <laughs> meanwhile you've got the bard in the other room who wants a new loot yep. and like you're <laughs> taking the gold from the fighter to give <laughs> to the bard yep, yep, yep. and yeah. because because you're a Ponzi scheme, you inevitably fall behind. Yep. So then you're like stealing from merchants to make it look like everything is fine. <laughs> yeah, so you can have and your this... character is like a walking ball of anxiety. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be really good. So you can have this like comedic comedy rogue yep. who steals from the party, but again, you never do it in a way that would actively harm the party Agreed. yeah you steal something Agreed. you give it right back and you're like Haha, you need to keep an eye on your stuff gun sure. hands and he like walks out of the room <laughs> finger guns <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, he's, yeah he's doing the the spongebob like yep. yeah. finger snap meanwhile like in his back like shoved down his pants is like another dagger that he stole <laughs> yeah yeah and so you just do it as a joke and then like when you're out in the field you don't do it Right, you're, yeah. You're if it's a, aside from like again, making like a joke or like banter, you know, like you've pointed out, I just out. think that would be a funny character to play. Yeah. You would get, it would certainly, you would have to like spread it out very yes. strategically yeah. because you don't want to piss people off. Right. But I think every now and then that could be pretty funny. It's like you said, your your fucking thief is intelligent. Like, yes, they're, they're not gonna be a fucking idiot just for that, five yeah. gold like yes yeah. yeah. like like who boy i saw that guy cleave an owl bear in half today yeah. better take that skull he likes yeah right like <laughs> i could probably get like two copper for that yeah right like, <laughs> jesus christ anyway owl bears are fucking ugly <laughs> i like them. i love owl bears they're, they're, great. they're ugly hell. don't you they're cute as hell fucking dare like the big ones, though. Like no. the fully adult ones? I yeah. understand. That. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're fucking awesome, dude. Because, like, they look like a big fucking scary owl. Yeah. Uh-huh. Owl and a bear. bear. Together. At last. Uh, yeah, <laughs> D&D, like, 1 and 2E owl bears were ugly, but, like, yeah, dude, it like... like really? This doesn't look, to me, this doesn't look very cute. It looks yeah. very angry. Look get at this. Get out of here, dude. It if you get angry. that owl bear to nuzzle up to you, think of how uh, fucking dude, cute. Look at that good boy. Yeah. He now, thou this, this I think is very cute. Look at this. It is also an owl bear. Yes, that is also That's cute. Very cute. Both of the them are cute. Fucking scary. Nah, dude. This is gonna be a long link, but deal with it. That's a message. Oh wow. Dot text. Oh shit. 
What? It's, it's oh my god! What? I it was literally just supposed to be. Uh, here we go. Let me try this. <sighs> yeah, that's yeah, a one e oh, yeah. owl bear. Yeah, that's yeah, the one e one. Fucking owl bear. Fucking one e one looks fucking awful. He looks like his name is Greg. <laughs> this one's cute, and this one's cute. They're both <laughs> cute. This one can go burn in hell. I actually got Brogue in an owlbear dice bag. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, my friends went shopping at a bookstore lately, and they had little owlbear and red dragon. <sighs> Sort of kind of like Funko Pops. They're like little mm. miniatures, but they've got like the big black eyes. And yep. I gotta say, so like, Pops. it works well for an owl bear. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Don't mess with the Zohan, dude. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> this knows. is a Chewy owl bear. Yeah, that Ooh, looks fucking terrifying. I actually like that one a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. cool. It's badass. But yeah, like, that one's really cool. I see 5e and I want hug. Yeah. Anyway, like, I don't know. I wouldn't. Have anyway, mm, mm. so the problem with <laughs> game breaking secrets yes. is that they're a ticking time bomb. Of course, they're they are. always going to break the game. Player <laughs> on player med- <laughs> always. Um, again, in the scenario where the secrets are always game breaking, yeah, and in <laughs> and the where scenario where bad. the secrets always come out, then I sure, I, I guess... suppose, in the scenario that you have built for yourself, where <sighs> all secrets are game breaking and all secrets are revealed, fucking... that they are always going to break the game. Oh, yeah, so or... dumb. Like, fucking... It's so Jesus. dumb. Player on player metagaming is just one of the ways they're going to come up. The player versus player battle royale is another. No one does Hurt that. Hurt feelings <laughs> in a D&D. ruin. Like <laughs> Hurt <laughs> feelings in a ruin. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Player on player metagaming is just one of the ways they are going to come up. The player versus player battle royale is another. Hurt feelings in a ruined friend group are another. Game ruined problem. game group. Yeah. Not uh, ne- we're not it? necessarily friends in this group, dude. Yeah, Remember. no. He's talking okay. about a game yeah. group. Game group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The problem, dude, if your group is like this, I don't think it breaking up is any real tragedy. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, God. The problem here isn't metagaming. It's the existence of the thing about which people are metagaming. Oh, fuck oh, off. So, so, the appa- game. <laughs> so apparently uh... AC is now <laughs> something that will ruin friend groups. Oh, you heard it here first, folks. God. Because the game breaking secret should never have been allowed into the game. What do you oh fucking mean, dude? Really? <laughs> Legitimately, the dude. Fact that tell me th- tell me the game breaking secret, dude. I need to know it so I can break all of my it, games. It, it's that the thief was evil. No, oh no, I, my I, god! I will, say, I will say, actually, I have had experience. That does agree with this article once. <sighs> once, yeah. yeah. Once. And granted, I've only DM'd the one campaign, so like, eh. Um, and it was when a player joined my campaign late, and she wanted to be an evil ranger with a snake familiar mm-hmm. that uh, was a budding necromancer. Okay. And I was like... Oh, I remember you talking about this person. Yeah. And, yeah, she no longer plays at my table. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah. Granted, part of it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, she, she wanted to be evil, and she wanted to, I guess, be a necromancer, despite the fact that there is a paladin in the party who specifically hates undead. Yeah. And I said, okay, you are aware that the paladin will not like that. And she said, yes. Oh, and... Good. The uh, the paladin was there when we were talking in the car, and he's like, "This could be like an opportunity for some really cool role play." Makes sense, yeah, good. And we and we were like, "All right." And then she proceeded to be an absolute dumbass, um, appear under sketchy conditions, which I was like willing to hand wave because like party come together, e good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. She was an asshole to the party, asshole to the guards that were interrogating her, got taken That's to jail right. because yeah. she refused to say why she was there in the sewers on the day of a coup, uh... Uh, saying that the wind brought her there because she thought no one would ever believe in the gods, despite the fact that two years ago, two gods had a kaiju battle yep. in the oh. capital of the center. Yep. Um, Oblivion. Hmm. Wow. 
and then proceeded to uh like not show up to another session and shit talk me as a dm um for throwing her into a tense situation where she could have died (laughs) (laughs) oh no no. you were thrown into a tense situation where you could have died i wonder what would have happened if you had put a monster in front of her and even when i specifically (sighs) said to her i'm like you know dude you have a whole like party uh the paladin of which by the way had received a dream for telling of the rangers arrival right and saying watch over them um so i'm like the party can back you up you know if you say no, anything impossible. other than no the wind brought me to this city it's fucking impossible dude and nope. she kind of, yeah, she kind of became a meme among my entire group Good. of whenever you lack justification for something, mm-hmm. just say the wind made you do it. There you go. <laughs> that's it. That's what you do. Yeah. No. <sighs> like I had my paladin character go missing for a bit and come back, and they're like, "Where are you?" And I'm like, "Oh, the wind brought me away," and everyone just gave like a couple <laughs> chuckles. <laughs> and it was like, "All right." That's good. <laughs> Oh um, god, step okay. back, dude. Just just step back, dude. Mm. Uh so step back for a moment yeah. uh-huh. to the other definition of metagaming. What? Recall okay. that You mean the one? Wait, the which one? one? No, no, sorry. Which one are we referring to now? Is it the one the for one, video games the one, or the one the for... one that idiots like us call it? Oh, yeah, I think. The one. Yeah. Okay. All right, go on. Recall we were which, I, about that. which I guess he now acknowledges as valid. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, I thought we are. That, I thought we were already talking about that, but all right, we were. Yep. That Dorito we, wasn't the Snapchat logo. We absolutely <laughs> were, but go on, go uh, on. Recall that D and D and other <laughs> RPGs assume assume a certain agreement between all of the players and the GM about how the game is going to be played. The Paladin and the Thief scenario actually occurs between. Uh, sorry, because one of the players is in the party under false pretenses. How? Or maybe, uh, it's, because it's the scenario that he built. Don't oh. worry about it. Hmm. Or maybe several of the players are, because in this scenario, this is what happens. The it's Paladin weird. clearly thinks oh. that the party is supposed to work together as a team and views evil as the enemy. Um, one sounds like a player assumption. Yeah. Party works together as a team. And yeah. then evil Paladin the enemy views the Paladin, evil yeah. as the enemy. The Thief player clearly thinks everyone is in it for themselves. Clearly. Player assumption. And views everyone as a potential victim. Player and character assumption. Clearly. Mm. Clearly these he two, views those. These two expectations are just completely incompatible. <laughs> Much uh, like some logic here. Uh, uh, of course, the Paladin and the th- the Thief yep. is just oh. one example. <laughs> It's like the fucking rouge. No, that, Wait, no, no that's right. That, no, that's right. Not a right. That's thief. thief. That's thief. Uh, I don't know. Oh, it is thief. Yeah, yeah it's it's good. It's, yeah, it's, it's I before you. I played thief. I also played some thief. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, whenever yeah. there is a secret floating around in the group that is in someone's best interest to keep from the group, there's a false pretense between the between the players whenever there's a secret what? floating around in the group that is in someone's best interest to keep in the group there's a false pretense between players okay the so first... wait a minute the what? secret is already known to the group because it's there's a secret floating around in the group in the... that no, is it... to keep from the group no 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 no, no it could be there it, it doesn't mean it's an open secret it just yeah. means ah. that there is a secret amongst the people that someone there's is holding on to at least one yeah, um, uh, that is in someone's best interests to keep from the group. Potentially. Oh, yes, Lord, horribly. You, yes, if there is a secret, it is probably in someone's best interest to keep that keep secret. That's, yeah, that's kind of how, how they secrets, work. Se- secrets. Yeah. That's how secrets work. Um, <sighs> there is a false pretense between the players. If by that they mean what? keeping up appearances, then yeah, sure. That mean? But that's not how you word that. Yeah. And uh, even if he was secret, editorializing, by the way. Yeah, he's even mm. if the secret isn't game breaking, it can also fuck with the game. No. Okay, what? So, what? So, huh? All right. So. Whoa, 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 
even if the secret isn't game breaking, it can also fuck with the game. Oh, oh sorry, uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, F dollar and percent with the game. Oh, oh right. okay, that sorry, makes more I'm sense. Speaking sorry, speaking. yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, I was actually legitimately looking away from the screen. <laughs> and that's watch, fair. I was watching like a bug crawling near a light. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> so hell. more entertaining. <laughs> nah, makes more sense. Yeah, it does. The the bug crawls around in random spirals, and mm -hmm. I see to it, and I think you are dumb, but you also <laughs> you do wait. not know any better. <laughs> yeah, you are dumb, and you do not know any better. And then I look from the bug, and then I look at the article. <laughs> you are an innocent babe. <laughs> this one is not innocent. Though. No, he's not. Don't no. be a babe. So. <laughs> uh, could be. He could be. He could be. Um, <laughs> don't, I don't get so, the All right. So anyway. here, here's here's the thing, right? I just uh... Mez. Hi. Mez Sorry. exists hey. in Booth campaign. Yeah. He does. Mez, and I did not know this initially because it was a secret, mm. owes a lot of money to some of the wrong people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that this is a secret. Be, I, as a player, know this because of things that have happened. It was a secret through the first few sessions of the campaign, but I would never get so, like, on my absolutely blazed high horse <laughs> to go, to go, Alejo, hey. you absolute scumf dollar and percent <laughs> you absolute donkey uh. how dare you have a secret from me <laughs> your good this friend will, this is ruining the game and how <laughs> dare you have despite the fact that for whatever your logic of hiding your debt is your <laughs> false pretenses uh. with me uh. how necessary your friend, but definitely in your gaming group. Oh, yeah, that's that's right. not necessarily. How canst <laughs> thou? How canst and thou now, keep this from your possession, Mez? And, uh, <laughs> and, and I, I now have a brand new line for Boris. How dare you keep this from me? From me, not necessarily your friend, but your traveling partner. <laughs> your possession. It's a very good one. Yeah, your possession. <laughs> So like, <sighs> I like that a lot. I'm I'm positive that Brogan and Boo have talked about things, and yes. they have what? secrets. And to which what? I say, cool. Let me learn more about it as his character develops. What? Yes, crazy. Every it's kind of it's kind of Zeke's arc right now. Yeah, really. Every you might be able to tell. Uh. Everyone in my Paladin campaign. Um, and I call it my paladin campaign because maybe it's because I play a paladin or maybe because my <laughs> paladin player DMs it. Oh, oh you don't. Ooh. Ooh. A double oh, ooh. Secret, how dare you? I fucking hate that. <laughs> In my paladin campaign, everyone has a secret. And the party, not, sorry, the, the, the playing group, not necessarily okay. the party, knows some of the secrets of the, um, the leader of the group. Oh. Namely, that he's part of a secret society that gathers information. Oh my God. And some of the NPCs that we've met in town are part of that guild. And we all went, ho! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We all went, how titillating, not you absolute <laughs> F dollar and percent. <laughs> yeah. It's just... I don't know about you, but I'm still friends with the guy that plays Nash. Nah, yeah, now don't forget, but though. Now, it's not about being I don't friends. Think you about... should be. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. First off, you shouldn't be. Second yeah. off, second off, you must maintain the group. So, unfortunately, yes. you need to tell everyone your secrets. Yes. Wait, no, that's the opposite. You need to not have those secrets anymore. You know, yeah. without telling them. You know what was fucking hilarious, actually? And mm. this is kind of this is kind of out of left field, I'm gonna be honest. Sure, sure. Me and Brogan have been playing Wasteland 3. Okay. And this this just came up because we're talking about party secrets and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, there in the first town that you go to, there is a brothel. Nice. And this is it's made by the same people, I think, that worked on the original Fallout. So this yep. game is very, very gritty. Yep. It's really damn good too. And uh there are many prostitutes, both men and women. 
and mm-hmm. they have like all these different fetishes. And if you go all the way down the hallway, you know, go you get like the nice girl, the dom mm-hmm. girl, the mm-hmm. like stereotypical. It, get, it gets like kinkier and kinkier as you walk on. Yes, that makes sense. Now, would you like to guess what is at the end of the hallway? A, a mirror. Oh. No. Oh. No, no, way more degen, way more degen. Oh, uh, oh, oh uh, a vape pen? <laughs> a what? A vape pen? <laughs> no, I'll, um, just, I'll just tell you. Want yeah, me to yeah. tell you, or do you want to guess? I, I well, I assume it's like some sort of creature, right? It's a goat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right. yep. And All you, right. you put, you can put ten bucks into like a little bucket mm-hmm. around its neck, and you can fuck this goat. Yeah, there dead you go. serious. Yeah, and here's the funny thing. This was what was so fucking funny. Uh, earlier in the game, we uh, helped a doctor okay. who uh, he had a whole bunch of patients. We used like first aid and healed them all. Oh, and of course. They he came to work at like our base as like the base medic. Oh, cool. And we go there, and there is actually a dialogue option called spread rumors. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and it says. So, one of our party members could have potentially fucked a goat. Should we be worried? <laughs> I'm dead fucking serious, by That's the way. That's amazing. That yeah. so no, it doesn't surprise me at all. Him, you can tell him <laughs> that. Great. And here's the thing. No, no, no. It gets better. So, he's <laughs> like, you had a party member that fucked a goat? Didn't you? Don't you know that, like, this insert name of STD was I've been, like, ripping through the population for years ever <laughs> since a farmer got mar- ever got bored and fucked a goat instead of his wife. Oh. And then, like, if he ever comes in here, tell me right now and I'll get him what he needs, you know. Yeah. And then if you talk to him again as the character that you interacted with the goat with, yeah. he actually says, okay, now look, I'm going to give you this, but no more goat fucking. <laughs> Dead serious. He That's says good. that. That's and good. it's fucking hilarious. So you can have these secrets that honestly really shouldn't get out. <laughs> um, but you can make it into these really, really interesting character building moments because sure. like the characters that you can or- like randomize the name. His name is Copperhead. Yeah. And so now Copperhead is the the guy who fucked a goat. There For the go. rest of the game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's Ginger in the Boots who fucked yes. an ostrich, allegedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and allegedly. <sighs> yes. Like- and you can also it's like a three man job. The, allegedly. <laughs> the <laughs> well, not if the ostrich is sick. <laughs> it's true. That's two. <laughs> the um, the the other thing that you got there was some lore. Yes. Like actual world building. Yes. Happened. Oh my god. And of course, I got to make the most degen joke <laughs> I ever did. Yeah. Because his name is Copperhead. Okay. And man, when he went in that room and saw that goat, one of his heads was copper. <laughs> nice. Yeah, there I'm sorry. Yeah. I had to it, do it. It unironically reminds me of the time the Druid in my campaign did fuck a goat. Yep. Yeah. And it was really fucking that funny. Makes me sad. Yep. Oh, and by the way, uh, you get a buff for fucking any of the prostitutes. And of course, the one you get for the goat is called uh uh you're the top of the barnyard, I think, and you oh. get plus four penetration. Ah. Uh, it, it basically means you ignore some armor, but yeah, yeah. God is so fucking stupid. <laughs> Very bad. You know, I recently ran a game that started with the party being united against an evil cult. Oh. Each of their backstories <laughs> like left them. Fucking... <laughs> each of their backstories left them with certain information about the cult that, when put together, would set their investigation going. Right. right. Good premise. Yeah. They were all generally good people, and they all they all had an interest in taking down the cult. Mm-hmm. But a few of the players decided their characters were secretive, a percent in holes, and didn't <laughs> share their information. Uh-huh. Thus, the party ended up flailing because they were all missing pieces of the puzzle. Sure. It f dollar and percented the game, and there was no reason for it. Well, okay, bad players. Session I mean... session zero. Yeah. Hey, you can have secrets. Maybe share this one with the party. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was gonna say if I mean the other thing is maybe make scenarios where things come up that the players have to confront those secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like a whole whoopsie. Like literally coax it out of them. Mm-hmm. I mm, don't know. It seems the, like you Greg, kind of Greg, fucked up a little bit. Yeah, Greg the Baker. 
showed up and it was like, hello, androgynous shadow blade. Sure. Isn't it a great day? Oh, Hey, by the way, I saw that friend of yours, Steve, the goat sacrificer. Over <laughs> on the bridge the other night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, okay. So I now we're going a different way with that. <laughs> <laughs> I I said goat because it was still in my mind, <laughs> and then I'm like the I I came up with sacrifice here when I was at the A in goat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> um. So now we have a example that he actually has has. So keep that in mind. Just just keep mm -hmm, it yeah. keep it there in case we need it. I actually would have loved a little meta gaming. Okay, using metagaming by your own admission incorrectly there, yeah. by, um, by the way, in that game, because the dips, uh, dollar and percents, wouldn't have needed me to tell them to stop being untrustworthy, a dollar and holes, for no reason, when I had clearly, in your opinion, yeah, spelled out how the start of the game would go based on the way they had created their characters. Each of you, oh, each of you has a piece of the puzzle you need to put them together. I told them that. Why did they feel the need to keep secrets? Uh, exclamation question exclamation question exclamation 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 question exclamation Marks. Mm -hmm. yes. the point is player on player metagaming is only a problem in an environment where dangerous secrets are floating around so now and it's... dangerous secrets are a no, ticking no, no. time bomb you have gone against your own point now you've said that it's only a problem yeah. in this specific environment when before you yeah, said more like a constructive even, secret. even if the secret isn't game breaking, it can also fuck with the game. Mm -hmm. And dangerous secrets are a ticking time bomb and should be viewed as such. <sighs> really? All right. Well, he's he's completely yeah. okay. I'm starting. Yeah. I'm starting to think that this is an article that I spent like seven hours tweaking mm. out at myself over. You know, Boo got it right. <laughs> What? Yeah, no, he did. What did I say? What, I what you, you, you said that that second one sounds so specific. I think it's that one. Yeah, that he spent seven hours on this just trying to figure out what was fucking wrong with it and revising oh, it. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, challenge. <clears throat> it's a challenge, boo. Oh, yeah, it's a challenge. Challenge <laughs> yourself. Now, let's look at the issue of a percent ad holes uh, GM metagame. I'm going to get getting neat. Da -da -da -da. I am going to need to get used to pronouncing the words like that. Mm -hmm. I honestly figured you would just crash right through like a boo in a china shop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I probably just nice. should. Because honestly, I am uh, i don't know if we should give this article just, any just keep, more time than we going. already have. I don't, I don't know. I think that calling it a percent in whole gives it just the amount right of like just the right amount of irreverence. Mm. Of Karinga. Mm. We're almost like, he, he's, We're almost he's already called us dumbasses who don't know. It's oh, true. sorry. Uh, a dumb, dumb what? Dumb. Uh, hold on. I, 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 or, sorry. Uh, dumb percent dumb. and. Dumb a dumb percent and. Yeah, sorry. Dumb a percent and. Yeah. Yeah. That's apparently S and S. He's not very good at making ciphers. <sighs> You know. Oh, actually, Dude, he's, why, he would be... why would you not use the at symbol? I don't or the dollar care. sign. I don't or know ass. anymore, dude. It's whatever. Anyway. Anyway. Now let's look at the issue for a percent and whole GM metagaming, and the reason why I even call it that. Let's look at the troll example again. No. GM has created a challenge in which the party has to fight a creature that keeps healing from all damage except for one or two specific types of damage. The GM assumes that the party doesn't know how to counteract the regeneration. Here's what the... Oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Here's where the GM brain gets really, really odd. What if the party opens up with fire and acid? Well, if they simply shut down the troll's regeneration, the party has made the encounter too easy. The troll's defining feature hasn't come into play. Therefore, the party hasn't really earned the oh, victory. Oh, fuck off. Eat me. Oh, fuck off, fuck off with that. Actually... No, no. No, no, I, no. I see no. his point. No, 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 no. Just they, because they, they just because didn't it's deal with what makes trolls bullshit, just hence it's not earned. Just because it's been trivialized eh. does not mean that they haven't earned it. Yeah, I that don't think like I wouldn't no. say that you guys didn't earn the victory against the spider. Like you guys played smart and you fucked me up. 
it, that it's, happens. And in this case, even, it's just, oh, no, they started with something, and now they've gone through it. They've still achieved a victory. Yeah. It is and I earned. Mean, now, I, if I remember correctly, the troll's regeneration is only negated for one turn, right? It is. Yeah. So if they don't, like, if they, they regenerate, open up... I think they regenerate, it's either 1d4 or 1d8 at the top of every turn, yeah. unless if the turn before they had taken fire or acid damage. And, yeah. and they might not even, like, they might, in this case, just hit it once with fire, not notice that it's going to regenerate, because they might not know, right? And yeah. then the next turn, they've used, I don't know, uh, fucking necromancy, and then it regenerates afterwards. Yeah, and how do you know he doesn't only have one fire spell? Exactly. Or like, how about this? This so is many. the easiest way to deal with this. The yeah. easiest, easiest way. If you have a troll and you want to make your party work for it, throw the troll at them. If they use fire or acid, let it kill them. I mean, let let them kill it. And then when it's done, you put in two more trolls. Uh, there you go. They've spent their fire spell. I mean, no. Assuming they don't have firebolt. That's, and again, yeah, I don't assuming believe they don't have in firebolt. And again, I don't believe in punishing players no, for success. Exactly. That's... Yeah, no, exactly. That's you shouldn't do that. But I'm saying that if you are gonna get this hung up on your players just having a victory, yeah. if you're gonna be this mean spirited, just do that. Yeah. Throw them and throw them into a den of trolls. Yeah, like, just be it's... an if you're gonna be an asshole, stop whining and bitching and just be an asshole. Like it's it's you don't have a leg to stand on here. Yeah. To... It's I'm I'm fine with him being an uh a dollar in percent hole. Right. But be a clever a dollar in percent yeah, hole. And yeah, exactly. Around just... it. You're like... you're clearly given the length of this article, willing to put in time for mm -hmm. something that you believe there is a problem in. Yeah. So what instead of writing an article, maybe consider fixing your game. Yeah. And anyway. while you're at it and while you're at it, maybe your attitude about how to approach D D. Please. Right. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> of course. If the players have the right knowledge, knowledge skill, and a roll a good roll, they get rewarded with the information and they get to have an easy fight. In fact, they earn the victory with a good knowledge roll. Yeah, because you can't possibly earn mm. an easy victory with but, anything other than ooh, ooh, ooh. <sighs> I sure love relying on the random roll of a dice to determine whether I've earned an easy victory. Yeah, and you... not the ra and not the random roll of a spell in my book that exactly. I choose. Exactly. Yeah, like you're that's... relying on randomness to earn something. It. No, like you earn you... something by I don't working know... for it. I don't know if I would go into a. A casino play a slot machine 50 times and on the 51st time think that i earned the jackpot if i get it yeah i, yeah, that's, I invested that's time yeah i invested <laughs> time in it and i'm glad it paid off but dude you I did effectively not... what you brute forced it yeah exactly i just ah, mm. whatever but if players don't have the right knowledge skill or don't roll well, they have to fight the troll as is. Otherwise, they don't earn the victory. But of course, if they figure out that the troll is weak to fire or acid, that's okay. Then they have earned the victory. But if they don't figure it out on their own for reals, they deserve a hard fight. Hey, now if that... you... uh, uh, oh, 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 okay, hold on. I think we're approaching this from the wrong perspective. So he's saying, here's where the GM brain gets really odd. Mm -hmm. And he's describing that in the GM brain, that if they o simply open up with fire or acid, luckily, they've not earned it. Gotcha. However, they earn it if they brute force, and he's saying that this is a bad mindset. Okay. Yeah, I no, sure you're hope right. that's what you're he's right, saying. You're right, because the, yeah, next, yeah, yeah. Thing, the yeah, next line because actually he... proves that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. well, okay, Re that's then fair. Yes, then this is not a good mindset to be in. I agree. Yes. But also, like, if for this person, this fictional person who thinks this, um, who might exist, um, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. I have one bit of advice for this person that does not exist. Okay. Don't be afraid of your player's success. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're there like, to throw challenges at oh. them and hope they succeed. I, I remember what I was going to say. What I was going to say is, what if they do it all and don't learn it? 
What if they completely miss that that was what got them to the victory? Yeah. Yeah. What if that, that, that happens? That that's what feels bad as a DM. Yeah. Then yeah, then they, they earned they it, but they don't learn. Yeah. When yeah. they learn it, or when some. Yeah. When, when you they, present like, them a puzzle and they get through it the wrong way. Well, not even yeah. the wrong way. It's just an alternate way, but it doesn't give them any sort of when, learning When they experience. don't better themselves. Yeah, it. exactly. <sighs> anyway. Anyway, now that seems logical, right? Except it's actually bizarro logic that doesn't really work if you look at it. Yes. Uh, it doesn't really work if you really look at it. Yes, Absolutely. we already know that. There's nothing wrong with the idea of creating a challenge that rewards the players for having the right skills or figuring things out or coming up with a clever plan. In fact, yes. that's a very good way to design a challenge. Challenge yes. to reward the players for their skills and ideas and choices. Yes. Players who chose the right skills or deduced the right facts feel like they have created their own victory. Agreed. Because they have. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The problem here is the problem is there is actually no way to figure out most challenges that <laughs> are prone to metagaming. Shut up. Okay. For example, absent Wait, for example, absent a die roll on a monster knowledge skill, how is a clueless player supposed to figure out the troll's vulnerability? By brute forcing it, that's an honest way to do it. Trial yeah. and error is a thing that you do in experimenting. Yes. That what is how the fuck? How, how do you think people fucking figure out that uh, fucking deadly nightshade is kind of deadly? How, did you, how do you think people figured out that you need <laughs> to pasteurize milk in order yeah. to make it edible like also who the fuck f drinkable yeah. trial and error is probably the way we fucking found out that oysters exist yeah it's like oh man there's a rock let's fucking yeah, break exactly, it open and right. see if there's a fucking snot blob in there or that like I wanna, they like, took slurp up my dick yeah they, or something. <laughs> yeah, they took no <laughs> joy look at this weird rock oh god it's covered in horrible eyes Ooh, oh boy i hate it let's call it a scallop <laughs> yeah right <sighs> Now I'm hungry. <laughs> there on. really isn't a way to figure it out. They just have to act at random until they stumble upon it, right? I mean, it's one thing if it is a fire-breathing red dragon wreathed in flame in a flaming volcano. I don't you know. Get I, I, th I, think, I think associating red with fire is relying on metagaming knowledge. Like, fuck yeah. off with this. Are you kidding me? Not to mention, how was a blind player supposed to know that? Like, a blind you character? Can, yeah, you can legitimately Come on. play this as <laughs> if you were blind absolutely yeah, right. but like can... the the other thing the other fucking thing is you oh are going God. uh what about ism because what about if it's fucking if it's breathing fire if it's the obvious fucking thing of what it does that's yeah. so obvious this Ooh. isn't the same thing uh, I, I like it's this. False you can guess thing. pretty easily that the thing is going to take a lot of punishment from a cold of co cone of cold spell, <laughs> but probably will shog off a fireball. Dragons know, take dude. no additional magic damage from anything. Yeah. yeah. They have no weaknesses to magic. No. By, by the way, uh, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't use... Uh, I wouldn't immediately resort to a cone of cold versus a red dragon yeah. that is breathing fire. I would think... Ice is melted by fire because yeah. Pokemon yeah. water beats fire. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't even do that. You know what spell I would use? Huh. Invisibility. Oh, yeah, no, it's true. Leave. Yeah, I was thinking like, uh, what is it? Recall or whatever the fuck. Yeah, or like Expeditious Retreat or some yeah, shit. Yeah, just get me out of there, dude. It's a red fucking dragon. In a volcano. The in fuck a, are you doing? It's in a fucking, 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 fucking flaming fucking te Teostra. Good luck with that. Flaming volcano. What are you doing? Uh, but, but the troll situation isn't like that at all. Basically, the players have to be handed the information as a res as the result of a random die roll, or they have to act randomly until they stumble upon the answer. And or the troll stumbles across the fire and you see it roar in pain yeah. as, like, a toe enters the fire. Yeah. And its skin is bubbling all over just in contact with it, right? Like, and yeah. then make it a you, thing that is obvious then. If or you need them or it is shying away from the light of the torches. Yeah. Like, you God can give damn, dude. You, you can set, set the scene. You can give context clues so that someone can make a determination from all of the factors. Yeah. Ah! It's this not, is, su this is such you, a terrible GM. As, 
You quite as, literally, you quite literally as, shouldn't keep thinking that your players are fucking babies. What they have brains, dude. That's what I did with you, and it fucked me up. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, there's also, and granted, your mileage may vary on this. Give them a hint. Set the scene. Yeah. Like imply that they're shying away from the fire. Your player may just say, "Can I roll a nature check?" And then it's like, yeah, now that you've seen this happen, you think you read something in a book once, maybe. Exactly. And, like, adjust DC accordingly. The, yeah, the like, check and the, like, other, like that. the other thing is they don't have to act randomly. They can go through a checklist of, okay, I'm going to use electricity. I'm going to use necrotic. I'm going to use, like, in any order they fucking want. But it yeah. is still something that they are doing not randomly but procedurally yeah like a procedure uh, a procedural thing is not random because yeah. you're making a conscious effort to choose th one thing and then the next thing and then the next thing like if it yeah. was random it could be fire lightning lightning like cold cold fire lightning cold yes and you that could, random you could very well do it randomly if you wanted to if you like, wanted to, but it's not the only way. It's also not too much of a stretch. And granted, I know we're pulling apart an example wherein, like, the example is meant to be a representation of a greater mentality. But given that all you ever go back to is this example, exactly, uh, it's all I have to work with. So, yeah, um, it's not too much of a stretch to imagine something made out of flesh isn't going to like fire. Yeah, it's really not. Like, would I use fire against a moving set of armor? Probably not. Probably not. Would I use fire against a bunch of wet plants? Probably not. Like, you use lightning against that. Yeah, this I would. Is... I would. I would use lightning against that. And yeah. as a character, I would see it reform, and I would go, "Oh, sorry, guys." You know, <laughs> if if we want to use your own example that you have come up with, that you have shown us, that. You had a few players who had secrets who did not share them. Let me tell you, that was not the only situation that could have happened. They could have shared it. They could have. You could have made it so that they had shared it in bits and pieces or just as a whole. You have the ability to do this just as a player has the ability to come up with different ways to come up uh, to to solve a problem. Like like Yeah, not, but no though. Oh. Not ev not every secret present at a D and D character has the import of like an unfaithful partner. <sighs> It's still just <laughs> like there are some secrets that can come out where I go, oh, hey, that's a cool bit of character development. Yeah, exactly. I don't go, you're in debt. Yes. Yeah, so there's also <laughs> that. It's just. <sighs> All right. Continue, All right. Please. Where were we? Uh, Basically, the player. OK. okay here we go. Yep. Ah, and if you look at just. Uh, OK. And if you look at just about the Wait, what the fuck is the sentence? Basically. And. If you look at just about situation in okay. which a GM, what the fuck is that? Yeah, it's not. He did yeah. editing. Remember, don't. Forget. Yeah, editorialization. Yep. Uh, is whining about player metagaming breaking the challenge? You invariably come back to a situation that isn't really something that can even be figured out. What the fuck? Don't 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 forget about the fact that right above we also had. I mean, it's one thing if it is a fire-breathing red dragon wreathed in flame in a flaming volcano. Yeah. Period. Like yeah. that's not a sentence. No. That's it's, yeah. That's, no. A, that's that's inviting a semicolon. Yeah. Just, uh... Uh, the problem is that a challenge. Wait. Okay. The problem is that a challenge that can be broken by a specific piece of information is a poorly designed challenge. Yes. Yeah, it can be, or yeah. it the it depends on how hard yeah, it, it is to it, get that information. Yeah, I it, would say. It, like if it's a challenge that you're meant to overcome by using the information, I wouldn't say that that's a that's it's a not, bad challenge. It's not necessarily I would, I would, I would, poorly designed. I would actually say uh, the problem is that a challenge that can be broken by a specific piece of information that would not be reasonably available to the yes. party yes. is a poorly That's designed a poorly challenge. Designed challenge. Absolutely. Yes. 
There isn't anything interesting about rolling a random die roll, acting at random to figure something out, or else getting screwed. It isn't fun gameplay. The question is always this. Does this challenge become more interesting if the players know less, know the information, or less interesting? Okay. Does the challenge become more interesting if the players know the information, or less interesting? Sorry. A single troll becomes really boring if the players know its vulnerability. Really? Because there are some really fucking interesting trolls. Dude, okay. You ever heard so, of a fucking dire troll? Right. Hold up. Okay, so I actually have... Wait, no, it wasn't in Dreaded Accursed. What was it in? There's a... Was it Volos? Yeah, it's Volos. That it's Volos. Like, it's a so. shit ton of trolls. Yeah, they did yeah have, like, it had a whole bunch of trolls. trolls. The dire troll and... was one of them. Yeah. It was It's so fucking cool. awesome. Fucking, they really fleshed out troll. Oh, I don't know if they ah. had them before, but... Oh, yeah, I didn't even think yeah. about it. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Yeah, and no, they talk fine. about, like, trolls grafting parts of their own Yeah, selves that's the dark yeah. troll. Um, Super yeah. cool. I mean, even if you beat a monster easily, it's not like it becomes less interesting. Right. You know what I mean? Like, again, I mean, so, you guys and beat, I... beat the big fucking weasel thing. Right. You beat the giant spider. But I like to think that you guys had fun with those encounters. Yeah, and, it was yeah I think. I don't, I don't know. know. Did you? Yeah, I, I did, yeah. And, like... It's not okay. So you could have the situation where somebody thinks it's less interesting because they know things about it. Yeah, That's right. fine. That's something that can happen. Not everybody is the same. Maybe yeah. they don't want to know more. Like have some things be a mystery. I know there are some things in life that I would rather not know because it's it's more interesting. But there, yeah. <sighs> There's also, and now because we're on the concept of trolls, and I know that they mentioned them in um, Ultimate Bestiary, the dreaded Accursed, brought to you by Nord Games, a thing I backed on Kickstarter a while back. Nice. Okay. Um, like uh, March of last year, nice. a while back, uh, the book came in. They have Troll Zombie, Plague Born Troll, mm. Troll Plague Host. Ooh. Sounds and. Like yeah, Fuck and that. like the troll zombie, <laughs> when it would take poison or necrotic damage, it instead mm -hmm. takes no damage and regains a number of hit points equal to the total damage, Neat. up to 10 hit points. Mm. Uh, foul recovery, foul recovery. Okay, they all have foul recovery and undead fortitude. Oh, so those are all technically undead trolls? Yes. Okay. Ah. Fuck the plague one, though, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> Don't get that. Yeah. Uh, multi attack, claws bite, foul limb. Uh, so, so Blood let me hunter. let me posit a scenario. How about uh, we no. have we have a troll, right? That's boring. Oh well, unfortunately, <laughs> oh. let's let's have a troll, right? And the <laughs> troll, uh, you know its vulnerability. Oh my yes. god, you know that it's weak to fire and acid. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yes. The troll is. Uh, taking uh animals from okay. uh, a farm okay. and keeping them alive oh okay what do you think right now uh sorry i was reading two different things about the troll play coast can i recap uh troll it's uh terrorizing a village it's taking farmers animals but it's keeping them alive okay. you know that it's vulnerable uh, to fire and acid what do you think uh, okay um uh, see if it's making any tools or as such may have a higher intelligence maybe it can be reasoned with if not uh, go in with flaming arrows and torches uh, I actually had a different idea Please. Um, see if uh, like sneak up to where secretly get to where it is mm -hmm. and see if it's basically like chopping its arm off and like grafting it onto the fucking farm animals Ooh. so now I have tell a dark. me I'm Are... dark no it's fine <laughs> Are are you interested though? Yeah, eh, not really. Oh, okay. I already Trolls know it's like the fire. Don't, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. Trolls exactly. Don't usually do that, so this is abnormal behavior. Yeah, yeah right. So it's as simple as that. Is it, huh. is it keeping them? Is it keeping them penned in? Like, right, rah. exactly. The, what's yeah, happening? Is it feeding? All, the is only thing that eating? I've given you is that it's keeping them alive. And how, yeah, it's just how, doing something. How do we know that it's keeping them alive? How are the farmers not defending their? Uh, animals with yeah. fire remains to be seen exactly yeah. so like you have uh, a bunch of questions and so you're interested to figure out the mystery yes 
But so, guess what? You know what the vulnerability is, so you don't fucking care. Yeah, it's boring. <laughs> it's fucking so, boring. Uh, two things, uh, actually three things, real quick. Uh, all the undead trolls I was reading about them, they have uh, it's called undead fortitude. Yep. If damage reduces the troll to zero hit points, yep. it must make a con saving throw with a DC of five plus the damage taken, mm -hmm. unless the damage is radiant or from a critical hit. Yep. On a success, the plague host, well, uh, troll, drops to one hit point instead. Yep. So every, like it every can stay undead mostly that, dead and. Mostly um, alive. <laughs> yep. Every yeah. every undead has that, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, fuck it. They, and they have, <laughs> but it's still cool. Uh, I like it. Oh yeah, no, it's great. It's they have that. <laughs> they have an attack called Foul Limb. Ooh. Uh, they take uh, bludgeoning damage. It's melee or ranged. Uh, additionally, yeah. creatures must succeed on a DC twenty con saving throw or take four one d eight necrotic damage and contract the zombie necrosis disease Ooh, creatures nice. immune to the poisoned condition are immune to this disease if the plague host is not holding one of its own severed limbs when making this attack it rips off one of its limbs first dealing 13 slashing damage to itself nice, nice. so it just rips the limb off and like yeah it at people. that's awesome Fuck yeah uh, it has a bit of flavor text saying trolls' immune systems, boosted by their extraordinary regeneration, react aggressively to the zombie contagion, often causing dramatic mutations in a vain attempt to fight off the disease. Yeah, yeah. it's super cancer, dude. <laughs> okay. Anyway, a single troll becomes really boring if the players know its vulnerability, <laughs> unless fire is a limited resource. Oh, For fuck example, off. fireballs are limited resources. Oil is a limited resource that you can buy pretty much anywhere for, yeah, like, nothing. cheap. In your scenario, if, the, if it's limited, then it's limited, but it doesn't make it less interesting. If the party has to deal with a cave full of trolls, the fact that they need to either come prepared with literal firepower or manage their resources well makes the adventure interesting. A troll shaman that can shield his allies from fire makes information more interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's A neat. mine... Ooh. Oh, that's that's actually yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, really yeah. give a shit about the troll shaman, but I like the last one. A mine filled with gas pockets that will explode if exposed to fire makes the information more interesting. Agreed. That's a little bit cool. That makes things more interesting, but it does not take away from the fact that a single troll can be interesting. Yes. It can also serve to springboard like a larger campaign. Like yeah, you don't yeah. need the trolls to be interesting. You can yeah. say like the troll shaman got its information on like weird magic from a hag. Yeah. And like the hag is working for the big bad evil guy. Sure. You, you remember that time when we were playing a real, real shit Call of Cthulhu campaign written by <laughs> yours truly? <laughs> it wasn't shit. But I on. tried to forget. <laughs> mm, that's fine. <laughs> You remember uh, an alligator? Mm. Mm -hmm. Alligators aren't very interesting. They're weak to fire and acid, as That's are most true. things. As are most things. <laughs> They're weak to fire and acid. Uh, however, the idea for the alligator was specifically to be a thing that leads you to something else. Mm -hmm. Yep. And again, just like Aiden was saying, with the trolls learning fire magic from a hag, yep. I actually went in a different direction. Because trolls are also giants. Yep. That's why that's one of the reasons why I really like trolls is because they're giants. And giants are not used often enough. They're super cool. They have all this fucking backstory in mm -hmm. uh the monster manuals and shit oh, about yeah. how like they fought against dragons and the gods and shit. Super awesome. cool. You could have trolls be underneath fire giants. And that's how they learn their fire shielding magic. And then sure. you deal with the trolls, and then it's like they have like a rune of the fire giant that like protects them from fire. It's like, oh shit, this is a rune of the fire giant that protects them from fire. Sure. Uh, yeah. And then you're like, where did they get this? And then all of a sudden you walk out of the cave and there's like a fucking fire giant. It's like, did you kill my trolls? It's like, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, you're being kind of assholes. Do you want your rune back? Sure. And then he fucking walks off. It's like, oh shit, there's like giants around here. So you can again. Have the trolls that you, for some reason, think aren't interesting lead to something that you consider to be more interesting. Yeah. I... Same way I used an alligator to lead to a fucking octopus beard frog thing. Exactly, yeah. Anyway. 
Uh, the thing is, in many cases, the information does make the fight more interesting. The GM only thinks it breaks only thinks it breaks the challenge. As noted, fire is not something everyone has, nor is acid, and both are limited resources. Uh, you didn't really need to have "nor is acid" be a full uh, be a sentence. You could have just had a comma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As noted, fire is not something everyone has. Comma nor is acid. Period. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Even if the party knows the vulnerability, their tactical choices are going to be limited and subpar. Oh, okay. And create a resource management game. In the context of an extended adventure, that troll is interesting, even if the party literally burns through the encounter. Okay, okay so-, so my counter to your argument is what if they don't do that and they have an abundance of these things? Yeah. What if like, it's... Like, uh, in it, fairness, oh, that, yeah. But, yeah, but is- like, this is also a what if scenario. Yeah. So I'm using the exact same thing. Like it it doesn't it means that it means nothing. Like it it Yeah. Okay, so if if the party knows the vulnerability, the tactic their tactical choices are going to be limited. How? Yeah. How are they limited now? I guess because they only want to do what is you know, you have what is you have the thing. You have one guy who needs to do it and then everybody yeah. else can do whatever they want. Yeah, or you like have them take turns. The, the the wizard is no longer casting fireballs. Tactical options are limited. Right. <laughs> like that's yeah. Yeah. And like, subpar. Uh, I again. I like I suppose, how you immediately assume that your fucking players are shit tacticians. And create a resource management game. Again, it could, but it doesn't have to. Especially if, like. <sighs> I just I don't understand. Yeah. You have the ability unless it is very limited and in that case I guess it could become that way. But this seems to suffer from the same logic as mages and hallways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it really does. Or weasels and caves. Oh. <laughs> Personally, this sort of metagaming where the players know things about the game or the monsters or the way the stories are structured. Mhm. Uh, Go on. The metagame uh, uh, it's not okay. it's not a sentence right? yeah what the fuck personally this sort of metagaming where the players know things about the game or the monsters or the way the stories are structured the metagaming against challenges i advise gms not to sweat it sure, okay whatever that fuck, that's worded awfully <sighs> after all the players are supposed to win anyway who gives a f dollar sign and percent question mark <laughs> If they torch the troll without breaking a sweat, oh well, there'll be another fight. A better Agreed. fight. If they realize the answer mm-hmm. to the mystery because the the way I structured my mysteries, I'll have to write better adventures. Obviously, I'm settling into a pattern or becoming too predictable. I Fair need enough. to up my game. I sure. need to do more interesting things. If I catch my players metagaming, it's a sign that I F dollar and percented uh, up. No. no. No, it's not. It's really you can, not. You can be perfectly fine and have a player Google a stat block. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Either I need to make my game impossible. <laughs> Fuck off. <Just laughs> don't. Oh my that's, God. that's one of the options. <sighs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah. Finish since the sentence. You guys, you guys beat... No, no, no. Hang on. In Since you guys beat my spider really yeah. good, real good, the next monster that you fight... It's going to have a billion HP and do 3d100 oh, damage that's every attack. Okay. Possible. Okay. Just so you know. Just I mean, let that's, you know. that's fine. Does it have a body? No. Okay, cool. It's immune to all damage. Oh, uh, okay. It, okay. It's, it's me. Well, it's to, me. To, be, oh. <laughs> <laughs> to, be fair, to be fair as well, um, I has don't has five die, legendary so. actions. Yes. <laughs> Anyway. And they're all saying re. Right. <laughs> okay. Either I need to make my game impossible to impossible to meta game. Sorry. I yeah. I should have finished the sentence, but Still. it sounded funny. It sounded funny. Uh, either I need to make my game impossible to meta game, or I need to make my game such that meta gaming doesn't break it. But usually, all the GM needs is an attitude adjustment. Usually, the GM has just ha, just has a skewed view of how to construct <laughs> challenges, obstacles, and adventures. The pot so- calling the kettle black. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, dude. What? what Actually, you put that in your own article? <laughs> what in the fuck? Like... Jacob! Jacob, why? <laughs> <laughs> Jacob Priest! <laughs> <sighs> Let's continue. Usually all the genies. 
to do to just <laughs> <sighs> Uh, oh, please, okay. Please. I needed that. Yeah. I needed a bit. Of, I needed a bit of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the realism argument, and now we come the to the crux of the issue. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <sighs> even if you're with me that metagaming is usually a sign of another problem, no. even if you agree with everything I've said in the previous 4,000 words, Haven't. you might still be left with a sour taste in your mouth about metagaming because it is impure and dirty, just like that goat. Mm. After all, the characters should only ever act on information they could have had in the game world, or they could have in the game world. If the players are acting on their own knowledge of DCs and numbers or monster abilities or the structure of stories or cliches or the fact that blah, 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 they aren't really role playing. Jesus Christ. They are doing something <sighs> gross and icky. And when I hear that, I think back to a line from my favorite character in Star Trek Don't Deep Space Nine. Don't take Star Trek into this, dude. Deep Go Space on. Nine, too. Go on. <laughs> now, D DS9 was a show that I have very fond memories of, and I recently discovered the result of my greatly misremembering the number of S and percent dollar episodes that yeah, show Yeah, all the shows do. They have filler. Yeah. It's what happens, dude. Go on. It it had a few really great episodes and some fantastic characters, but mm -hmm. the vast majority of the show was mediocre, m medicore, and bland. Yep, medicore, oh. dude. Medicore, yes. Mm. And it that had sounds, a lot of steaming... like a brand new genre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> medicore. And it had a lot of steaming turd episodes. Yeah. Really, you're not going to call it S and yeah, percent right. dollar. Like anything to do with Quark. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, sure. Uh, but so, I did love the show at the time because I didn't have a refined palate back then. Yes, his palate is very refined now. <laughs> anyway, Alem Garak was an exiled spy living incognito. Wait, incognito, not incognito. Yep. Incognito. Yes, in I, the city of the city of Cognito. I, by the way, <laughs> I I just wanted to check real quick. Yeah, that's that's the wrong palate. <laughs> like a palette, like refined palette, like a sense of taste. That's a palette for stacking things up. Oh my no, god! No, yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a palette. That's oh. what you organize colors on. P yeah. a l l e t is what you stack things on. Oh. P a l a t e is like the oh, roof of your mouth. Oh god! You've done oh, so good sake. in your editorializing, dude. Is yeah. this like, a second I, draft? <laughs> I saw it and like my head cocked and I'm like, surely I am wrong. And then I <laughs> search Palette and it's uh, Google even says, uh, hold on, let me. <laughs> uh, it's like often confused for Palette. <laughs> if you're going to, that's, that's, yeah. if you're gonna write an article about your opinion, Ooh. please at least make it like oh my God. functional in its grammar and its fucking word choice and like spelling and. Ugh. Yeah, right. here, here here you go angry game runner <laughs> yeah. there you go there you go yeah. look at this and learn but oh, apparently geez. it's hard so uh. yeah anyway lm garak was an exiled an exiled formed spy oh, it should Jesus. be former but oh, formed God. spy living in the city in... of cognito <laughs> yes in <laughs> cognito yep yes in the city of cognito as a tailor he was okay. charismatic and oily and shady and secretive I and fun. Remember, so. You don't need that many ands. You can just do that with commas. Commas, dude. They're a very useful technically, tool. Techni technically speaking, it's not incorrect. It's not incorrect. I but know, it's, but it's, it's a it's a it's, shit it's, sentence structure. It is definitely it's, adding it's sophomoric. Yes, but yeah, not incorrect. Exactly. It is definitely adding more words to your already four thousand and fifty. <laughs> word count so, <laughs> I, yeah. I, uh, I really like this next line this mm -hmm. is great so te Aiden, you te finish. technically speaking uh the word previous before he says 4000 is word 4474 <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is this is a fun line right mm -hmm. here and everything he said was a lie almost everything oh so you're contradicting yourself right next to each other That's everything fine. and then almost everything <laughs> Cool, I don't know. Dude. That just that's maybe, funny to me. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. You'd be surprised. Mm. He was a pathological liar and he was proud of that fact. At one point he claimed the truth is usually just an excuse for a lack of imagination. And that's <laughs> how I feel about the realism argument against metagaming. Okay, here we go. Please. 
For example, people often claim that acting based on the knowledge of numbers and skills and probabilities is metagaming. I like to point out that those numbers and skills and probabilities are our way of translating the game world the characters can see into terms we can understand. Yes. For, most, for example, most rock climbers from amateur to expert learn to assess their skills and the difficulty of particular climbs. The ones that survive not <laughs> judge whether a climb is within their skills. Wow. Uh, the ones that die don't. Yeah. You know. Okay. I don't well, know they much do, about they... Technically, the ones that die also learn. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that brief Getting moment, just their before. way out of hell. They, yeah. they know for a moment. Yeah, like, oh, that brief shit, moment. All your life flashes before your eyes, and you go, "Damn, why this did I do was this?" A hard. <laughs> I don't know much about rock climbing, and I can't see the cliff. My particular character is getting ready to climb, and I don't know how to actually qualify my character's skill level because of my own lack of experience. What? But my character show no sure knows a thing or two about rock climbing and knows how to assess a climb. Yes, they don't know the odds to the same degree of precision that I do, but it's ridiculous to say they wouldn't know anything about the odds at all. That's yeah. fair. That's, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. And Forrest, I gotta... Forrest knows that he sees. He yes, sees. he knows who sees. He does. Um, um, he, he sees. The, yeah, he sees. <laughs> the, 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 thing same... that, the thing that I would say is who claims that acting based on the knowledge of numbers and skills and probabilities is metagaming? That's quite yeah, literally uh, an did, essential... I did literally earlier in the podcast. Did you? Oh, really? I don't remember. I, granted, I immediately backtracked with why it's wrong, but... Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, because okay, I mean, so... like, if you have... Yeah. Let, let's just say you have a fucking... I don't know, you're fucking proficient in performing. Yeah. You know, you have a you have a big fucking score in performing. And that yeah. can translate to your character being very experienced and a good performer. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. That's all it is. Like you don't have to think about it as a metagame aspect. Yes, I suppose you could if you wanted to really just look at it as a numbers game. But yeah. that's not what or it is. Boris is very confident that if he goes and he sneaks away, he will not be seen. Exactly. He will successfully be able to see what he is scouting for. Yeah. He will because, see. Because he sees. <laughs> because he, he sees. sees. As yes. such, like, when he's like, hey, if you guys want, I can go scout. And they say, nah. And he goes, but why wouldn't you? All right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, and then when he comes back, he feels confident giving his report and, yeah. like, speaks with some measure of authority. Exactly. Yes. Like, There's nothing wrong with allowing the numbers to inform you of your character's proficiency in a skill exactly. or self, an yeah, attribute. It's or not, their self-confidence. It's definitely, yes. it's not necessarily medical now if you were to say have your character be like and you look over at their sheet and their character is like oh man you look like you're really good at persuasion right yeah yeah you know th that's something like, unquantifiable yeah absolutely and like there's the other thing of and we've done it before uh bef like a long while back but we used to go um hey how are you looking and somebody would go i'm between <laughs> on a scale of one to 20 yeah on a scale yeah. of one to 27 i'm at about a five yeah, yeah like, right? So, <laughs> and we just do me. that jokingly. Yeah, yeah, but we would just do that jokingly because, I mean, obviously, if you look at him, he's bloody as shit. And, yeah. Like, it, yes, it's metagaming. Oh, no, but it's not like but, we're... Ugh. Yeah, it's not like you're you're not doing it in a malicious and, like, advantage-gaining way. You're it, just like, asking, I, hey, are you, you could, fucking hurt? I suppose, in a funny way. I suppose you could make the argument that it informs your decision of whether or not to use healing as a more powerful spell or not. But I would also argue that the amount of blood pouring out of my friend yeah. also informs me of that decision. Yeah, exactly. I can, I can imagine someone at 5 of 27 hit points a lot better than if someone says, I'm doing kind of rough. Yeah. Yeah, and like, so, I'm it, like, like, oh, like well, what, do, what does what does what does that mean? Do I see yeah. bone? Like, yeah, unless right? like and you could absolutely instead of saying five out of 27 say, yeah, I've got a lot of cuts and bruises and also I'm gushing blood out of my side and yeah, I like, hurt. I'm having trouble standing and my vision is kind of cloudy. Exactly. I can really use some help here. Yeah. Simple as that. Like, anyway, we just like to do that because it's fun. Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. It's cheeky. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's the metagaming that we do all the time, and it doesn't because matter because it it's not yeah. it's not a malicious form of metagaming. Exactly. I think yeah, like 
the most metagamey character I ever played was Muscle Wizard. Yeah. And, like, that was when I started saying it, I think, was we were like, oh, how are you, Muscle Wizard? He's like, ah, oh, on a scale of about 0 to 41, I'm at about a 13. <laughs> <laughs> I remember right. doing it way oh. the fuck back, though, when we first started. Yeah. So. I don't know. I don't remember. I didn't, I didn't, well, I'd only played one campaign, like, for a couple weeks before I played with you guys. But yeah, yeah. I didn't say it until we started doing it. Yeah. The yeah. same goes for combat situations. Every adventurer possesses at least one weapon proficiency. That means they have trained for combat. Mm -hmm. And that means they can assess the relative skills of various opponents. Not really. Just because you see a bandit holding a sword so, doesn't mean you know how good he is with yeah, it. Yeah, it depends on if they're seeing them perform or not, right? Like, yeah. Anyway. I don't know. Like... I would, yeah, I would have to see them perform. I can't yeah. just be like, oh, that bandit like, like 100 feet away. I would, oh, I would, like I would say actually, you can actually yeah. somewhat. I was going to say, if, if you are actually knowledgeable about that kind of stuff, you can look at a person's stance, how they're holding yes. it, like, yeah. and actually determine dancers, whether or not they're skillful. Dancers and fighters always walk the same way, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. always walk on the balls of their feet. So, and I would say it depends on your character then if they yeah. are that skilled or not to determine that. If they look at a guy and he's standing in a certain way and he's like got the sword out, they could maybe determine or maybe not. It depends on how familiar they are with their own yeah. practice. When yeah. they're when they're walking, do you see their head bob bob up and down like a lot, or does their head stay at just about the constant level as they walk? Right, or yeah. that'll, or that'll do they even you know notice how that how they're stepping? Right, does your character even notice that though? That yeah, yeah. that'll determine some things anyway. Uh, they know when someone is beyond them, usually. Sure, people misjudge their skills or the challenges they face all the time, and that sort of thing is wrapped up in the fact that the outcome is random. When the rock climber rolls a two and falls oh, to their death... It... Yeah, yeah right. really. When the rock climber rolls a two and falls to their death, it might have been an unavoidable accident or an unforeseen loose handhold, or it might have just been poor judgment on the part of the climber. Who knows? Yep. The numbers of the game mean something. They exist as analogs for things that have a reality in the game world. Armor class, hit points, skills, DCs, and all that stuff is the language used to describe a world we can't see or understand completely. But our characters can. Fair. Yeah. Yep, yeah. That, that is fair. Sure. Well, we already did that. Uh, when it comes to other stuff like vulnerabilities and specific information about specific monsters and magic items and whatever, the problem is that there's actually no good reason to assume characters don't know anything. Basically, we assume that the character... Characters only know what they have actively studied, their skills, or what they have personally experienced. But the thing is, apart from my list of trained skills, I'm talking about real life me, I have a whole lot of hodgepodge trivia and useless information. I mean, F dollar and percent. I know what a vampire's weaknesses are, and I never studied vampires actively. It's just an accident of pop culture. And you might even have them wrong. Who knows? But yeah, right? I bet you what didn't I would... know that fucking vampires are forced to count rice if you dump it yeah, on the fucking floor. I was floor. actually right? just thinking of the counting one. And, yep. like, the, the other thing that I would say for this is, yes, guess what? That's when you call for a roll and you go, yeah. can I attempt to use my history in order to potentially figure out if I know about this or not? And then, yeah. hey, you might have heard a rumor or some trivia and it really stuck in your brain. And like, go on. Hey, please. my bard has been in a lot of plays in his life. Mm -hmm. Has any of the plays maybe had a vampire in them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. No, no. Right? Yeah, never, ever. <laughs> never. <laughs> Vampires are icky. We don't do plays about them. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Now, you might say, sure, you know things because you live in an era of internets and role-playing games, but medieval people in fantasy land don't know those, don't have those things. Yeah. And I would counter with pop culture has existed since the dawn of time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I suppose, in a I sense. I mean, God. Yes. That's just such a stupid sentence to not, me. Not as we know it, but yes, there was a popular culture, if you want to use the words as they Yeah, are. right. Every the, Greek... the Greek gods were pop culture yes. before they were actually religion. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. So every every Greek citizen who had seen or heard about a certain play oh, okay. knew the answer to the Sphinx's riddle, and consequently they knew what a Sphinx was and how to get around it. Europeans have known for ages how to deal with a vampire. The reason mm -hmm. is that as dollar and pound or a dollar and percent is in our games today because hundreds or thousands of years ago it was so ubiquitous it survived okay so here's the thing right yeah this yep. podcast i listen to is called monster talk 
I would heavily recommend it because they talk about like fantasy monsters and they always start by comparing the lore surrounding the monster from various countries and Mm -hmm. places and a lot of it's conflicting it is very conflicting having done research myself into vampires Mm -hmm. it's conflicting Mm -hmm. dude have you thought look at the japanese vampire they are literal jumping praying mantis types yeah they're fucking weird or also look at the vampires in cthulhu head yeah yeah Mm, yeah that too yep they, yeah, trust they, me, you look up the vampires in Cthulhu, they ain't what you're thinking. If if you look up a werewolf versus, like, a Lugaru, yep, there's gonna Lugaru, be some yeah. differences. Fucking... Yeah. It, it, it depends on the culture, and it depends on what's survived. It depends on the stories that we tell. It depends yeah. on what you are around to hear the, or witness or anything the, like that. The And they mentioned this on Monster Talk, but the whole weakness to silver thing would probably stem from, like, someone who is a bit drunk, like, shooting at a large wolf chasing mm-hmm. sheep and missing a shot, missing another shot, taking, like, a button out of his pants because those were silver back then, and then firing it and maybe the wolf ran away and he's like, yeah, no, I hit that wolf, like, I promise you, I hit that wolf, it's weak to silver, but regular bullets, like... I hit it every time, but the regular <laughs> bullets did nothing. Only right. the silver worked. Exactly. Yeah, right. So, <sighs> uh, the characters in D anD D don't grow up in a vacuum. They have pulp co- pop culture too. They have mm-hmm. stories, myths, books, plays, songs, legends, and trivia. Hell, the bar class is proof that that crap exists in D anD D and is widely wildly popular. Really? The thing Shakespeare is, Shakespeare also existed. He came up with a bunch of dumb bullshit. Yeah, yeah right. I was gonna say. The thing is, it is just as easy to argue that a character knows a random thing as it is to argue they don't. And trying to control metagaming by screaming that it's unrealistic for someone to know a thing they never personally experienced is squashing creativity and imagination. (laughs) Why are you stifling my creativity? Why are you stifling my creativity, Mr. DF man? (laughs) Hell, why not ask the player to explain the knowledge? I mean, that's Oh, you mean like... Oh, you mean like I do? Like every DM like does? Like everyone yeah, right? does? And like Jesus like Christ. you apparently... <sighs> fucking... The characters in D&D grow- don't grow up in a vacuum, but this guy sure fucking did. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's stupid bulls dollar and percent and a waste of F dollar and percenting time. But some people get really get off on the creative story bulls and dollar and percent. So you don't. Okay, good to yeah, know. Yeah, right. Yeah. So let the wizard explain his teacher one-eyed Waldorf lost his eye to a troll. The wizard had to listen to the story so many F dollar and presenting times in his studies that he can practically sing it in his sleep. Yep. <sighs> Yelling about metagaming makes you a dick. In the end, as a GM, if you start losing your S and dollar and percent and whatever, you need to adjust your attitude. Most metagaming isn't problematic. It's only problematic because you have some F dollar and percented up the idea about how the game is supposed to work. You keep positing this, but you haven't proved it. Yeah, right? Jesus Christ. The problematic metagaming, the metagaming that really does some somehow break something, is a sign of another problem, and you need to fix that problem. That problem is usually you. No matter how you slice it, metagaming is your fault. Ugh. So, I I'm just, real quick, uh, give, me, yeah. give me one second. Jesus. I would love to point out the irony that his last and shortest paragraph is yelling about metagaming makes you a dick at the very ass end of a 5,546 word essay yep. about metagaming. About yeah. metagaming. Wherein he is screaming. And yeah, also right. telling, like, this is the point. Like, uh, can, we, can, we, can we be done now? Yes, <laughs> yes, we can so be done now. I think, I, think, I think we've all pretty much shared our thoughts. Yeah, yeah that's, we have. That's, that's it. Like that. By the way, no, yeah. That, you're good, you're good. Yeah, no, it's like ugh, fucking stupid shit. Um, yeah. okay, so well, we've 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 got to we've got to find a real bad one every now and then. Yep, no, yeah. it's true. It's been on the in the list for a while now. So we've had we've had too many happy episodes. It's true. <laughs> we yeah. have to suffer. Um, so hey. Thanks for listening and watching those lovely people out there that are still doing so. Uh, very much appreciate it immensely. Um, if you if you do care about the merch, um, again, link is in the description. It's on Redbubble. You can search us and uh, go find the the home decor of your choice. 
Um, it does support us directly, so please, if you want to do it that way, instead of the Patreon, uh, you may, and don't feel obligated to. If you like what it looks like, and you want it in your house, then, and you or have the financial, person. or on your person, uh, <laughs> and you have the financial responsibility, uh, and, and the, you give uh, us your money? <laughs> well, no, you have, not, not responsibility. Um, I know. <laughs> security, that's the way. There we go, yeah, yeah. Um, if you have the financial security to do so, then go for it. But if you need that money for whatever, fucking use it for whatever else. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. that that's that and uh you can find this podcast on fridays at 4 p.m eastern standard time on our youtube channel first then again at uh 12 p.m eastern standard time on uh podcasting services or maybe a little bit later it depends on the site um or service uh the rest of the information can also be found on uh, tabletalk d and d dot us that is our website has a bunch of cool little things there's also a link to the the merch shop on there too so if you want to find it us, that. we are d and d we are d and d we are um you can also <laughs> I, paizo don't or no not paizo uh watsy don't sue us <laughs> <laughs> well no we're 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 d and d not d and d or d and percent d like mm. don't worry about it um so we are dand-d-d. Dand-d-d. um yes you can follow us on our twitter and instagram at table talk <laughs> d and d it's on your screen as well as in the description as well as join our discord server where you can talk to us when we are around and participate in polls and see what announcements are uh the link is also in the, scri- the description and on your screen uh finally as sp- stated we uh started a patreon uh patreon.com slash table talk d n d real uh, real real quick alejo yes, before yeah. you discuss the patreon let's discuss the best ways to find us and that is you'll see down by the play button mm-hmm. on your youtube or a podcast stream of choice likely on the podcast though not necessarily mm-hmm. uh you will find a weird wacky little symbol um between like the pause button and the volume button and that's the next button click that mm. yeah you'll find hopefully something else that is ours uh if mm-hmm. youtube allows it and if the podcasting service is like hey yeah. oh that's what we got the playlist for <laughs> oh my god we have a playlist on this channel oh my god oh. and also on services wow um so yeah there's that uh Please, if you uh, enjoy what we do, enjoy our suffering and everything uh, that it entails, uh, consider subscribing, following, leaving a like, leaving a comment, sending us an email at tabletalkdnd at gmail.com. Uh, give us a review on your uh, Apple podcasting or iTunes or whatever it is, Watch. please. Yeah, on your Apple Watch, uh, leave us a review because uh, it helps to spread the thing. And we've been seeing more growth, and it's pretty cool. And uh, I want to see more growth. I want it. Give it to me. Need it. Um, share the share the episodes with your friends, with your grandma, with anybody that you deem uh, worthy. <laughs> and so truth be told if you don't get to the end of this episode i couldn't blame you that latter yeah. part was a slog for us yeah, too. yeah maybe you fucking... skipped ahead to this part where you enjoy us uh decompressing and dying uh mm-hmm. in that case hey how are you hope you're doing yeah, well right. hope everyone's doing well um even if you don't listen to this or watch it hope you're doing well um did I forget anything? I don't think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll... oh god. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, we'll we'll see you guys in the next. Oh, don't forget that you can submit things to us to talk about or look at 
Any yes, of that please stuff? make it something nice for no, once. No, make it horrible. Make it uh, just the worst, because uh, if I ask for something, they'll do the opposite. I know. Uh, but if I say uh, yeah. that, then they'll do the opposite of that. But if I say I don't, I don't know, though, because if you say, give us something horrible, mm-hmm. I feel people will oblige you. I hope But so. if you say, give us something nice, then people will go, mm, let's go for the bait and switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's, a, it's a win-win uh, <laughs> for you. Um, yeah. yeah. So, Unless it's a slog, then it's a lose lose for everybody. We, well, yeah. we exist to undergo pain for your pleasure. It is true. I am here for you to continue to just drive needles into I, you. I yeah. am a product for you to use. <laughs> Consume us, please. <laughs> <laughs> Consume this podcast and be excited for next Friday's podcast. Yeah, where we talk about fourth edition. <laughs> no, oh. never. <laughs> never ever. I have all these fourth edition books I'll never get to talk about. Dude, dude I, I wish we had juice here for this. Uh, right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um. Hey. Uh no, I did remember something that I forgot. Watch our Devils and Dice campaign. Yeah. It's on Wednesdays at four PM Eastern Standard Time on our YouTube channel, and I still have yet to upload audio only versions to the Patreon, but that's gonna come at some point because yeah. fuck it. You might as well have something. Yeah. <laughs> but oh also gosh. like but also like I mean I figured putting it out there somewhere that isn't on the main podcast thing because it would just get mixed in and kind of weird, I think. So I don't know. It's a thing. Tell me if you don't think that's a good idea. Um, cool. Yeah. That's it. Bye now. I love you. Bye. Bye. B and carrot percent bye. Oh, oh God. <laughs>